Greetings, greetings, greetings and salutations, everybody. How are you all doing? Um, yeah, some well, good life. I'll connect some late fees in a, in a little bit later on. Um, big ups to everyone who is who is here early. Um, Daphne, OT, Tamara, Plain Truth, Audrey, Inner Circle, Desmond, JP, Marlene, Donna, Calligraphy, Dion, Cynthia, Essie, Lisa, Catherine, Marva, Doreen, Mama Keith, Mama Neith, sorry. Welcome, 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 welcome. Um, <laughs> who, who asked me what happened to who? <laughs> Ah, uh, I miss me. <laughs> I am right here. I am right here to the rescue. You know, it go. Every now and then I have to pop in and say, heal to everybody and every goodie. And then with the help of some other friends yeah, dude, who uh, shall remain nameless, that yeah. say, that cuss me out all the time. So I'm going for them. Who, who are you, sir? I feel like I'm in the like violent zone. 
I've never seen this guy before in my life. Where is where is Ratty God? Am I on the right show? What oh, God give him? Blessings, man. Blessings. I is here. I is here holding it down, you know. Waiting for people like you to come and do your thing. Because, you know, I I, I can only sit and take notes. No, where, where, uh, listen, the strangest thing happened to me, Kevin. Before I start big up everybody, I have to share this with you. Talk to me. So, um, some point this week, I lost my, um, let's just say, all my information. Yes? And the external I, hard drive? No, man. IDs, credit cards, debit cards, everything. What? It's a good thing I broke a lot of money, you know, because <laughs> whoever find it decides. And I, I, in my mind, I'm like, I must have had it around here. So I'm looking for it within my time and my space. And then I say, well, can't go KFC because I don't have no money. Can't go KFC because I don't have no credit card. Can't do anything can't like do that. Like and then That's while hungry, rich. I kill me. I see my phone start go off. People buying iPhone, people buying things on TikTok, buying gifts on TikTok, and just using, 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 using my stuff like that. Really? Yeah. So if one thing I learned, people, there, when it comes to honesty, when it comes to integrity, and when it comes to people for sorry for people, not a thing. The people them buy Apple products. Apple will ever make me buy products with my with my card and then get to buy Apple products with my stuff. But anyway, Yo. so no KFC for me today, people. So don't have to worry. I don't have no ID. I don't have nothing. Yeah, but they went, they went, went out of it. I know when we, I went shopping. When the investigation is complete and I'm in court, they're going to beg me not to send them to prison. You see how life is funny? Exactly. But them out of luck, right? I know. Bad, 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 bad. I'm not even asking anybody for returning. Just wait for it. Just, just wait for the authorities to come and charge you. Yeah, that's silly. No, so, sorry for here, Bridgen, but yo, it's fine. It's, these things happen. So wait, is lose you lose it, or is the owner come get it? Uh, well, um, I'm going to say it's lose or lose it because that owner, they would have really bright. It well, must have, I must have lost it. I, I had to. So you know, you retrace the steps and you wonder, where could I have lost this? No, I, I, I honestly, I just don't know. I think of two places, um, Price Mart and possibly... Um, Somewhere in the Alpha Tree area. It's the only no, two that possible rough. places. That that really rough. Sorry, Bridgen. But yeah. I am more sorry for the person. Not really still. But whomever it was that went shopping in your name, on your behalf. Mm-hmm. Why? I hope they're listening right now. Because fear punishment I go. Mm-mm. Sorry, Holy whatever you might enjoy all of it right now. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there's is is nothing to enjoy. That's the thing about it. There's, there, there's no enjoyment in being a thief. There's no and enjoyment then, in being a thief. And then yeah, you know, so you smoke for a K, KFC withdrawal. Yeah, from from last night, I was so miserable last night. I could not even one piece of chicken. And then the worst thing about it, you know, he came and walk up to none of the restaurant and I said, "Listen, I'm a founding member of this KFC fan club. Of course, I need two pieces of chicken. They wouldn't even trust your piece of chicken if you don't have your money." Yeah, that's how it go. Ah, somebody said KFC will miss you. <laughs> you now <not> miss me. <laughs> We have enough KFC junkies in the land. They won't miss me. As long as you know. <laughs> yes, I'm say, as long as it's not roads off back, you lost it. Man. Boy, I'm... <laughs> that's probably why I can't tell Kevin where we lose it, Megawatt. 
<laughs> oh my God, so we're doing a, a, a GoFundMe in the chat. So you get your, 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 your KFC. You think yeah, it's like a sad I need that. I need that. <laughs> Guys, drop some KFC money in the one Jamaica legal defense fund. <laughs> Life is hungry. <laughs> think serious around here. Yeah, man. But yeah, that's that. I, and with all things, you know, I just take everything for a joke. Because if you don't laugh, you know, you will. Yeah. You will, yeah. Succumb, to, you will succumb to the sorrows. It better than the alternative. Yeah, way better. So that is that. So the people them know say you get your KFC and go on a back road go eat it. Uh, I don't know. No way you get that. Don't tell those lies on me. Mind them, mind them cut this part of it and say that I'm out. I'm on um Mr. Ratigan <laughs> show as well oh, as the authorities <laughs> pulling up at some of those places where distinguished oh. gentlemen are not supposed to be. But around there you can find them when they're not in office. Well, the point I'm saying is any day I any day you go around there here, people using them debit and credit card, that's it. So, well, yeah. yeah. If if we see your card number pull up from one of them establishments from the road of back, no, then no, it wasn't me, everybody. It wasn't me. It's like <laughs> somebody, somebody's using it. It's not me. <laughs> I say I like how you set up the story before, so that when it come out, yeah, know it. so people yeah. know. Yeah, if they hear that um, certain transactions were done there, they're not my transactions. Yeah, I like how you set it up. But um, in, as 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 we wait for the rebel to join us, he's been busy. Uh, we were up till early this morning, setting up for today, and then he went on a broadcast this morning. So he's. Um, finalizing some things, which, of course, brings me here. But I would have heard that there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. Yes, yes. So I um, want to know what is the dirty thirty up to, and what are these secret meetings going on? I wasn't invited to them, you know. I just want to know what you're doing because it's so like. Um, oh, you said what you're not doing? You're not a part <laughs> of the dirty thirty, Kevin, aren't you? The tech support. Are you responsible? Are you responsible for the big, big, um, virtual diaspora meeting coming that's up? That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. I'm, I'm hearing that I, I, I carry a lot of weight and shoulder a lot of responsibilities mm -hmm. as, as a tech to the, the, the things that have transpired in recent times. So, if it's so, then it's so. Mm -hmm. Um, if it is going to mean that at the end of the day, we have a better home to go home to, then let it be. So let it be. Okay. Well, yeah. Right. So while we're on, people, just scan the, the little barcode right here. So you see it right here. So beside me, right here. Yeah. Take some skills for the this. I said, you must know how to do this. Um, this little. This is accurate to yeah. the. We got to see. What? Just where where, where, where yeah. you get your training from? Was it Rose of Mac as well? <laughs> it's amazing what you can learn around there, you know. Okay, I uh, got you. Go ahead and put your one dollar. Everybody that is on, put a dollar. Um, we have 580 people on right now. Put your one dollar, and every week you put your one dollar. You call your friend and you say, "Big enough." One person with all my credit cards and debit cards. Just run it, run and full up the one Jamaica legal defense fund. Might as well if you're gonna rob me, you might as well put it to good use. Right, right. And um, w welcome to your broadcast, Mister Ratigan. Good to see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, coming with a midnight I, voice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Is in the building. Welcome to Reason with Ratigan on Reggae Global Radio and YouTube. <laughs> and I'm your host, Will the Rebel Ratigan. Uh, family, as you join the program, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Relax That's with right. the Rebel. You're still suspended in my absence. Please continue to listen to Reggae Global Radio for the best in reggae music. Now, you won't have to wait much longer to hear from me on Relax with the Rebel because I'll be back a week from today. So I'm sure you can manage without me for one week. I've been away for about five weeks, four or five weeks. 
So that's where we are. Kevin, big up yourself. Thank you so much for jumping in. Folks, Kevin and I were up until, I don't know, 2 o'clock this morning. I think we're sending out notifications or doing some things. By the way, um, Catherine mentioned, I saw it in the chat saying, no, no notification. Catherine, I'm sorry if we didn't get the notification out in time or we didn't get it out to you at all. That's, it's my fault. Please forgive me. I sat. Big up yourself. Big up yourself. Good to see you again. Folks, you know, this is the first week from last week to this week that I haven't spoken to I sat all week. And I miss him terribly. We haven't spoken, but I know I saw in the news where um, he has to make submissions to the Court of Appeal for his client. Um, I think it's in May or June. Um, the arguments, I think, will be in June, but I think submissions are due in May. May, yeah. May. So I decided, look, you know what? I'm not going to bother him because I know that he's extremely busy. And I know if I hear from him, it's not because he's my to me, you know? I wouldn't have lived that way there, but no, good to see you, my brother. Good to see you. I, mean, I, I like, I like, I like the way how um, you deflect that on me, knowing that the dirty thirty is in the lab, along with Kevin Stew cooking up something for the Jamaican government and them fake diaspora <laughs> nonsense people with them little bit of visa. I, I did just make it look like it's me busy when it's you busy, but it's all right. It's, it's fine. It's fine. No man, hey, I'm never gonna do that. I think. Hey. In, in his defense too, I, um, Rati, mm -hmm. he also lost his his identity and some some <laughs> his 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 cards. Or uh, the one card where him have like him cycle around him, just turn it backwards and frontwards to make it look like a different <laughs> card. And and somebody went shopping, or some people went shopping with his stuff. So in his defense, he's been going through it. Yes. Keeps oh. you withdrawn. That is. Okay, yeah, Catherine, thanks. Um, sorry to hear that, I said. Is there anything we can do from this? Uh, well, I was telling I was telling your your um your comment section to donate to one Jamaica legal defense fund so some KFC can trickle down to me because I'm going through KFC withdrawal syndrome. I can't buy food, can't do nothing. I suffering like the poorest of the poor. That's what's going on with me. But apart from that, um we press on, the world don't stop. Yeah, you know what, folks? Um, today's program, believe me when I tell you, I say it every week, but today's program is going to be, I think, the biggest program we've ever done. You have to stick around for the entire program. If you can't, then you need to listen to it as soon as you can because we're going to be making a major, major announcement that's going to reverberate throughout the diaspora and in Jamaica. I said alluded to it, but I don't think he understands. I don't he doesn't know the magnitude of what took place this week. And he probably doesn't care because you know <laughs> busy. Probably, 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 probably. Got probably. things got things to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got things to do. He's got things to do. We've got things to do. But um if you've seen the program lineup for today, I'm telling you, cannot help but be interested in every single topic today. And we know that you will not be disappointed. I'm telling you, when you hear the stuff that's going to happen, um, I I heard Kevin and um, I heard Kevin and I sat asking for you to make your contributions to the fund, and I trust that you will. But after today. During today's broadcast, and after, I'm sure that we won't have any problems with that. I said, what's going on in your world? You mean in, in, in Jamaica? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. A loaded well, question. The, 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 the usual, um, some of your favorite people were not in Parliament. Mm. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you are aware of that. But let me bring you up to speed. So you find the finance minister bragged about his um you you might not work it. No. I think he's in shock. Yeah, where did you go? I, I think he muted his mic. Okay, okay, okay. Just make yeah. sure. Right, go ahead. Sorry about that. Yeah, okay, I yeah, go. I was saying that the, the, the finance minister having made the fumble on the budget. 
decided not to show up in parliament and send the other the, the other competent person the minister of education who is actually versed in finance to make the adjustment after the form so that was right. interesting the speaker of the house um she didn't withdraw her letter um after the clerk has left and there is a new clerk and she too was absent there is a there is a big spot between the new mayor and the deputy mayor all in the public space um about the nepotism that they want to continue to happen on the the boards within the, the municipal um five people died in mountain view and it wasn't reported because they were too busy reporting about um hearing dates for um famous artists because the king sent an order or something like that um and you know just the usual um potable water being being trucked in cesspool tanks rather than actual water tank water trucks what? cesspool trucks yeah what? yes I'm, i have missed that one yeah um let me see what else happened and they actually delivered the water yeah and people paying for it and so we still have that while while at the same time there is a big um promotion and bragging about a town center in saint thomas um uh, and 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 you know the new heart system the, and the new benefits of of heart that people are excited about because they no longer want people to go to um tertiary tertiary institutions people must just be masons and hairdressers and you know work in call centers but that's another matter because people are upset when i speak about that so there's a lot going on in um in the local space oh and then i i, I tell you um the real estate board lost their lost their um challenge to an appeal where they wanted to um they didn't give a fair hearing to a young man who had a, a, had prior convictions and wanted to be a real estate agent and they lost i wonder who his lawyer was but they lost they always <laughs> lose but you know yeah anyway <laughs> so that's what happened this week and here we are now so, so Jamaica is, is festive as always. Um, I don't know if you saw what happened at Carnival, but what I tell you, um, yeah, morality, yeah. morality was completely, morality was completely um, absent. Completely. And you addressed some of that on Thursday on your broadcast. Oh, yeah, I, de I, de I dealt with that, but um, I, I am taking the opportunity to. Um, to say that the government should give order of distinctions to Officer Grant and Officer Edwards, and anywhere you see them for the rest of um, the month of April, they should get at least five thousand dollars and KFC every time. I've been hiding from them since because I would be bound to pay them for the for the, <laughs> for the, for the, for the strong work they did in holding up the ladies who didn't have on much clothes when they were falling down and bracing against them. Yes, so right, right, right. It's correct. because you lost your wallet where you can't. And I lost my wallet, or Officer Grant and Officer Edwards. I would pay you myself every time I see you. Right, representing right. For, 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 and let, and be, and reminding us that um, strong black men, not weak jelly black men, still exist in Jamaica, fighting the good fight. And it's a, it's a clear, clear evidence that under the new leadership of Commissioner Blake, there is no weak jelly black business going on in the JCF anymore. So thumbs up to them. Yeah. I guess you could say, I said that they stood up to the challenge. <laughs> they were much <laughs> strong. <laughs> and no. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I is that they, all, they should have had the body cams so they could have proper evidence to, to, to prove. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway. We're the, the first person. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Let me just um, say, um, <laughs> let's go ahead, Kevin. No, as as about to say, you know, on, on that note, before I get into any arrested developments, I'm going to head on over to the back, finish by doing some things here. <laughs> and I'll catch up with everybody later, 8 o'clock. I'll be on. We'll be going into phase 12, you know, so... Um, I catch you all later. <laughs> before, you go, before, you go, before you go, let me just say so that Deanna and David can hear. I'm asking everybody to check out Kevin's show tonight at 
8 p.m. sharp on Reggae Global Radio. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to do that, you know, because at that point in time, things take another turn on, on Reason with Ratigan because you have That's some cool. additional material cool. that you'll be presenting and, and the presenters won't be able to be, get on before that time. That's true so, because, um, yeah, somebody in the chat asked, um, they said that they heard that Mystic Sensation was coming back tonight. And that's absolutely true. They will be back tonight at 8 o'clock. Just as giving yes, a start, right. starting, they'll that's be back. Right. They're two hours behind us. So um, it's 6 o'clock their time, 8 o'clock our time. And that's the earliest they could come on. So that's it. But yeah. We don't have to ask Kevin where you're there because we know where you're <laughs> Yeah, I know where I am. I'm, I'll be in the wings. All right, All right. Thanks so much. Yeah, I'll take care. Catch you later. All right, cool. All right. Um, let me just say uh, blessings, of course, to Mama Eileen, Papa Trevor, all of the peeps, them. Dober Road, the Manisons, um, Russell. And family, looking forward to seeing you soon, my brother. Ma P, Ma Jean, did I say Mama Eileen, Papa Trevor, Desmond, Paul, Sassy Diva, I hope you're feeling better. Mrs. Nelson, she's improving. Um, Bob, stay so my brother. Mr. Baxter, I owe you a phone call. And Angela, continue to take care of him. Greetings to all faithful supporters. Big up the Reggae Global family, the Firehouse crew, and the Rollington crew. My brethren, the general, I have to give a call, sir. We didn't finish our conversation yesterday. Much to talk about. Big up all media personalities and platforms out there exposing public corruption and holding the government accountable. Personalities and platforms like Linkage Radio, OBC Radio, all People Radio, Sutherland TV, Producer Wayne Global TV, Anissa Bell Rose, just found out about her this week. Big up yourself. Waterhouse Vibes, Michael Neat and crew. Make talk, Mr. Jeffrey Tavares, also known as Mr. Vumva V, Mr. Vumva Va. Mystic Sensation. Byron and Anne-Marie, they'll be with us later on. Super Jams, Prezi, and Doc, Professor John Lennon, Andre Stevens, the Professor, Jamaican Carlos, Maria, Herb, and of course, the renegade Unafri, the man in the wilderness, Wayne Lonesome. Big recognition. Gandero Tony, bitter, 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 bitter girl. Lisa, Lisa, Bonnie Jump, Cora, and the princess. And of course, my sisters, Jenny, who's recovering from heart surgery. Thanks for all the prayers and well wishes from all of you. Big up all Manchester crew, Dorette, Merlin, Miss Norma Allen. Of you tech, big up yourself. I heard that you watch us religiously. Please continue to do so. I love the support. Diana and David, and a big up on yourself. Honors and respect to all civil servants who teach, protect, and take care of all of us nurses, doctors, policemen, and women, teachers, secretaries, etc. Don't forget. Waterhouse Vibes will be streaming tomorrow on YouTube at 3 p.m. And that's 2 p.m. Jamaica time. We in Lonesome Stone Hall meeting tomorrow night on YouTube at 7 p.m., 6 p.m. Jamaica time. And you can catch Jamaican Carlos and Jeffrey Tavares on their YouTube channel on a daily basis. And of course, Isaac Buchanan's Context Matters, and that is so True. And it's a catchy phrase. The people use it now with me, I said, all the time. You know, we now discussion and we say, hey, Ratty, context matters. Context matters. <laughs> you should, you should, you should um register that phrase. You know, 
You really should. I do it already, man. I just wait for yeah. somebody to try me so I can carry them in the right context, in the right venue. <laughs> I'm sure them why it really matters. All right. So ISAT is on every Thursday from 5 to 7 p.m. And that is 4 to 6 Jamaica time. Again, 5 to 7 New York time, 4 to 6 Jamaica time. And he's on Reggae Global Radio, YouTube, Facebook, every single Thursday. Context matters. And we're starting, we're getting ready to start a new feature on the program where we're going to feature schools in Jamaica. High schools, universities, basic schools, primary schools. We're going to feature schools. We're going to highlight their achievements and their challenges. And we're going to come up with ways that we, as past students and diaspora members, can help. Um, next week, set aside two hours for phone calls only. We're just going to take, we're not going to discuss anything. We're going to, well, when I say we're not going to discuss anything, we're not going to present anything. We're going to wait for you to bring the issue to us for two weeks. We're going to talk about pertinent topics and we're also going to spend the time um, talking about donations because we have some serious, serious projects coming up. So please, folks, keep that in mind next week. For two hours, we haven't decided the two hour block yet, but next week, for two hours, that's what we'll be doing. We'll be discussing issues and talking about donations. I said, um, I have a question for you. Sure. If, if you own a piece of property and the government uh, has decided to run a train line or build a road across your property what is the procedure for that to take place in jamaica um it's it's what, what they call it when the government acquisition the government has there's an a, an act where they can acquire the land so you have no if it is that they they are building roads or a train line or something for the development generally of the neighborhood widenings of the road or cutting of a highway all they do, um, it's in it's in the um, what's her name, Miss Holness is responsible for the project, the speaker of the house. So they take the land and they compensate you for it. You don't have to argue, you don't have to fight. All you have to do is produce a title and the section of the land that they take off. They have to compensate it for you. You can get it valued if you don't like the value that they did. But wherever you are, it's quite possible that a notice was sent out to you, but you might not be here. If it is that um, you miss the notice, the government has to put in trust for you the money that you are to be paid. You can challenge it by virtue of having the section, the piece that's cut off, valued, and then they'll have to complain. They'll, they'll have to compensate you. Now, let's say that you receive no notice. You just heard mm -hmm. about. It. What do you? Who do you contact if you live overseas? Um, who do you, contact? you can contact. Um, one is. If you check who it's, if it's roadworks, along the roadworks, you can see what, what the project is. You can check um, the National Works Agency. That's the name of it. That's a, the NWA. Yeah. Contact the lawyers at the National Works Agency because they're usually responsible for that aspect of it. Okay. I used um, to know somebody down there, but, you know, people so get tired of us. I don't know. Should they contact a lawyer first or should they contact road agency, land agency? I think that national work agency is the people. I would contact national work agency because they're responsible. If you think it's a road, they're responsible for the, the, acquisi the acquisition aspect of it. Okay, so those of you uh, listening... Who I would say call them first. Um, they, we, we, we have this... Um, we love to call lawyer first. I mean, I don't mind if you call me and then you pay me the retainer money and you give me some free money and then I make a call for you and then I hear say something easy. But if you want to do that, no problem. But I think you should always call first and then when you get into when you get into um, some roadblocks, then see how best you, you can consult the attorney. But make the inquiries first. And again, who do they call? National Works Agency. I think you can, if you're not in jurisdiction, just go on the website and, and, and they 
find the email and make the inquiry and and it should work out for you all right i want to big up jamaica hot topic as another platform doing god's work for the people of jamaica big up yourself um Today's presentations, disclaimers, uh, the opinions you hear today will be that of the individual presenters only and is neither endorsed nor promoted by Reggae Global Radio or the host. Now today, as I said to you, I think today is going to be our biggest show. Here's what we have in store for you. We will have a presentation that we describe it as slowly unmasking the political, financial life of the prime minister. We're going to peel back the layers and expose a whole other stuff to you. Things that you won't hear on traditional media platforms. We're also going to discuss the debacle involving the Speaker, the Auditor General, and the Clerk to the Houses of Parliament. As you know, there was, she's gone now, the Clerk, uh, she retired. Um, but there is still um lingering concerns about what the speaker did with that letter she wrote to her we're going to look at that we're going to examine the police services police service commission selection of the pc we did a little bit of that previously and we also gave the police commissioner some advice and you know he's listening to us because he took some of the advice we provided to him and we're happy about that. We look forward to establishing and developing a relationship with him because we believe that uh, the synergy between uh, the JCF and law enforcement professionals in the diaspora, we will be able to deal with the crime issue. And when, uh, let me be absolutely clear, folks, when I said deal with the crime issue, a lot of people, they look at last year's statistics and as a as a as a, 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 a milestone or a guard post they look at it and they say okay this is what we have to do better than i take a different view i go back to 2016 when this government took over the murder rate i believe in 2015 was 1,208. That's where I would like to see it. And you know why? Because they campaigned on the message that you would be able to sleep with your doors and your windows open. And ever since then, the crime, the murder rate, forget about the crime rate, the murder rate has just skyrocketed. It has come nowhere near 1,208. That's my marker. That's what, that's why we're asking the police commissioner, to continue to listen to us and to work with us because we would like to get it down to at least 1,208. Then we can say, okay, we have made a dent in crime. But, you know, if, if, if last year it was 13, it was 1,498 and, and this year it's 1,490, um, I don't know how we can really look at that as progress. And the reason why I say that is because the numbers you're getting, I don't believe them to be accurate. There are things like, there are categories like uh, suicides where a determination is made that a suicide was committed, even though sometimes we question it. For example, the, the Department of Corrections official who allegedly drove his car off of Spur Tree, got out, found a tree, and hung himself. We question that being designated as a suicide. So we have suicide. We have some that are designated as self-defense. We have some that are still being investigated. They're called uh, death investigations. And by the way, JCF, I'm still waiting for that report. I know the report is sitting on Mr. Fitzbailey's desk. I have... I have a communication confirming that. It's been a while now, Mr. Bailey. And you know under the Access to Information Act, you have 30 days, maximum 60 days to provide the information. And the information I'm asking for is not classified. So 
That should have been sent to me a while back. I'm hoping that I don't have to go to the tribunal next week. I'm hoping that I will get it from you next week. Absent that, I'll have no choice but to seek relief through the tribunal process. And then also put it out in the media, traditional and social. Um, we will also provide a big, big, big announcement regarding the Diaspora Conference and also the march that's going to take place on May 10th, Friday, May 10th, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on the corner of 2nd Avenue and 42nd Street in front of the Jamaican consulate. And time permitting, we're going to look at the Integrity Commission Act of 2017. I plan to walk, walk us, including myself, through it. Because ISAT is here and you can correct me where you know, it looks like I'm making a mistake in terms of interpretation. But there are some things in there that you need to know about. Kevin, um, you can put on... Um, Julius, I'm things them up. And, and and also, also uh, Minister Morgan's famous um, remarks, if you could put that up as well. No. As I did last week, I'm appealing to all of you to make a special contribution to the One Jamaica Legal Defense Foundation. Folks, we continue to ask for your support. It's, it's, it's not enough to come here and listen and be educated. Um, that's one reason for coming. But another reason is when you support us, you're supporting us to take action. Like some of the action you're going to hear we took this week. And some of the action you, you're, you'll hear about what we're going to take next week. Um, it takes money to matter. Otherwise... As I said, is want to quote the 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 um, the the Commonwealth Secretary General saying it's just chat 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 and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I know today, I said, I'm telling you, in our audience today, in our midst, we have government officials um, watching and listening to our every word. Because some things happened la over the last few days that they're very concerned about. So concerned that they're making mistakes. And we're just sitting here and taking stock of all the mistakes they're making. And there's some things that we've done that will put them, once they realize today where they are, they're going to have meetings like it, like they're going out of style for the next few days. But, oh, Pauline Ramos will say, is the, is the PM going to prison? No, 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 no such thing. No such thing. Uh, and if, that's, if, if, if that is going to happen, it's not going to happen next week. So let's just leave it like that. Um, yeah, you know what? Let me just put up this thing here, Kevin. Um, let me just, he should, right, Candy Max? <laughs> I, I thought a lot of people are asked for the PM for the prison, but I'm telling them that no, 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 not, not, not so fast, you know, not so fast. Well, I do want to do that to the good the prime minister. People in the comments, why well, do you want that? And they're really, and they're really racist against big nose people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't like big nose people, they will stop it. Let me, just, let me just say that um, we're also, we have received, we have received background information 
on two politicians. Very damaging stuff. Um, Herb is in possession of that information. So I'll, I'll wait for him to come and, and I haven't, I haven't looked at it yet. He told me that um, he's in possession of, of the information. I haven't reviewed it yet. So uh, I think he's going to wait for a complete review before revealing what can be revealed to the public. So all of you politicians out there who you know you're crooked, stand by. I don't think you're going to be sleeping well until they hear what Herb Nelson Jr. is going to say about you. Um, so that's another thing that we need funding because we have to do these background investigations with our strategic partners. Um, another thing, another thing is ISAT is sitting there waiting. Well, it we can't pre, we can't do it now because you know he's going to be preoccupied with the upcoming submissions and oral arguments. But we wanted to file a lawsuit for the court to declare certain provisions of the Representation of People Act. That's unconstitutional, clearing the way for people to vote from overseas. And it's, 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 it's a long ways to go because then, even after it's declared unconstitutional, we still have to depend on the government to do certain things for us to vote. But I'll tell you this, folks. The things that we're doing, and let me be absolutely clear, the things that we're doing, I'm doing them for my children, your children, my grandchildren, your grandchildren. But I'm also doing them for me. I am not sitting here saying, well, you know, as long as my children, my grandchildren, and other people's uh, children, and grand as long as they benefit. No, 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 no. There is a term that I just love this term. We used to use it in the, in the FBI. The fierce urgency of no. We're not waiting for things to be perfect. If we have a 75% um, approval of things be done, if we have 75% of the knowledge that we need to move forward, we're not waiting for 100% because if you wait for the perfect moment, it may never come. It never come. And so I want to benefit from what I'm doing. And I want all of you to benefit from what we're doing. We shouldn't say... We shouldn't just do it because the moment you, you, you start saying, well, I'm doing it for my children, mentally, you put yourself in a space where you're saying it doesn't have to be done now. At least that's how I think. If I, if I think like, well, I want to benefit from it, I'm thinking no. No, no, no. And so that's where we are with that. Family. Make plans to come out on May 10th in New York and be counted in this history-making protest. And please remember that it will take place on Friday, May 10th on the corner of 2nd Avenue and East 42nd Street in Manhattan from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So, Florida, Georgia, North and South Carolina, Virginia, D.C., Delaware, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Rhode Island, Texas, California, New York, Canada, Jamaica, and the UK. Come out in your numbers and register your disapproval of the Jamaican government's continued bad governance. Now, we know that we will not get everyone on our side, but we are supremely confident that the overwhelming majority of you support what we're doing. And we are extremely grateful and thankful for that. Let me just play. Kevin is in the background doing some things here. Kevin, we can't play that video, yeah? Yes or no? Let me see you have something that block me. Channel F, should we wear our colors? Yeah, man, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah, Jeffrey, thanks for the support. <laughs> Mega Watt, I've been spot already. Mega Watt, Mega Watt said, I'm a spot on 2nd Avenue. Mark out already. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go, folks. And see if you, those of you who were here last week and you watched this video, listen and watch because there's a difference between the video I played last week and the one we're playing this week. Gypsy Girl. Look, 
I owe you dinner. I owe you dinner. Because this should have been done. Um, her should be able to answer your question today. Natasha, you have, you have your ticket. Big up yourself. Colleen McIntyre from Firehalls, Dilston Avenue. Big up, big up, big up yourself. Eri, Steel Saw, Wani, Pancho, and the rest of the crew. All right, here's the video. The following is a public service announcement. The Diaspora Crime Intervention and Prevention Task Force and One Jamaica Legal Defense Foundation invite Jamaican patriots and friends in the tri-state area to the second staging of a call to action. Meet us on Friday, May 10th, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Jamaica's Consulate, located at 300 East 42nd Street, Corner 2nd Avenue in Manhattan. That's a call to action for Jamaicans and friends of Jamaica who are seeking the best solutions for Jamaica. May 10th at 9 a.m. at the Jamaican Consulate at 42nd Street and 2nd Avenue. Listen to Reason with Radigan Saturdays at 3 p.m. on Reggae Global Radio and YouTube for updates. Yes. People, now tell me, what was it, what's the difference between the one that was played? that I just played on the one from last week. I see some of you get the answer already. Wendy Gray, big up to yourself. All of you getting tickets, I saw some in the chat, some people saying that they're getting tickets to, um, to come. Yes, please get your tickets. No, we don't have much time. We have less than a month. Today's the 13th. So, all right, let me tell you what. The one we played last week. Ah, there you go, OT. Right. <laughs> the one we played last week was instrumental. And one of our dear friends um, played it on his platform. And he got a notice from YouTube saying that he had violated some, some he had committed some, some copyright violation. Um, he was the only person. And it was played on several platforms. So for him, we went ahead and went to the studio and we had the vocals done to it. And yes, folks, I better yet. No, folks, it wasn't ISAT. Quite a few of you said, yeah, Mr. KFC, I am that. No, it wasn't ISAT. ISAT was not available. So we got somebody else. I won't mention any names. Some of you recognize the voice, some of you. Most of you probably won't, but um, we'll leave it at that. So let me see what else we have here to play. Cause give me give me some things here. Um, of course, we always start with this one. I've always said to people, do not trust the words of politicians. Do not trust the words of politicians. Words of politicians. Do not trust the words. Of, trust the words of politicians. Do not 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 trust the words of politicians. You know, before you, no. before you play that one, 
before you play that one, it, when you said the, 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 when you played your favorite, well, it's not your favorite. We know your favorite person is, but when it's not her, I think he's second in line. Um, he made a comment about when persons were calling for the Speaker of the House to apologize. Um, he, you know, was basically saying the public, you know, I, I'm not, I'm paraphrasing. It don't really matter what is of no moment. Their opinions are of no moment. Um, it was such a um, condescending remark. I was just wondering if you had heard it. No. Okay. Well, no, in in light of the thing about calling for the Speaker of the House to retract the letter from the um mm -hmm. from that she had published for for the clerk, as well as um this call to release the Attorney General's advice to her, and he, the Information Minister was basically saying, "Listen, at the end of the day, your the opinions it it's really of no moment." Government have to do what they have to do, paraphrasing. And it was just interested. I just wanted your thoughts on that, but he didn't see it, so we can move on. Yeah. Immaterial. See, they're saying immaterial, but immaterial no. really is of no moment. Well, see, I said as far as as far as I tried to I tried to make it. I tried to I tried to I tried to paraphrase it to to, to lighten it, but immaterial is even is stronger and I didn't want to go there. Well, see, the thing is, as far as that minister is concerned, I take my cue from you. So when you tell me to speak, I speak. <laughs> like that, like that. Okay, yeah. this was a teachable moment right there. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if, get, your, yeah. get your neckties from our, our new line, the dirty 30 line. <laughs> Cover your neck. Yeah. Anyway, let me stop. Yeah. Yes, if you don't tell me to speak, then then you know I won't. Well, I just, have, I, I you know, say. I mean, you know, one of the things is um, I, I only raised it because again, government officials, I don't think they appreciate like while while private citizens can can say and do what they want, not all the time. Because if you learn from my my experiences. <laughs> You can be a private citizen and they can still whip you. But anyway, um, I brought it up because when you look at the, our constitution, it's, it seems to be ignored, ignored and just be, be, be treated as if it has, it has no value, the charter, because we have a right um, to, to, to receive information. We have our right on the 13 to be to freedom of conscious and, and religious belief and political ideas. So we have to be able to be in the know and be able to comment in terms of that. The Constitution literally says political ideas. I, 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 if you if you permit me to read it, I would do it because it's so interesting. When I when I see it being ignored, I'm yeah. So it says, th "Thank you for the opportunity to share." So here it is. Um, G. Hold on. Yeah, B, the right to freedom of thought, conscience, belief, and observance of political doctrine, the right to freedom of expression, the and it, so B is the right to freedom of thought, conscious, be, conscience, belief, and observance of political doctrines, observance of political doctrines. Then it says the right to freedom of expression, and naturally the right to seek, receive, distribute, or disseminate information opinions and ideas through any media these are these, these these things are so important to the point where um when we think about um twofold when you when one thinks about the advice given to the attorney general <laughs> is the government advice but the attorney the attorney general actually works for albeit for the government the advice that he would be given would be in the interest of the people it's not a security issue something like that so when you say you know your thoughts and opinions is um immaterial immaterial is so it, it it's almost like you're nothing you, you 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 have no value you're of no moment and i just feel like um 
we need to get back to when we when we utter when we make utterances we must think about what the constitution says and when i say we it's government because you want to go into government we can no longer say you get what you pay for because that's exactly what i'm saying we're paying you now and you're getting the big money so you must act like the big money servant that you are and have some respect for the people even if some of us selling bag juice even if some of us lose our credit card and our debit card and can't buy no kfc right now if you get what i'm saying and i just brought i just brought that up because you always say don't trust the words of politicians and then to see them themselves um using certain language colorful and that's it you know the um the the speaker of the house went to the attorney general and asked for an opinion a legal opinion concerning the procedures for tabling um, reports coming in from the integrity commission i don't know why she did that um but she did and the opinion was provided to her and to date that opinion has not been disseminated to her colleagues and it has not been disseminated to the people of jamaica now the gleaner filed an ati and they asked the attorney general for a copy of whatever he sent to the speaker the attorney general responded saying that i think it's i think it's section 7a saying that it couldn't be really it could not be released because it's a document that you could attach certain privilege if brought into court now I wrote the Attorney General this week and I filed another ATI and I explained to the legal beagles over there that the section they quoted of the ATI, it does not apply. It didn't and it doesn't apply. That's just my opinion about it. And I'm willing to take them to court to get an opinion regarding this because when the speaker asked for that opinion, the speaker did not do so in her personal capacity. It's not like somebody coming to ISAT and then you have the attorney-client privilege. And by the way, folks, when you hear about the attorney-client privilege, the privilege rests with the client. It's the client's privilege, it's not the attorney. So the attorney is forbidden to speak about certain things. The client can talk all they want. They can, they're the one, the client is the one that has the privilege. But in this case, it was not a personal uh, uh, consultation. She did not do it in her capacity as Juliet Holness without the titles. She did it in the capacity as speaker because whatever opinion was rendered would be good not only for the sitting speaker, but for future speakers. So she did it on behalf of the people's house as well as the people. So I don't know what privilege you could attach to that. If, if, if she went and she said, I just want to know, um, can, do I have the right to, to forego uh, tabling a report and instead send it to uh, the oversight committee or whatever committee? Please give me an opinion on that. There's nothing confidential about that. I mean, in my opinion, that's something the people should see. That's something the parliament should see. And so... I oppose the Attorney General's initial viewpoint on that. And some people are saying, well, now he's thrown it on the Speaker's uh, plate because now she has to decide whether or not she wants to reveal it. But it's not personal to the Speaker. That's a, that is a government document. And for, for, the, for the Attorney General to say, well, a privilege, legal privilege could attach to it, I find that to be a cop out. I find that to be an excuse. So, folks, uno know me. 
We said, uh, I think it was like two o'clock one morning. I think it was like uh, Tuesday morning or something like that. We just get up out of bed and send an ATI to the Attorney General. And I also reminded the Attorney General that his office has 30 days to respond. And by the way, government officials listening, why why only not why why, why would not keep the, the, the contact details for government officials current? Why? When you give out a list and say, here is a list of all the government officials. And if you want to contact them, especially for ATI purposes, for access to information purposes, you have to do it by email. And you give a list of email contacts. And time and time again, it's just the, the, the people. And, the, and nobody, nobody, who is responsible for the upkeep of that list? Whoever you are, you're not doing a good job. because. One of the persons uh, listed as the responsible officer for ATI purposes over at the, the Attorney General's office is no longer working there. And something like this where you're interfacing with the public, you need to have correct information. But Isat, what do you think about that? I agree with you. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd go further to say that um, where it is that the, as you said, she's a speaker, she's a speaker of the house. She's also speaking on behalf of the house. Um, if my, if, if, if you are correct or I am correct, which I agree with you that the house, the government or the house is in, inclusive of both opposition and both the, the, the ruling government by its composition. And she sits as a speaker of the house. When she speaks, she's speaking, she's representing the house. That's her job. So if she asks her an advice, the advice would never be her advice. It would be the advice for the house. So the house is entitled to know what it is. And when the house knows what it is, it is a go the, the government is doing the people's business. Therefore, if I saw my MP, I could say, I went in on the report that he's to tell me because the government is doing the people's business. And so for, 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 for that reason, because it wasn't in our personal capacity, miss me with that, that conversation about uh, for the attorney general, he can say it is the client's privilege. But the, the issue of who the client is at the end of the day, it is the host, not the speaker. It's not an individual thing. And so I, I agree with you where that is concerned, but I just, I, 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 I take another position because I like the speaker of the house. I have a different position. And I said it's on another space and I say, look, everybody gonna start cursing me. And no, I'm not hungry, but I'm saying this. When I was young, I keep saying this, when I was young, if the report card have all A's on it, forget about me who wants to show everybody. My parents would put it up. Your parents is gonna pose it. It wouldn't even have, we never even have social media in my days. But they take picture and then we even mail it out at Christmas time when the report card good and them say them want to make everybody know say it bright. But if the report card have whole heap of D's and everything and indication that you're wrong, you're not showing it to anybody. So it is not, it is no wonder that the, the report, and if I am wrong, then release the report. But if the report was not adverse to that which you wanted to do, you would have you would have you would have put it out. For instance, if I ask my lawyer, can I shut off the, if I have the speaker of the house and I ask my lawyer, can I shut off the mic on them chatty chatty mode people eh? But just uh, annoy me. And my lawyer say, yeah you can do it. May I show up the next sitting? And as you stand up and just go so bloop. And then you say you can all do that myself. Shut up my lawyer say I can't do it. I am right. But if I ask my lawyer if I can do something and he says, no, you give me the legal advice that I'm wrong, strong and wrong, I'm going to, one, not publish what my lawyer says. And if I want to go against my lawyer's opinion, I do it anyway. And that is the basis of it. I just, that's what I know. And I just leave it at that. So I don't need to see the report. Moving on. All right. Um, one of the questions I've been asked time and time again this week, well, more so this week, I don't know, for some reason, I'm getting a lot of questions. 
I got a lot of questions this week. Is why haven't we heard from the opposition in terms of filing uh, to seek a declaratory judgment from the court to say, and, and again, I'm not asking you, because I know you can't answer for them. It will just be speculating. Um, why is it that the opposition is not doing some of the things that we're doing? Why, why something as significant as this? And we know, as you, as you alluded to, had it been a positive response, she would have announced it. She would have said, look, the attorney general says, what I'm doing is correct. And that's the end of that. She's not doing that. So why is it that we don't see a lawsuit? And when I say a lawsuit, people, there are different types of lawsuits. Not every lawsuit will result in people being, um, in people testifying or people going to prison. Uh, there are some things that you can just ask a court to do. Like, for example, there's something called a writ of mandamus. And it's, it's here in the States and they have it in Jamaica. And essentially what it says is that, judge, I'm asking you to compel the government to do what it's supposed to do. So, for example, if they're supposed to give you a passport and you're not getting the passport and you just get delays after delays after delays, then you can go to court and you can say, Judge, I need you to issue a declaratory judgment. That's one, a declaratory judgment that something was supposed to have been done and it wasn't done. Or you can go and ask for a, a mandamus writ, which is you're asking the court to tell the government to do what it is supposed to do. And, and those... While they're involved and they can be complex, they don't, they're not like criminal trials, you know, um, and some civil, like personal injury action. So when we say lawsuit, it doesn't necessarily mean um, a whole bunch of controversy. And in fact, some lawsuits will never get resolved by the courts because people come to terms before a judge can render an opinion. And they said, okay, all right, fine. So in this case, you file a lawsuit and they may just say, all right, fine, you know what? Um, the 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 um attorney general he might say look i don't have a legal leg to stand on so i'm just gonna re i'm just gonna release it and then let the speaker do let her do whatever she wants to do so that's that um you know mr Artica, you know i'm gonna you know i'm gonna defend the opposition you sure go ahead you defend the opposition sure i don't think one has to take it any further the opposition leader says Listen to me, man. You know, if you sit down there, now we think about it. You are your man, you know, you are, you are, you are there with me. You are your man going like in a war, run everything. It's unacceptable. Using the Jamaican language. And he says, it can't go on. And then you saw, you saw one well, and say, go ahead, go ahead. And I said, come on, them fire you and them high him back or whatever they did. And it was a big cast cast, just so, you know, like parliaments all over the world um, in different language and vernacular. Um, so I don't think um, you need to run to the court for every single thing. Um, it would be good if the public, uh, the public itself, who also has an interest, that they too can take it to the court if they feel that way. Especially in light of this. No, but that is it. You do have standing. You guys have standing as well. And those are the things that we that that sometimes it looks good because. Listen, man, to me, government is government, especially, as I said earlier, when you appreciate that um, the opposition forms a part of government in the, by, by virtue mm -hmm. of the House of Parliament and the yes. role that, the, that, 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 that the Miss Holness sits in as the Speaker of the House. And yeah, they could, they could say, but we want a declaration that it is for us. But for real, let me tell you something. We don't need a declaration to know what is obvious. And we just had the discussion. The pal She's the Speaker of the Parliament. She represents everybody in the Parliament. And so she's, she's, not, asking, huh? she's not doing it. She's not doing it. So and he said her? that. He said it. He said, you're biased. Evidence of you being biased is you're sleeping with the other person who is... Who is, who, is, who is running government. That's what he said. But here's, here's the issue. Yeah. Here's the I have with that. When she's in, she was in charge of government business in the parliament, and by virtue of that position, she was the de facto number two person. She was below the speaker. So once the speaker decided to depart, um, then 
it 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 would be a natural succession for that person. Of course, they have to nominate. They have to nominate, and and people agree with it, mm. and all that. But she would be the natural successor, right? Right. So, when that position came up after the former speaker Marisa Dalrymple, um, Philibert, decided to to uh, uh, resign from the from the from the parliament. The Prime Minister's wife was nominated by Minister of Justice Delroy Chuck. He said, mm -hmm. I beg to nominate her. The opposition, led by Mr. Philip Paulwell, because uh, the leader of the the leader of the opposition was not in parliament on that. Mm -hmm. Instead of registering a disagreement, because this was the first time something like this has ever happened. So mm -hmm. in and here's what I'm thinking. And I, of course it's hindsight, but here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that. Something like this has never happened, and you could see, you could see the possibility of bias. You could see all of that, the appearance of impropriety and taint, and all of that. You could see it. And so, if I were in charge of the opposition at that time, I would have said, "Look, the convention is that we we second the nomination, but in this instance, given the circumstances, we are going to register our disapproval of it, even if we have to go along with the convention. But we would have to have we would have to have something on the record." Now, because Mr. Powell got up and said, we second the nomination, and he didn't go on to say, we second it, but with uh, under protest or anything like that, I think he under, that, 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 you cannot come now and say, well, you know, she, she and the prime minister, your husband and wife, and there's bias and all that stuff, because you had a chance to register that complaint, and you didn't. You said, look, we have no issues, let her go. What I think the opposition is in a, is in is uniquely qualified and positioned to argue is that her performance is in question, but I don't think that the, the opposition is in a position to question her relationship because that time came and passed without any objection. Your response. Well, I agree. That's the point I'm making. The oh no, as you are saying, that time came. The only thing that came, that my response is the only thing that they, they, the card that they can use now is actually the is is actually a moral one because it's not a position in law. I also think that what what people must recognize is that the more things change, the more they make they remain the same. Government is government, you know. You have to appreciate you have to appreciate that their people will be mad at me for saying this. The whole of them are friend. When she became, she, there was a, if you observed it, there was a point where she never really wanted it. And there was like, Rame, girl, you're good as gone, get it, take it. And the other side and all of them, yeah, women in power, the, the, the women's movement happy, yeah, woman in power. And them all kicky keen like them don't have any sense. Respectfully. So it's a weak argument now, but it's raised, it raised to the point that it was, which is why I'm going to defend her because no, she's doing, no, she's doing, she know that she's doing her job how she wants to do it and she sits in the seat you're going for ad hominem reasons which i think is distasteful that's okay. my position you know but i don't care who are vexing me coming on look no up but i'm just saying that to you say listen i think it's distasteful and i'm going to genuinely not being sarcastic says she does what she does and who don't like it vote her out all right. That's what that's the res, that's the response, and that's what we should be teaching voters. That is something is in fact distasteful, even in hindsight. For instance, I would have voted for a particular party, and it that at the time I thought it was good. I would never do that again. That's hindsight, and that's growth. We ought to teach people how to do that. So you want to be you want to be nice to voters only when it suits you only when it's election time and you want to tell all your lies and you want to talk about all the things that you're doing and you want to and you want to talk about how nice the country is doing and your finance minister issue a red card on the opposition then hide from parliament when he's making big mistake and now next month Come by March 15, people not gonna get paid because the payment gonna be late because of the lies we tell. And the lies we tell, we call it oh miscalculation, it's still a lie. Respectfully. And so when these things happen, you respond by the vote. So the opposition needs to observe, and the response is 
I've said my piece. I wouldn't do that. And they need to learn as they go what not to do because voters are becoming much smarter. They're being powered. They're being influenced by the dirty 30 and all these new vloggers that come out. And when you're not talking how, they, how you're supposed to talk, them deal with you a certain way. That's how it works. So just leave it at that. That's my opinion. It doesn't have, it's not the opinion and thoughts of Ratigan or Reggae Global Radio. It's just my opinion. Blessings. Yeah, the, the the you know regarding regarding the uh, regarding the what the uh, minister of finance and the public service did, we shouldn't be surprised because we saw it. You know, it's called algorithm, logarithm, tropical rhythm. We saw that and we heard that explanation, and this is more of the same. So we really shouldn't be surprised. You know. Uh, the, the argument I was making, and somebody said, uh, Janet Jones said, what they did was they gave her the chance to show her hand, and she has shown bias. No, Janet, I, I'm I'm in agreement with you. Uh, Kevin, where the help out? Um, uh, uh, Herb, say I'm not get the I'm not get the login. Help him out for me. All right. Um, so I'm not saying what they what they should do, Janet, is that they. Go after the bias. They can go after the bias. And I'm all for that. But I think it's disingenuous to go after the relationship now. In a, in a sense, you're really going after the, the... When you go after the bias, you're going after the relationship. But I think to say, well, she shouldn't be there because she's married to the prime minister. I think it's kind of late. As I said, it's not think. It's late. Because you should object to that. when the, if, if I were... In Mr. Powell's shoes. And again, I'm saying hindsight is 2020. All right. I don't know what was on his mind at the time. I believe at the time, in fact, he was still mourning the loss of his daughter and is the mother of his daughter. So that could have been one of the reasons. But I would have been shouting out saying, No, this can't happen. We cannot have the Prime Minister's wife, you know, in charge of Parliament. It's never happened and it will not happen on our watch. It shouldn't happen. And that way, you would have all of the arguments now. You would have the relationship argument and you would have the performance or the lack thereof, um, of the bad performance. You would have both arguments. That's all I'm saying. Um, I said Audrey wants, uh, you see what Idris, Audrey says at 419. Yeah, I, I didn't see it. Let me see if I can. Audrey. <laughs> yeah. I don't see it. Did I? No, let no leprechaun. I, I've seen things where they were talking about the relationship. Um, maybe in niche, maybe they're not doing it now, but at one point they were talking about the relationship. Uh, Kevin, I think we need to put up some more things with um, with uh, Julius. Let me let me let me see if this is the clip. Hold on one second. Let me put the put Thank in. you, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, in addition to the questions that are being asked, Madam Speaker. I, I needed a little clarity myself, to just be clear. So let's say, for example, the, a special report is tabled on the matter that the country is waiting to hear, the illicit six. Um, that would come to the House and order or to no. the... On a point of order, I do not know of what you're speaking, member. It's a... Mm -hmm. I don't know, no. Please, please, please remove that comment. Please remove that comment. That comment is inappropriate, doesn't belong in the house, and is not included in any document submitted in this honorable house. Please remove I, uh, your comment. I've, I've heard what you have said, Madam Speaker. And Hansard, with please that. strike the comment. Um, perhaps I am one of the few members in this house who many years ago had a um, report tabled from the office of the contractor general at the time over 500 pages of a report. And at that time, the speaker did not take particular positions and it was tabled in a particular manner. So that is why I can say, and there was nothing, there was no wrongdoing in the report, anything. It just took a, a lot of my time, a lot of media time. And I think it is important that when people are being investigated, that certainly those of us who are in this house, because it can happen to 
perhaps any one of us as public officers. However, the point I would like to ask you, or the question I'd like to ask you, is at a time when politicians are seen as being unfortunately lumped as corrupt individuals. And it doesn't matter how hard we work, it doesn't matter what we do, it doesn't matter how many public things we file, all of us are lumped together. So if we, if we are, if we are, if we are here, if we, some are, let's know who. All right, hang on. Members, members. So Madam Speaker. Members, please allow Member Hanno. Madam Speaker. Please allow Madam Member Hanno to speak. I'm, I'm, my major concern is that if we are now appearing as a parliament to suggest to the public that in issues of controversy or what might be deemed as controversial, that we will take the position to change rules to suit us, that that might not go down well. So I just want you to I would like you to take note that your statement about changing rules is absolutely incorrect. The rules are actually not being changed. The rules are being, the rule, no, so it is not us who are changing rules, and I do not want you to give that impression to the public. We are not changing rules. I do not know of which report you speak, but, but in the past, I am, I'm going to finish before you continue. I have to be careful about some things. Would you like to clarify? Go well, ahead, clarify. Because what I asked you to read it, mm -hmm. and what I said, mm -hmm. what I said, Madam Speaker, mm -hmm. we can't appear to be giving that impression. I, and I wouldn't want you to appear to even say it. So that is why I'm saying mm -hmm. I asked for clarity, because mm -hmm. the public mm -hmm. might get the impression that that is what, if we are going to be looking and reviewing mm -hmm. at this particular time. That's why I'm asking you just to make it very clear. All right. So, member, member Hanno, you are correct. The indication that we should review, it is not with a view of my instructing that any changes be made in any rules. The reason I have said I believe it is important for us to continuously interrogate or review our legislations is that we may find subsequently that what was passed may not have been our intent. What was our intent is not the practice. And so we should always go back to look at the legislations. Equally, the standing orders which are the rules that govern us, are not necessarily all written out in all respects. And there may be issues that come from time to time where the House feels that instead of leaving it for the Speaker to rule or the President to rule, the House would like to now apply a rule which the Speaker or the President would be obliged to function in that mechanism as stated in the standing orders. And so my comment is where we believe we need to strengthen the legislation, strengthen the standing order, it is our job to do so. Thank you. Madam Speaker, you did say that you had wanted me to call and um, I would have been given a chance to come back. And it is on that basis I'm coming back. Madam Speaker, again, it's just simple clarity that um, I require. And I suspect from what I've heard that uh, what I'm going to say is true, but I'd want to get the clarity from you that whatever um, the ruling is and in keeping with the rules that govern us, that nothing here is meant to hide or obfuscate any ruling that might call any of us into question and, I would, and member, on anything. I am telling you and to I'm stop it. Member, I'm telling you to stop it. I notice you like to make statements. 
that you know the response to and I would appreciate and I would appreciate if you do Remember, I would appreciate if you do not continue to do so in the future because in doing so, you are actually all making an effort, I would think, to mislead the people of Jamaica. My s My statement started with there is an untrue narrative of deliberate delay in tabling reports sent to the House. And I will give you a copy of this all right we want to ensure as a parliament that it is understood that the concern raised by member hannah where we are seen as corrupt is because of exactly that behavior um opposition leader The opposition leader is on his feet. The opposition leader is on his feet. Members. Uh, folks, Kev Kevin, you can't grab the, the cursor. Um, when we talk about demeanor and conduct and appearance, and just, you know, displaying, displaying parliamentary behavior. I, I think we have an issue here with how the speaker has and continues to conduct herself in her dealings with her colleagues. Um, Kevin is looking up for some, some um, yes, Kevin, yeah, that one there. I want to just show you, show you guys something um, about another parliament, not the Jamaican parliament. And there's a certain gentleman who is leader of a minority party. I don't agree with a lot of things that he stands for. But one of the things he's done is he's familiarized, not only him, but his entire party. They familiarize themselves with the rules. And so whenever there's a question to address in the parliament, they're on point. I mean, they, they're teaching their parliamentarians the rules. And I think that's the way that we go about it. And Kevin is looking for it right now. Um, we don't have much time. I think our students, some of them are here. I don't know where. Hold on. Kevin, do you want me to? No. Hold on one second, folks. So I said, while while Kevin is pulling up something, um, what's your take on what you saw a while ago? You, you Good know. Behavior, bad behavior, indifferent behavior, parliamentary <laughs> behavior. I, I, I would say, listen, I don't think any parliamentary behavior will ever give rise to what took place um, in the British Parliament with, with, with um, Abbott and the other gentlemen. Um, but that's above my pay grade. Safe, safe, safe to say, uh, we, what we do know is um, bully behavior should be unacceptable. People should be able to speak. The misuse of the misuse of legal verbiage is hilarious, though. Because <laughs> let me tell you, it's hilarious, and especially not only the misuse. Um, for instance, Lisa Hannah speaks about the appearance, you know, the appearance of bias, the, the, the importance of the old adage, and I'm just going to educate the public. Um, there's a phrase: justice must not only be done, but must also be seen to be done. So there's an appearance that um, if something is a bit wrong, it, the, it, it, the appearance is important. So we have to ensure that not only must it be done, but it must also be seen to be done. So if anything appears to be unjust in the eyes of the public, it's going to be problematic. 
So when that is raised, um, it, the conversations are important. So if you don't understand, I don't. I never see a problem, even in the comments, where when you don't know something, it's a, it's in, it's important for you while the discussion is carrying on. From especially on Mr. Ratigan show from two o'clock to a hundred o'clock sometime tonight. Um, to say, you know, you said something, and can I get some clarity? Ask for clarity if you don't understand, even if you sit as a speaker. But you can't be there with ego and you can't just be carrying on and carrying on and then it looks bad. But um I am a person who I always I I never I like never like short I, I don't ever like short clips, so I'm mindful of that. But to say that um yeah, we must understand that there is no justification because she was strong and wrong and then she said, Oh yeah, but what I was saying was, you know, so you have to you have to you have to Tone it down. When you're wrong, you're wrong. And you must give leverage. But also, um, I what is left in my mind, you know, is that the, a question, um, this is a genuine question. I am wondering if the Integrity Commission has dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. Is there actually an illicit six? Because if there really isn't, then this, this is very unfair to the Speaker of the House. If there is no report tabled, and people are making reference to a, 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 a Ghostbuster Duppy, Duppy Bat report that's not really in existence. Um, it's unfair to the running of parliament because every time the parliament sits, it sits with a, with a, um, a hue, a green stench, you know, like, uh, like bad breath, trying to give a description um, that ought not to be there. And, 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 and if we are to believe in the, in the saying that justice must not only be done, but must also be seen to be done, there needs to be some clarity and a, a gag order is not an excuse when you try to circumvent the gag order and put a, and put a, 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 a tinge or a, or, a, or a stain on otherwise the government trying to do what it is supposed to do. So when you say good behavior, bad behavior, I'm just gonna chalk it up to bullies him. Ain't nothing wrong in the, in this Jamaican space. You have a big and bad. Otherwise, people will walk over you, and everything is mustering dub plates, and that is our culture. I'm surprised that they don't like dancehall because everything is about dub plates, and everything is about throwing words, and everything is about big and bad. We forget that this, the, the, the finance minister was allowed to say Massa Mark. Mm -hmm. And it was okay. It was okay. But yet, and that, and and people 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 was like, oh, it's just a liquor so and so. But yeah. I guarantee you, if the if the leader of opposition didn't respond and say, nigga Clark, <laughs> it would have been the end of the world. But anyway. So when you leave the speaker alone, and she 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 has a, she she's new to it, and has a lot of growth. If if she gets the space to grow, it may be better, or it might not be, but it's not a good look. That's my conclusion. Yeah, um, Kevin, can can I go now and play play the for the first clip? Because I see you have a bunch of things up. Yeah, let me play this one here. Um, here is. Uh, a clip from the one of my favorite parliaments. I watch this all the time. They they have some serious discussions, but sometimes it's just hilarious. And Russell and the Madisons and everybody, please just bear with me, cause oh no, there it go. Y'all laugh with me too when I when I see some of these things. Folks, take a look at this. Withdraw that. You withdraw what you have just said. Which one did you withdraw them? exactly what you have just said? What you are saying is true. You must withdraw that. And if you don't want to withdraw, and remember, we've got business of the house here. Yeah. There's good fresh air outside. Uh, Deputy Speaker, Deputy Speaker, if there's good fresh air, you can go with me. But what I wanted to know, what I wanted to know, Honorable you, Member, withdraw please that, unconditionally. Do you want me? Do you want me to withdraw the truth? Honorable member, withdraw or leave the house. I'm going to leave this house. Leave the house. This is the truth. Honorable member, just leave the house. 
So there's there's go ahead, Kevin. There's one I want I really want you guys to see. Kevin is pulling it pulling it up. And they're like, that's South Africa, Amber Night. That's South Africa. But I mean, there, like I said, there's a guy there, Julius Malema. I mean, he's he doesn't fool around. Um, and I, I'm just hoping that we can get this video for you to see it. Uh, Kevin, I saw a wait said it was downloaded already, but um, well, I tell you what, Kevin, we have we have we have our guests here right now, and they have limited time, so uh, we'll have to come back to that. Let me see. All right, we have Herb, and we have. Jermaine, and we have the Cardiago. There he is. And we'll just bring Patrick in. Patrick, there he is. All right. So we're all here. Kevin, in the meantime, if you can find that, that, that clip for me, the one with, with Malema, I'm in charge. And just let me know when it's ready to go. Um, Patrick, Jermaine, the Cardiago. Is that what I, is, am I pronouncing your name correctly, sir? Yes, you are. It's Ricardo Diego. Uh, Hi, good. I will. Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, thanks for coming on Reason with Ratigan. Um, we love to have young people on. I'm, I'm, I see Patrick are raising my... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Patrick. And that's her. That's her, her <laughs> Let, let's put that birth certificate on the screen again. <laughs> it's on the screen. Can't find it. <laughs> And we have Durbin. Where's Durbin? There's Durbin. Um, all right. Young people. Ah, there's Durbin. Oh, by the way, Durbin. Mr. Ratigan. Let me, let me just apologize. I, 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 I just wanted to point out real quick that the Nelsons are well color-coordinated uh, color today. You know Oh, that. I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just say, Durbin, to your colleagues, I sincerely apologize. I dropped the ball. I, You and I had a discussion. I was supposed to reach out to them, and I just forgot. Uh, please accept my apology, and you can convey it to them. And if they're watching, young people, I apologize. It won't happen again. Um, next time, I'll make it a priority. Whatever I'm doing, that if I when I need to make the phone calls, I make them. So, truly sorry. But anyway, welcome to reason with Ratigan. Now, Jermaine, let me start with you. Yes. Uh, and I, you don't need any introduction because uh, the, the audience here, they, they know you and they've been asking for you to come back. And and you don't, it, it's not even a matter of coming back because I want you to consider this as your place. So if you have something on your mind at any given time and you just want to come on a platform and discuss it, you have the keys to the palace. You well, thank you very much. Yourself. Really, really, really grateful for that unending invitation. Right, right. and Durbin helped make the key. So Durbin, no, you know, no need to <laughs> the key. Cardiago, the key we are handed to you too. You can come <laughs> in. All right, Jermaine. Yes. What, what's 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 on your mind in terms of the things happening in Jamaica, particularly things happening this week? Pick out one thing that happened this week in Jamaica that you want to talk about. Oh, what's happening? You know, I, I came prepared to really share some thoughts on the debacle surrounding the Speaker of the House. Um, Please, go ahead. It, it has extended to this week. Uh, you know, Valerie Curtis, the former Speaker of the House, has resigned. And there is a bombshell report about all sorts of administrative bunglings that are happening in the, in the House. So one could argue that she has really left the House of Representatives in the capacity of Speaker uh, with a very uh, tortured reputation, you know, coming from that scolding, scathing letter from the the honourable, uh, the, the honourable speaker of the house, rather. I, I'm talking about the, uh, you know, uh, she's the clerk of the house, rather. I think I'm getting my terms mixed up a little bit. So she's the clerk yes. of the house, and the speaker would have rebuked her uh, in that letter. My first consideration is, I'm convinced that it was not the most proper thing for the. For the for the speaker of the house to have written that letter rebuking her, uh, you know there are systems uh, in which we discipline civil servants. She's a civil servant, a senior civil servant at that, and I think the process that ought to have been engaged is the process of the HR department within the parliament um, to sort that out, right? 
I think many persons are of the view, and I seem to be leaning towards uh, the view as well that you know the fact that the speaker took it upon herself to scold Miss 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 Valerie uh, is an indication possibly of overreach. Yes, um, and also to have it established that it ought to be placed on her file. I think is a little above the peer. Mm -hmm. That said, the concerns of late about um, matters, a whole host of matters relating to, for example, uh, inaccuracies with respect to the payment of uh, um, um, house, uh, work, people who work within the House of Representatives, you know, the administrative staff and so forth. Uh, you know, some person getting far less than they ought to have gotten, some people far more than they ought to have been got, getting. Um, and these issues lingering from, for some time now, even before Miss Miss Curtis took charge uh, as, as 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 clerk of the house, All it right. really does look bad. And the final point I'll make is I am inspired at the fact that the new clerk of the house has decided to 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 to, to take the bull by the horns, if you will, and try to effect some kind of lasting solutions. I'm eyeing that one. And, and hoping that we'll get some resolution in short order. All right. Well, let me play. We're talking about Parliament, right? And you yes. just saw the intro where we played the Speaker of the Jamaican Parliament and mm -hmm. uh, the Speaker of the South Africa, well, the Deputy Speaker of the South African Parliament. I just want to show you um, another instance of hilarious but bad behavior yes. in another Parliament. Here we go. Uh we cannot allow uh, Honorable Malema to disrespect the house and waste the time of the house. Honorable Malema agreed to take the question. He must respond to the question. And Chair, it was even wrong to allow him to even respond to the President because Honorable Malema respected, disrespected Parliament and walked out and not listened to the President. I don't know what he's responding to because he's not listening to the son of the President. And he left with his bodyguards and eyes closed. Thank you very much. Honorable Malim, I will just, just indicate whether you answered the question or not, so that you can proceed. I never said I won't answer the question. So I'm, I'm, I'm reading my speech. No one is going to tell me what to do at what time. I'm in charge. <laughs> That's why these fools are running around here. I'm in charge. On a point of order, Chair. Order, Chairperson. Point of order, Chairperson. Order, Chairperson. Point of order. The ruling party by strong of order. Chairperson. Order and the mind. Point of order. Chair. I'm in charge. I'm running. Chairperson. We are not in charge. You can all jump. The Honorable members. We are not in charge. Chair. We are going to show you. Two Honorable Baliba. Order. order. Order of the opposition. Order, members. Running the house. I'm in charge. Order. Come on. Lord, the members are running the house. Who's next? Sir, can, can we have uh, I mean, all the members? I don't want DP. I've got these things. Hon Honorable uh, Shibab Shib Shibamba, please sit down. All the chairperson. 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 Let them all. Chairperson. Chair. End of order, order chairperson. chairperson. Can you, of order, chairperson. can you please sit order. down? No, no, no. no. Of order, of order. Please sit down. As per the rules of please, the Queen City, please a point sit down. Of order, order, chair. I'm ordering you to sit down. As per the rules of the House, a point of order is. Please sit down, madam. Please sit down. Order, chair. Order, please. please. I've not pointed you, please sit order, down. Order. Because it's Honorable Malema, he must not be asked to ask you the permission to speak, please sit chair down. Person. Order, please. Thank you very chair. much. Thank chair. you very much. Chairperson, order. Order, Chair. What's your point of order, member? Order Thank you very order, much, chair. Uh, chair. I rise in terms of Rule 14P. Honorable Malemba has just made an under, a very dangerous statement here. He referred to people as fools. I think it is unparliamentary, and Comrade Malema must withdraw that statement. Yeah. Chairperson, order, chair. Chairperson, order, please. Honorable members. Chairperson. Honorable members, can I ask chair. you to please chair. sit down? Honorable members, just a minute, please take your seat. I've not uh, pointed at you. Please sit. Honorable Malema. Yeah. Uh, please withdraw the reference to members as things. Um, uh, 
uh, and or, or fools, whatever the case may be. Please, 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 is please indicate so that we can proceed. Is it, is it unparliamentary to say you are a fool? It can't be, Chair. No, man. It can't be, Chair. I'm telling you. Point now, of you can, order, Chair. You can check your staff there. Speaker, no, on a point of order. If you are not clever, you're not clever. There's nothing no, I can do. No, on a point of order. <laughs> Can I make a ruling on the matter, honorable members? Yes. Because that this matter will be looked at. Yes. And point, I'll, I'll, I'll revert back to you point with, the, point with, the, with, with, the, with the ruling late, later on. For now, Chair. let's proceed. Honorable Malema. Thank you very much. Chair. The only thing. Order, said, Chair. Order, Chair. Honorable <laughs> Member. What's your point of Chair. order? <laughs> Let's keep it for one hour so I can be on this platform for one hour. Let's go. Can... Honorable Member, what's your point of order? Can you request the, the fool in the podium yeah. to sit down when order is called on to him? Honorable Member. Chairperson. Honorable Member, I'm going Chair. to ask you. As I've done before, please withdraw what you have just said. The other point is not going to withdraw. He will not withdraw. My labor must withdraw first. All right. We get, we get, <laughs> the, we get the, the, um, I'm telling you, folks, if you ever, if you ever in a dull mood, you know, if you're feeling down or whatever, yeah. just tune into the to South African Parliament because they don't fool around. Yeah. And I mean, they're very active. The guy you saw in red, if you notice, yeah. they're wearing red over, uh, overalls, right? That's yeah. their uniform. They don't wear a suit to parliament. Yeah. And they're a force to reckon with. And they're, his party is a, is a minor party, but they're very, very vocal. And they're very schooled with the rules. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when you watch this, how they handle the speakers, when they start quoting rules and they started doing this and start, it's, it's an amazing thing. It's, it's hilarious, but it's also educational. And I just love watching them in action. But anyway, uh, where's uh, we just lost? Oh, here he is. Oh, where's oh, Jermaine is here. All right, fine. Did, we here. did we lose someone? No, we didn't lose anyone. Yeah, we did. Um, where is uh, Young Mr. 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 Nelson? Young Nelson, yeah. Yeah, you must have lost transmission. Yeah, mm. anyway, Dervin, your take on what Jermaine said about the, the debacle with the speaker and the clerk, and you know, just the whole confusing state of affairs in the parliament. Um, I, I have to agree with Jermaine. The speaker has basically overstepped her bounds in terms of reprimanding Ms. Curtis. But what I came to me as a, a huge surprise, and Jermaine elucidated it perfectly, that Ms. Curtis has left the house or has retired, leaving the house in a massive financial quandary. And I think I think there should be further auditing to find out what was the reason or the or what would have caused that massive massive financial episode that was elucidated this week. And what I find very troubling and very unnerving that the minister of the minister of information is like he's doubling down um with the speaker of apologizing to miss curtis so from what it looks like to me uh, probably there's um the whole story has not been told as yet mm -hmm. and i think the plot is thickening the way how Jamaican politics and how our political leaders 
who should be our servant leaders are behaving, who should be our servant leaders, this is turning out to be a massive soap opera, or could I say a blockbuster movie with so many plots um, coming into play. I'm hmm. just happy to see what, how it plays out. The Cariago, um, jump in, your take on it. I agree with the earlier panelists on the matter. I think for a democratic society, the way in which um, we present this to the public, and especially I'm speaking as a young person, how this is presented to us, it makes a mockery of our democratic system. And given the voter apathy in Jamaica, especially among our young persons, it, it, it gives us the narrative that Anything that sees is what goes, and there's nothing irrespective of whether we voice our opinions or not. It, it doesn't change anything. It doesn't um, have any meaningful um, substantive to how things are operated um, within our governmental structure. So I have that challenge, and I think a way in which we can, well, the government really can better its stance is in how they present themselves to us. So, doing stuff in a more structured manner, making sure that, you know, the old time system of, you know, is constantly blame throwing and the kind of misrepresentation that, that does not continue. And then, you know, we can be more engaging, be more um, connected because everything really and truly in parliament right now seems quite disconnected, especially from the vantage point of a young person having had these conversations with um, fellow young persons it does create that narrative for us. All right. Let me let me put up and before I get to Herb and, 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 and Patrick, let me just put up the letter that caused all of this. And then I have something to say and then we'll go from there. Take a look at this letter. This is from the speaker to Miss Curtis, right? Now please take note of this section right here where it says references made to your made to letter from you references made to letter from you dated january 8th 2024 responding to the letter from the auditor general and the next sentence the aforementioned references underscore the point that subsequent reports received from the auditor general were in breach of the ruling made in the house of representatives on november 7th 2023 now why do i why do i why do i highlight this for this reason it would appear and correct me if i'm wrong and i'm subject to being fully corrected it would appear as if well not would appear i've seen it there was there was a letter when the reports came in there was a letter sent from the clerk to the auditor general saying that the the the, the submissions were in breach of section uh what is it 20, 30 uh, and, and of the uh of the financial administrative and audit act and section 13a of another act but what she didn't do was she didn't send back the report. She sent she sent the letter, but she didn't send she didn't send the report. And then when the opposition said, "Hey, we have reports pending," on that Friday, which was two Fridays ago, I believe, they sent back the report. And so the question was, did the clerk made an error when she said when she sent the letter saying you you know the, the submissions are in breach. But she didn't send the report back and i think that's what the speaker is making reference to saying that when she said additionally your failure to adhere to the said ruling and applicable procedures amount to a gross dereliction of duty and as such has brought the institution into disrepute very strong language but i get the point she's trying to make and that is when you sent the letter saying that the, the submissions were in breach you should have sent the report along with the letter but you didn't you kept them and now you've embarrassed us because the Opposition is now saying, hey, you have reports sitting over there for, from December and January. And what did they do? They immediately sent them off. Um, am I off base? Uh, no. I sat. That was, oh, no, go ahead. Who was that? Jermaine? Yes, that was me. I think you've captured it quite well. And I think the Speaker of the House has a right to be incensed. Uh, my, my real concern with the letter specifically that she is now, she, that you're displaying. Um, one that she has sent to uh, Value Curtis, former spe former um, clerk of the house, is that she it is written not just with scathing language, um, with a uh, with a tone of rebuke, 
but it mm. also she has established near the end that it is to be placed on her file. Now that is an HR matter because mm -hmm. you know even if it is that she wasn't about to be to resign, the fact that it's on her file is a problem. You know, I, I don't know. I'm not an HR functionary the, within the department. Clearly, it is I right there. Huh? This is right here, Jermaine. I don't know if you can see it. It says it's it's yes. it's towards the end of the letter. It says a copy of this yes. letter is to be placed on the on your personal file. Right. That's right. Terrible. I don't know that she has any terrible. jurisdiction to, to, to be doing that, to be stipulating that. I don't know with what authority she does that. The second point as well that I'm curious about is to what extent does the speak of the house have authority to direct the auditor general? You see, we have to be careful, mm -hmm. you know. The principle of separation of power is important here. The, the mm -hmm. Auditor General is a key functionary in terms of ensuring that there is transparency and accountability in terms of how public money is spent. If it is at the Speaker of the House, who in our system has the facade of being transparent, um, you know, objective, but we know it's not. You know, we know that this is a functionary of the of the of the of the administration of the government. Yes, and uh, it is in her interest to potentially. I mean, at the surface, at least, I'm not implying motives on her part but it does seem generally speaking and the history has shown that speakers have generally stood by their uh their parties in in, in the novelty that rules are given so i don't know how proper it is for this to be jermaine we, we lost jermaine no Somebody was asking about saying that they couldn't read the letter. Um, Some... It's right there. There it is. Um, where it says, references made to a letter from you dated January 8, 2024, responding to the letter from the Auditor General. That's the letter that, they, that the clerk sent to the Auditor General saying that the submissions were in violation of certain laws in Jamaica. But what the clerk did not do, the clerk did not send the submissions back. And so, and the submissions were made in December of last year and January of this year. So the opposition said to the speaker, hey, you have reports that have been sitting here since December of last year and January of this year that have mm -hmm. not been tabled. And that put the speaker in a very bad position. So she immediately turned around and she returned them. But then when she returned them, this is what happened. Um, but it seems to me that she thought they, they were returned all, all along. So she was shocked to find out that they were sitting there in the parliament. You know? right. But Mr. Rattigan, but I would have two questions here. Two questions here. Sure. One, oh, I'm getting a feedback. Oh, I'm getting a feedback. I don't get it. Yeah, but what I have yeah, asked here, what, I have what is the relationship between Mrs. Kerr and the Speaker of the House? And two, also, what is the relationship between Mrs. Kerr and the Speaker of the House? And two, also, what is the relationship between Mrs. Kerr and the Speaker of the House? We're getting a feedback. Hold on. We're getting a feedback from Jermaine. And that's it. By the way, let me just say to. I think um, you have to mute Jermaine. I think it has, has to be muted. Yeah. Let me just say to Serene so that Auditor General sent back the report because Auditor General is saying that the, they were not in violation. They were filed, I think, in, in section. Right. Was it? I have it right here. Hold on one second. Let me. Let me, let me, let me no. And also. Sorry, 29, 29, right, Rati? 29, yes. 29. <laughs> Another question, so, um, why, why would you this be castigated for quote unquote not doing her job? And over the years, she has been in parliament for how many years, and she has never gotten any reprimand for anything that she that but, she could I'm not sure she enough. She has, she's done, done right. Basically, they, they think that she's an amateur, and I and I highly doubt that Miss Curtis is an amateur. She has years of experience. 
So, uh, so I think <laughs> if I could assume from from the relationship, I, I'm assuming that uh, that, and this is just my assumption here. I am assuming that probably there were some activities that are not in line with the traditional functions of parliament that mrs curtis who is highly experienced in her years as being a clerk and has never gotten any problems with any of the speakers over the previous administrations both pnp and jlp before this government um would uh, receive that type of treatment so i am wondering if there was something untoward that was going on in the house unfortunately by the speaker side in which you know mrs curtis would not tolerate quote unquote and it causes a big uh, you know disagreement between both ladies who who knows but i think there should be further dissecting of the relationship between both the 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 Speaker of the House and Mrs. Curtis. Don't you think, Sir Atigan? I am just saying something is there which needs to be. Yeah, I think there's a, there's something going on there. Let me bring in Herb Herb Nelson. Herb, you're give me give us a quick take on it because I wanna I know that Jermaine doesn't have much time left. Um, same thing with uh, the Cardiago. So um, give me your take on it. Herb, um, you're muted. I'm good now? Yes, you're good now. Okay. Yeah, Mrs. Olness has been under scrutiny for a while. Not just the handling of reports from the Auditor General, but the previously she had joined with her predecessor, Miss Dalrymple to say that she was going to give undue delay by adding processes to reports when they came to the house. And she was going to uh, do maybe a rewrite of the standing orders to support that. And the standing orders versus the what the Constitution calls for doesn't appear to be in line with each other. So she is bringing this on herself. And in spite of the fact they gave her the benefit of the doubt at the, the time of her appointment, the opposition is now forced to speak up and express their disappointment in the fact that she is coming in with a Katie bar the door um, attitude when it comes to anything against the party or particularly herself and her husband. So I can understand she's created this whole controversy around herself. And, you know, she speaks down to people. Um, she is, you know, bullying in the sense that she is controlling and she makes uh, things like people speaking up in the house which they're entitled to do as members of the parliament she makes it very difficult for them especially when she wants to cut them off so the the, the bottom line is uh, a lot of this she's brought on herself uh the public release of the speaker's letter to the clerk uh, is questionable because what you have now is a legislative body the Speaker of the House versus a public um, employee of the government. And no one, I mean, your politician, no politician should be arguing, much less um, sending letters to a public servant's uh, record without any due process. And, and maybe, um, I said can explain what the due process is. 
or if you have it right, they put it up there. But you know, well, it, it's it's just crazy that that she would pull some stunt like that. Um, you're saying something. Yeah, I go back to. I go back to uh, my days in law school. Um, I'll never forget J. Clay Smith, I think his name was, my administrative law professor. And he asked the question, what is due process? And people start giving him all kinds of legal expressions and whatnot. And he said, no, it's process that is due. And I'll never forget that. No, simple as that. It's process that is due. So you, you approach it with a common sense approach. That if it's not fair, that, that due process means just it means fair. It means equitable. All of those things. Um, I sat is I sat. Oh, there he is. Uh, yes, sir. I sat. Go ahead. Give us your, your sense of, of what you've heard so far. I just feel what um, Mr. Durbin or what Mr. Durbin says is immaterial. As, okay. a, as, as, a, as an information specialist, everything that people who are not in government says is immaterial. And we don't care what you think. The letter was sent and Miss Curtis has moved on. Get over it. But anyway, anyway, anyway. anyway. That, before before them take me serious. Um that was yep. that was my that was my um imitation of the um the good minister of information about immaterial thoughts and ideas from the public at large. Um the thing is this watching the other parliament <laughs> other parliament and how they operate. Government is really a party shop. And so you have to just understand that maybe the standards that we are trying to set is a little bit too high and nonsensical for, for the pompous show that um, Parliament is. Parliament nice when they carry it on like that. Like they was like, oh, withdraw the comment. You're a fool. And he says, but what you want me to do if you're not smart? What, you know, what you want me to do? If you're not clever, if you're not smart, obviously you're a fool. And then the fools say, oh, it's true. And he gets up and says, oh, you're a fool. Because <laughs> monkey see, monkey do. Don't get me wrong, context matters. But you know, follow fashion always get left. And I just think that we really, um, we really, 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 really are going to get a lot of beating for this one. You know? But we really are going to, we really stuck in animal farm um but more than more than anything even when there's one thing that i don't like is even the fact when people are showing respect you just really have this bully bullyism um behavior where you don't respect nobody and 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 you're not you're not you're not you're not mindful of the fact that you're a servant um that's something that needs to change i'm not asking for the other the sideshow stuff to change because that's the things that make parliament nice when they're cursing each other. It reminds us that we are people. So that's my position on that. But in terms of, in terms of there was, a, there's a lot of miscommunication that was going on and especially legally. And, and, and one of the things we must appreciate is the lawyers don't even know it themselves. It's a little bit different to expect um the speaker of the house who is not a lawyer to know it um and the other members who are not lawyers to also so um know whether she's right or wrong and she's there trying to figure it out i'm not defending her i'm just simply saying he's trying to figure it out because i heard you made mention earlier about um miss curtis's miss curtis writing the letter to say that um she was in violation of something or, or she was breaching something and she didn't send the, the report back. You said that earlier, Ratigan. That apparently Miss Curtis sent the letter but didn't send the reports with the letter. Correct. And and so for that reason, that, that would that would have been the level of the incompetence. Yeah, I don't think it was incompetent. No, because well, well, what I'm saying is what we do know for a fact is that those reports were not supposed to go back. What? Oh, hold on a second. Um, Kevin, I can't ask. What okay, I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, but what we do know, so um, I'm not going to beat the dead horse on that because he had a whole show with with, with where Mr. Herb and Mr. I don't remember that. <laughs> 
had taken a particular position. But we're not going to go back there. But to say that, um, what That's we do, on, lick. <laughs> you can't, you can't lick that one, lick on, Mr. Herb. I want to. Can I? Can I jump in here? Sure, 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 sure. I just that, so that, that's the end of my submission. Yeah, man. It, right. it, it, it's some radical thoughts that you're sharing there, my friend, uh, counsel. Yes. Uh, you know, <laughs> and and uh, you know, it, it's appreciated. I mean, maybe maybe some some excitement might lead to greater interest in what happened to Parliament. I'm not sure. I'm I'm minded to. To, to cast my vote of support in, in what you're saying, though. But anyway, moving on. I just want to <laughs> kind of push back a little bit on, on my friend Dervin uh, when he says that there are indications that something is happening between, or something was happening between Valerie Curtis and Speaker Holness. Uh, is it, I'm very careful at in a public setting such as this um, casting aspirations uh, uh, in terms of I, I don't see anything in the letter that indicates that there is a track record of gross incompetence um, and so listen this is just boiling over I'm tired of you and it's now time to call you out and it's time for me to write a letter and send it to all the parliamentarians and the media and insist that it be placed on your record I, I'm not getting that energy I, what I get is that the speaker felt as though her instructions were not followed to the T um, I don't know what the instructions were though because I don't know if the public is aware as to explicitly what was communicated to Valerie Curtis was it communicated that she said she simply advised the, author, the auditor general that the the, 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 the reports are in breach and that they should be sent back. Was that clear? We, we're not sure. So that's... that's, was, a, that's it was respectfully, though, it was clear. It was clear. Okay. Yes, well, yes. Many, many times non-lawyers try to tell lawyers what to do and the lawyers just say, listen, you're not going to make me look like I'm an idiot and yes. I'm just not going to do it. It's a chore. And then the people say, but I tell you to do it. So respectfully, one of the things that's missing from the conversations many times, and I, I have no brief, I have no instruction to defend Miss Curtis, but Miss Miss Curtis is a senior attorney and a competent one at that, and also has the years and has served that parliament honorably, respectfully, and she's been respected by some of the greatest leaders in this country. Yes. So if you want to, if you want to wonder if anybody has a problem and you have to wonder who has a problem, I can tell you this: it was, it is not, and will never be go, go down in history as it being Miss Curtis. Yes. Well, so I when you say you read a letter, I don't care what is in that letter, and I did not need to read that letter. But if whatever Miss Curtis do, I can tell you, say it do wrong nowhere in law and at no time, no dear, no girl, no yes. boy, nobody. Miss right. Curtis is in the right, and she has moved on to greater and better pastures. So you can put that letter anywhere. You can <laughs> put it on. You can put it on a billboard. It matters not. Yeah. And so when we have this conversation, we must appreciate. Just we, maybe that is why we need to know what the attorney general says, because I'm sure any competent attorney in interpreting the legislation as it is, when a report comes into parliament and says this is a section 29 report or says yes. it's, it's a it's a particular it's a special report when it uses the language of the particular section right. you, cannot, you cannot revert to any other section but right. we don't we don't we have to be appreciative to to, to move on when we need to move on yes and just that but i'm just system, bringing yeah. that bringing that to the front Right, so special, people exactly. Just so people understand, this is just, this is the financial administration audit act. Yes. The source of contention. The auditor general says that her report was submitted based on section twenty nine. That says that in the second paragraph, um, it says that you provided that the auditor general may at any time, if it appears to him to be desirable, prepare a special report, and yes. that's exactly what the report. That's how the reports were were were, were characterized. Right. The, the, no, the speaker is saying no, no, no. It's it it should be on the thirty. That says that if there's something wrong here, and I'll just I'll just summarize it. It says if 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 the auditor general does a report or does an audit and there are issues with it, then 
the Auditor General has to take the issues up with the parliamentary, no, sorry, the minister responsible for that. And then yeah. the minister will have, um, what is it, 90 days? Yeah, yeah, about that. Yeah, I think it's 90 days. Well, you could be right. Yeah, um, and it's got 90 days to correct the thing and then submit it to the parliament. If nothing is done within the 90 day period, then it's up to the Auditor General to yes. submit. What you're saying is that the report that the reports that were submitted by the by the Auditor General were erroneously submitted. And the Auditor General, so under 20, under 30, and the Auditor General is saying, no, 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 I submitted that under 29 um, because it's a special report. And, yeah. I, and in fact, we went over this last week, but here is one of the reports. And uh, let me just what it says. Oh, it's, it's titled. There it is right there. Mm. Special audit report. Yeah. So she said it's a section 29 and not a section 30. But, but so. could we could you also contend that maybe maybe there's a bit of uh, challenge with the legislation itself because the justification for in the instance where it's a, a, an, a, an audit account of the particular public body that, that needs to go to the responsible minister is that the minister must get a chance to probe the issue, um, raise questions to the respective uh, entity that is under his or her supervision and then get some clarification and then ultimately funnel it to the auditor general and ultimately to the parliament. Would would such a motivation not also apply to any report at all? So ought it not to be any report that goes through that that kind of process? I'm I, I'm not sure I'm understanding what fundamentally is the distinction between a special report, such as a special report ought to go straight to the parliament, but um an an, an audited uh, account uh, or report should be funneled to the to the responsible minister prior to going to the parliament. Maybe, maybe, right. well, I just, I, should I respond? Please. So I'm going to respond first by saying that apparently you're not an avid listen, um, listener and follow to reason with Ratigan, where we had discussed this extensively, the legislation. And as, as you can see, while I'm speaking, Mr. Ratigan is pointing you. Oh, you don't have to call me out like that, you know. No, I'm not calling you out. What I want to say, what I want to say, because I know the students are aware of this yes. in the comment section, is that when it comes to Section 30, it is the Parliament who requests, it, who instructs the um, Auditor General to, to do a report, and then she, the, the relevant minister, she has to report the findings. In a special report, she does her investigation and she tables it for the Parliament and not at the ins not oh. by the request or the instigation of the, of the relevant minister. So because it is a special report on the Section 29, if there's no prodding, there's no need to send it to anybody. Once it's tabled, once it's sent, it should be tabled immediately. That's the that's the spirit of the legislation. And so nothing is <laughs> this time there's nothing wrong with the legislation, season except for if they want to fix it to have to restrict the power of the Auditor General, which is something that we should push back against, is a different matter. But if the legislation works clearly, 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 and that is the contention, the bone of contention between a, a, a seasoned attorney um, who would have um, not fall or not solid her reputation by doing nonsense, and and somebody who is a non-attorney, and that's that's quite fine. This is not a condescending remark, but one we need one one thing one can say if they are to critically assess using critical thinking and context you would take the you would you would agree with Dervin that there is something there and that thing is somebody have sense and the other person simply does not understand not saying that the person is a fool because they're not in the south african parliament and we don't have fools in the jamaican parliament we have like masters and other things in the jamaican parliament but we have masters, husbands and wives and things in the parliament, father and son and brother and sister and these things, but not fools, certainly not. But we cannot miss the fact that it was a way to say, it is not me. This government 
has a habit of deflecting. Like your finance minister came and says, me, not the best baby father of ideas, but the best baby father for finance in Jamaica, issue a red card and say, no new taxes, budget nice. And when it mess up, what it does? Deflects, disappear, doesn't take credit for the losses. They want to win awards for COVID and this and this and no hospital, no good. Nobody wants to take the blame. Mm -hmm. the PMP, the dead babies, minister must resign when the same baby them dead is somebody else's fault. Let me bring in Patrick. We haven't heard from him. Patrick, give us a, a sense of your sense of what, what happened here. Here, here. Here's two. Here's one one take that I um before I talk about what, what strikes me in Jamaica this week. Aside from that, remember when Mark Golden and others are complaining about the, the executive and the legislator sleeping in the same bed, wife and husband. The issue with the clerk, I don't know everybody is looking at it, it manifests itself. Because here's the deal. There, isn't there a minister whose um, civil servant is his portfolio, is under his charge, whatever the minister is? In a real parliament where there's a separation, in my opinion, then that minister would have said to the, the speaker, Madam Speaker, stay in your lane. You have no authority to do what you do. Let me talk with the civil service who reports to me and says, hey, maybe have a conversation privately. And so that's that. as simple as it is, there's a lot of things that are going to happen like that with this husband and wife thing and running running the show. But the, the thing, let me get out of the parliament because I, I, I usually love watch it as a kid because when there's a barkhead and all those people make the jokes and, you know, the, the oratory was beyond, you know, this. I I was just laughing when I was, when you're playing the clip with the speaker telling, um, someone that what what don't let what this appears to be what they say or something yeah. i mean there's a yeah. lot of word salad <laughs> that, you know it would be a good salad anyway but the thing that strikes me is our similarity to our ex-president who's going on trial um starting monday in new york um for hush money payment this guy's is innocent and if I'm innocent, I want my day in court from yesterday, right? And he's avoiding to be in, in, in a thing. Similarity at the KSAC, a KSMC, I, I, I don't know what it, what it is, Kinson. Yes, the former mayor is hell-bent that he doesn't want to audit and he's trying to go around it. Why are you carrying an audit? If you don't have anything to hide, why are you fighting an audit? And, you know, I mean, the vexing point for me is that everybody just keeps silent on it. You know, and, and we see signs of the same Marilago set coming into play by the government in so many respects. So, you know, the KCC, former KCC mayor, um, that is very troubling. Why? Because it's eighty-eight million dollars, and I hear there's a lot of dead people who get paid and collect salary <laughs> every year. Maybe it's the one at the um, the parlor in um, Spanish Town. <laughs> that's 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 where the dead people come from getting paid. <laughs> but you know that that's a concern. That's a concern for me. And um, you know, as usual, the press, the church all this whatever uncivil society groups because they're not civil or muted society groups don't say anything you know this so that, that's my take out of what, what what strikes me in jamaica this week all right the cardiago um is there anything you'd like to say i think i'd like to them to continue my stance really is on the whole matter of the quorum which i think we've talked about uh, quite a bit substantially mm -hmm. all right let me ask you a question because you seem to be the youngest person on the panel here right except for herb and patrick 
I think they're maybe like two years younger than you. But uh, as a young person, and we've asked this question of many young people who appear on the program. Durban is no stranger to this question. What troubles you the most about a young person growing up in Jamaica, wanting to make Jamaica the place in light of Vision 2030? You're not planning on leaving. You want to make Jamaica the place to you know, live, raise a family, invest, retire. What's troubling most to you or what would you consider an impediment to realize those dreams in Jamaica presently? Presently, the big, and I, as a person, I'm a youth leader, so I engage oftentimes with young persons and groups and these kinds of stuff who want to make Jamaica a better place. Now, the biggest challenge I have, and I believe this is shared with many young persons like myself, is the order of the day, how things are done in Jamaica. So say, for example, we want um, to go into our communities and talk to other young persons who are probably not as privileged as us in terms of resources, that kind of stuff. The challenge we have with that is that these young persons of themselves, based on what they see happening in their country, for example, when we talk to them, what is your biggest challenge? No jobs, no opportunities, the educational system is not sufficient. And the challenge that we have with that is, it, is engaging with them because it's, well, some persons might look to us young people and say, hey, you are better suited to talk to them because you're in the same age bracket. It is actually not that easier because they are still more influenced by what's happening by the bigger spectrum of society. So our government systems, our agencies, private sectors, all these kinds of stuff, the works and that kind of stuff, it, they have that challenge. So engaging with young persons, I would say, is one of the bigger challenges because we don't have that much to offer them as a young person because we might talk to them and say, hey, you know, this is there, that is there, you have that, you have heart and that, you can go to that. But when I look at it and say, hey, the job market, what it's like, even if I have a degree, even if I have uh, my six subjects, which probably was one of the biggest challenges in high school and getting subjects, when we leave, what then is there for us? What is the job market going to look like? I probably have to work at a call center, I have to work in a supermarket or something like that. So it's a bit of a challenge where in terms of accessing things like resources to help young persons um, and also the initiatives that are to be put in place to help these young persons are, even though we know some of them are there, they are not out there like that in face in the the young person's face for them to say, hey, this is there for me, that is there for me. We have to do more to publicize these things, to make these things more engaging for young persons, make them more appealing to them and probably put a little more to it for make it more incentivizing for young persons to actually want to um, be incentivized and want to, to be drawn to these kind of stuff, to actually want to make a change. Because if they don't see change happening, no, they themselves are not going to be incentivized to want to make any change. They're just going to see the system and say, hey, I came here, I saw this, I might as well continue because it's not going to be fixed. Hmm. Dervin, your take on your, on your colleague's comments. Well, he has hit the nail on the head. That's the pertinent problem, the perennial problem many young people are facing. There are many young people having high degrees and they can't get the jobs, but yet some, someone who is not as educated as them are getting higher than what they are getting, even though they have spent years in university getting their qualifications. And we wonder why the country is in the state that it is in. Billions of dollars being gone missing. Oh, and as I and I and I'm going to keep clamoring the thing. The, in the parish councils, no offense to the councillors, and I'm not offending them. But you have some of them who are not highly educated as some of these young people. Especially my brother here. Better him 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 become one of the councillors them. Because he has more sense than a lot of them who have no qualifications whatsoever but they are counselors and they are the ones um, pushing laws and policies on the populace. How can you have a counselor, which I have seen two videos, one with the old Harbour counselor who could hardly, hardly read counting letters while you hear in the background little babies laughing, right? And also 
another counselor who has become a mayor can hardly read what he what he has in his script and is getting over five million dollars but yet students who are going to universities go through still getting student loans and other loans spending years toiling sleepless nights studying doing exams etc graduate finally with their degrees and they are getting far lower than many of the counselors them who are not educated who not even pass primary school this is madness this is truly a banana republic that we are in and if people are offended by me calling Jamaica banana republic so be it but it is running like a typical banana republic which has a serious pandemic of the buffoonery virus which is just as big as covid the buffoonery is at an all-time high we mm. are going backward than going forward vision 2030 can never be fulfilled at this rate when you have this systemic type of system that you have penalizing educated people and putting persons who are not qualified for positions high up and those persons high up are trying to dictate how the trained and experienced persons who have toiled and get their degrees right to do their jobs and the, the, the saga between the former clerk and the and the and the, the speaker of the house is an example i'm not saying that she's not educated and she's dumb no right the clerk who is an he was an attorney at law she had to spend five years to get her law degree and go through the process right and if we are to assume that she didn't want to listen to what the learned counsel who is also the clerk of the house who is off here with the laws of the land who is trying to tell you that the laws of the land is dictated so and so that is why you have persons of different professions who are experts so she is an expert in the law and you should have humbled yourself to listen but then again due to the whole thing of the the the, 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 the nasty hubris that is over the head of this present administration the corruption the massive malfeasance the raping of the country's resources for themselves stealing from the people of jamaica stealing from poor people pitney who's supposed to get the free education under the various Un united nations treaties that jamaica is a signatory for right so there's a constant violation of international laws international treaties which we are signatories for and i'm yet to and I am yet to, to wonder, even what Mr. Isaac stated about people getting water, a most precious commodity, from a cesspool truck. You know, that is a violation of one of our international union international treaties, which, which has the article that states that um, a provi provision of clean water for the populace is a human right so again this is another violation of a, of the persons people's jamaican people's human rights here so you are giving them cesspool cesspool truck which has the precious commodity giving them that so you are going to infect the you're going to have the people them ingesting contaminated water and we're going to have probably we might have a, a lot of deaths in this country oh well maybe that is why we have the, the funeral home that was just built the other day in which you'll get more um bodies to you know to, to carry out the funeral arrangements uh, so maybe this is an orchestrated plot maybe this is an orchestrated plot and we need to wake up Dervin, let me ask you this question i'm gonna ask the cardiago the same question i am the prime minister Let's do a little role playing here. I am the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Michael Andrew Holness, and you're in my office as a young person. And I'm asking you, what is it if there's one thing you want me to do 
to improve the quality of your life and the life of your community and your colleagues, but particularly you. What what is that one thing you would want me to do? Well, first things first, we need to cut the, the corruption needs to be cauterized and put in competent people in the positions that we are they are, they are supposed to be in. Simple. We cannot afford to put friend and company who have but, no but, background of anything. But Dervin, Dervin, um, I have created the Integrity Commission in 2017. I created that. And it's a one-stop shopping to curb corruption in Jamaica. What more do you want me to do? We have OCA, we have the Integrity Commission, and we have several other bodies whose portfolio it is to look in part, if not in total, at corruption. So what more, tell me what more you want me to do. Question is, why didn't you and your colleagues didn't sign the document? Why after you got the training from Mr. Greg Christie, you said you didn't want to sign it? Are you but, hiding some things? But Durbin, I, this is something is wrong. Durbin, signing that document has nothing to do with prosecuting corruption because if a corrupt act has been committed then the relevant authorities are authorized to remove that person to arrest that person to charge that person prosecute that person to imprison that person so whether or not i sign a piece of document what does that have to do with the fact that there are relevant structures designed to deal with the problem of corruption but anyone who has read the book from john anybody who is a john maxwell not like me who, who loves reading books on leadership by john maxwell right as a leader if you want everybody to follow you you have to walk the walk and talk the talk so you signing and letting your other servant leaders to sign that document will show that you are for transparency, for law and order, and as servant leaders, you are going to, that is your first step to say, we are going to put a lid on this corruption in this country. But we have. Look at Mr. Royal Reed. He's been prosecuted right now. The question Look, is, you still have I'm not signed not the document. Servant leaders lead. You do what you need to do to show us, the populace, that you are serious about it. Besides the rural read, right? I am. What about the famed illicit six? Why weren't the reports in Parliament, the, the so-called special reports from the uh, from the learned attorney? I mean, the learned um, auditor general. Auditor general. Mm -hmm. Right. What about the um the 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 the, the what do you call it now the re the legal reasoning from the learned the great Dr. Derek McCoy, the mm -hmm. illustrious the illustrious attorney at law, mm -hmm. who is now our nation's mm -hmm. attorney general. Why hasn't his legal reasoning been presented to Parliament to see what is going on? What was his reason behind some of the legal issues that have arisen in Parliament? Well, look, you, you mentioned the Integrity Commission. I created the Integrity Commission. I created that Integrity Commission, and there's a process that we have to follow. We can't just ascribe guilt to people simply because of public perception. There is a constitutional right to being innocent until proven guilty. So we have to follow that process. And as far as Mr. McCoy, my learned and illustrious uh, Attorney General is concerned, he gave the reason. He said under Section 7A of the uh, Access to, uh, to Information that he's prohibited from providing uh, or, or disclosing this document. So now it's up to the Speaker to do so. Or, or you may see it in the court. So why the Speaker cannot present it? That is the million-dollar question. Well, Why? So you're leaving up, leaving up level of perception amongst the populace. The reasonable man to think that 
or to assume that the speaker has something to hide. Is she have something to hide on her part or is she hiding for her colleagues who are it who happens to be in the government? Mm -hmm. And if that is so, it leaves a bad stench in the air of Jamaica and not only in Jamaica, regionally and internationally. There is a reason why our CARICOM neighbors don't trust Jamaica. Dervin, the stench, is it green? What, what's this? No, man, it, it cannot be a green stench, man. Oh, I, ju I just wondered. I, I, you were being very descriptive, and I just wanted yes, to have a visual. Because you, yes, you, you know, we are we are glued to our seats. We are, we are the edge of our seats. All right, sorry, sorry. That sounds, that sounds Durbin, like Durbin, 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 <laughs> it's something... Durbin, there's something called separation of powers. You're asking me now yes. to tell you why the speaker mm. is not acting in the way you would like the speaker to act. And I think it's unfair to me to ask me that because of the separation of powers. Because it were there, if we didn't have the separation of powers, then I could, as a king, do whatever I wanted and the subjects would be commanded and they would act accordingly. But there's a process. See, there is a process for all of these things you're asking. And so I'm trying to... I'm trying to in the best way possible, explain to you that yes, you're frustrated. We're all frustrated, but there are processes in place to deal with these things because if we don't do that, what do we have? Anarchy. We have chaos. It's so just be, be careful. No. So just just bear with us as we go through this difficult process and get the answers to the questions that you posed. What's wrong with being a little patient? Let's work together. We have been patient for eight years now. We are Jamaicans. We're very patient. Eight years. Eight <laughs> years. Let me bring it doesn't have any time for any more buffoonery. We need to take off like our former airline, Air Jamaica. We are not taking off. We are crashing. <laughs> I think this is a September 11 event. event. We're crashing to the Twin Towers already. We are crashing. Let me bring, let me bring in... The the cardiago and and and, and get this <laughs> before we before we finish up the segment here i see you're smiling yeah um all right so if i were to speak to the, so my what i would tell the prime minister i've already told the prime minister this um directly and my to make my life better it would make my life better immediately but it would make lives of myself and several other young persons much much better in the long run probably 10, 20 years down the road. And it's a matter of our education system where it's concerned, particularly on civics education or engagement um, on a national level where young persons, they don't care about politics because they, quite frankly, they see it as this ominous and dark thing and they have the right to have that opinion because the way it's presented to us and I've spoken about this earlier, it's not a pretty picture, you know, where persons are to be standing in, in parliament and be speaking intelligently. We're hearing name callings and hurling and lack of accountability and all of these issues which are very prevalent in our, in our society. So as a young person, I believe that, speaking to the Prime Minister, we need to have a, 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 an environment where young persons are given the opportunity to express themselves, um, to think about things critically, because oftentimes when we hear the government or even news media come out and say they are going to do something, um, the Ministry of Education coming out with the trend initiative, we look at it on a, at a superficial level and we don't really take into consideration the implications that this will have for us. We just um, say, okay, they say this, all right, cool. Um, if it's going to impact me, I don't know. If it comes, it comes. If not, Cool. We don't question things. We just take it as is, as it's presented to us. And we, we don't question anything. So I want mm -hmm. for the Prime Minister, the Ministry of Education in particular, to focus more comprehensively on our curriculum, our education system, engaging young persons in being a part of initiatives. For example, the National Youth Parliament of Jamaica, the National Youth Advisory Council, and all these other youth initiatives that are here to benefit and help the lives of young persons because we really and truly need to have more discussions in our society. Oftentimes, one of the challenges that we have is that we are a society that we don't talk about things. We just act, act, act. And when I say act, I don't mean to say act in a positive way. You know, we just react in a negative way, outburst and all these kind of stuff. We don't take time to sit back, 
understand the perspectives of the common man because having a having a conversation these days is really just to say put my point out there whatever you say is not important it's just getting my point across we need to have a, have conversations we're able to understand the perspectives of everybody because we might not agree but we can still come to form some sort of appreciation and analyze what persons are seeing to you know get an understanding to build our own understanding we can't be just so in our own ways stuck in our own ways and not you know engaging and being truly analytical of what is happening in a society so when i say that we are to bolster our education system i want a, a society where young persons are able to talk, lead, analyze, listen, try to learn and gain an understanding for them still. Don't just listen to what persons tell you, your politician, your member of parliament might come to your counselor, might come to your friend. Learn to listen and learn for yourself so that when 20, 20 years down the road and Andrew Onis is no longer in power, you are able to stand up, make your own decision. Pardon? No, sorry. go ahead. No, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> when, when, when our current politicians are no longer in power, you are able to take up the mantle and do what they could not do today. Because we might complain, and we, we continue to complain to say, yo, it's a buffoonery, and they're making a mockery of our system. But if we leave things as they are, it is going to continue. It is going to become worse. It was bad 60 years ago. It's, go, it's worse now, and it will be even worse 60, 20 years down the road. So we have to do something now, take it from a grassroots level, engage with the young persons who are going to be the next leaders in our society but that to truly implement some sort of change i mean it won't affect it won't affect me positively no but i can definitely say look 10 20 years down we're going to have a more educated and more empathetic leader in our society and more point of objection point of objection mr mr, mr. nelson mr. Nelson. <laughs> mr nelson respectfully are you related mm -hmm. to senior nelson mr Herb nelson I am not. I, not I think knowledge. you are related to him, but I have an objection. Not 20 years, if you use a labor right, I go find you anyway there right now. Because that 20 <laughs> years just strong and wrong. No such thing. So no fix, thing. Say, 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 say in six months, six, six 12 months? months, when Andrew mm -hmm. Holness is no longer the prime minister, and then your arguments smooth like Air Jamaica and take off <laughs> and disappear. And well, I, 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 won't, I, won't, I won't make that comment. I, I'm, I'm in no position to, to, yes, to, to, to make that kind of comment. But Smart young man. Smart if it comes man. to that, then. But I'm, I'm still sticking with the 20 years down there, and I know somebody else will definitely be in power. Okay. Um, oh, wait a minute. What happened there? No, no, no. Oh, no. Hold on one second. I messed up there. All right. Here's what's where we're going to have now. We have folks, we have some people waiting in the wings. We are about to make a significant presentation. There is an announcement to be made that is going to send shockwaves through our parliament to certain ministries and those people are sitting in the wings right now so i just ask them to indulge us a few more minutes while we wrap up with our young people because it's been quite um it's been quite an engaging process listening to people like dervin and the cardiago because you know we say that they are the future but we don't treat them like they are the future and for those of you who took um, you took the role playing a little bit too seriously. What I was trying to do was to make try and make the best argument for the prime minister for you to see how foolish, you know, how foolish the position, how, how foolish it is to try and explain what Bourbon was 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 posing to me, so that you can understand that the prime minister he has no answer. Because when Durbin posed that question about, well, why don't you why why didn't you sign why didn't you why don't you sign the code of conduct? You asked for the training, you received the training. It has to do with transparency and all that stuff. Why didn't you? There is no good answer. So please, people, don't don't bash me because of because of that. I'm only trying to 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 um highlight the point that the prime minister will have no good answer for these issues raised by Durvin and De Cardiago, right? So it's a little role playing is good. Sometimes you have to mix it up. We just don't want people to just make a presentation. You have to kind of like challenge them, but it's all it's 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 like um what what what's it um devil's advocate. 
you don't really mean it but oh somebody said be careful this is not south africa okay i won't call anybody fools around here <laughs> so listen we're gonna have to wrap it up now because we have chris waiting we have doc waiting we have lion we have a, quite a few people but um let me just start with 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 isat what what words of encouragement can you give to these two young gentlemen and Jermaine, who I think is listening? What what you're there on the island? What 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 encouraging words do you have for them for the future? The first thing, word is power. So, Mister Nelson Junior, I promise you, do not be a labor right. You will suffer. That's the first thing. Words of encouragement. I'm I'm being serious about that. Two, um, do not limit yourself literally do not limit yourself and when you when you speak especially when you speak such positive words in the universe as articulate as articulate as you are you should say you should make sentences such as so when in 20 years when i decide to be the prime minister or a member of parliament that there is something there for me to do and i don't have to start from scratch those are the things you're supposed to do because what is clear from when you hear Dervin talk about the Banana Republic and the persons in power is that we have young people on the ground that can do better. So don't limit yourself. Um, reach for something more than call centers and heart certification so that you can have proper representation for the future. What is there now is just a drop in the bucket and it's a whole bunch of nothingness and you want to change that. So I'm just speaking that into your life. And if you ever decide to actually become a member of the, the diaspora, it means you would have to leave the country. Don't let nobody give you a position and you don't have a visa and you don't leave and, and fill up numbers. Don't, don't, don't be pawns and puppets. Actually do something because actions speak louder than words. And, and that is what it is. But you are on... Uh, you, you you're on a really good start and your genetic is good you're you're a junior and you articulate yourself like herb and you're in the right place and for any young person that, that's listening um they didn't tell you but it would the world would be such a beautiful place if if you were lawyers and doctors and then you can spin music when night comes <laughs> <laughs> like ratty and 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 have the conversations and you can you can you can smile and take light of situations and and have and when you have conversation and the village lawyers come through you can laugh at them and smile at them even when herb helped them to make a fool of themselves and <laughs> well, I, mean, well, I, remember, I remember that remark i remember that remark well, I, I look I, I genuinely do, genuinely do. I I really look forward to see you do something really impactful for the country. And if, if and your display today, um, if nobody tells you, I will tell you, I'm proud of you and honored to know that there are so much, there's so much greatness, greater than us, that's coming. That's that's yet to come, and we 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 hope that the space is there. And if they ever lock you up in a state of emergency because they know you're articulate right. and you're a strong black man, we're here to make sure that they don't derail you, my brother. Because that's what I'm trying to do to the young people. But we're not going to have it. The stench is green. Have a good All right. day. All right, let me leave it there. Herb, quickly, uh, words of encouragement for both, both young men. Yes. All right. Yeah, typically we're, 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 we're down on time right now. Herb, Herb. I'm good? Okay. Yeah, 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 I can hear you, yeah. Okay, listen, young people, you're seeing the mistakes that all these elders are making. You're seeing the corruption, the rampant corruption. You probably notice it in your own communities. So you always want to start from where you are. Problem solving, I was told as a young soldier. You start with a series of concentric circles around you. So you're looking at yourself first. Make sure you're right. And then you continue with those circles going outward. That means your family members your immediate family members, and then your extended family members, and then your community, 
right? And extended community members. If you're if you're working outward and you're working for the greater good and the betterment of, of our society, then you always want to speak up, right? When you see wrong, speak one on one to to a person, right? Quietly, because they have a reason for doing what they're doing, right? And if they know you don't like it then they'll respect you regardless of what they're doing. And they might just change, right? And if you can help others along the way, then I say, as young folks, you do that. Help others as much as you can because it does come back to you tenfold. It may not come back right away, but it, eventually it will, it will come back, right? Now... If you're going to get ahead, you're going to have to participate in processes. Whether you participate in a local club, or you participate in the cadet corps, or you participate in whatever the activity is. That means you're building your network, and you're getting to know people, you're getting to know others. And you're still building, you're still building out that problem solving that that you that you perform it. and it just means you've been a good citizen right but you gotta know the laws of the country you gotta know what rules you live by and most of the time it's the law of god and your religion and what you're you're celebrating on a regular basis right it doesn't mean that all pastors out there are good, even though they're preaching goodness to you every Sunday. There's a lot of people find out, they're shocked to find out what their pastors are engaged in. But the bottom line is, you are participating nevertheless, and you are making things better, right? And, you know, I say one thing, if you're going to fully participate, Strengthen yourself, strengthen your mind, strengthen your body, right? Because when you don't know how to fight back, whether it's mentally or physically, you got problems. All right. So that's my advice as young. All right, Patrick, uh, quickly, some yeah, quickly. Uh, let me let me tell you. Go look up Micah six verse eight, Herb Junior. Right, live by that. What does the Lord require for you? But also, I remind you of a song we usually sing um, at camp in Jamaica. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. You get, you have that spark, so light it. The thing that I'm 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 saying to you, what I what I will tell you, get this thing out of your mind. The voter apathy. That 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 thing don't do. you. Democracies require government. And you can't sit on the side and say, boy, I don't like what you're doing or not. Get in there. Get in the mix. You understand? Pick a party. I mean, I sat my tell you one, and maybe I might will agree with them. Pick a party, become a part of it, and then make a change from within. That's all I'm saying to you. But I'm, I'm, I'm very, very proud of you. You know, I say family. Your, your dad will tell you how that come about. My mother is yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the cardiago. Closing remarks quickly, please. I, I hadn't planned on giving any closing remarks, but firstly, I'd like to thank the first few gentlemen earlier for their very positive words of encouragement. And truly, I'll take everything um, that you guys have said. To heart because I think as a young person it's very good when you have your seniors such as yourself. I hope apologize if you take senior offensively, but a person such as yourself, um to have them to talk to, to listen to, to hear your views and opinions. And when for Mr. Ratigan also for having this kind of medium where we can express our voices and can hear different perspectives. I think that's a very good step, a key part of our democracy where we can have conversations. Um, Irrespective of our political sides and aspirations, we are able to 
talk and listen and, you know, in a very respectful and structured manner. So I think that's a very important and integral part of our democracy and moving forward, it can definitely be used as a medium for greater enactment of empowerment. All right. Thank you. Dervin, quickly. Well, thank you all for having me on the show. Um, and thanks for the word of encouragement, sirs. Uh, I am just humbled every day that I am I'm being able to be called so frequently on the show. Uh, I, I never know that I, I can make such an impact on everyone here, but I am humbled. And, and that's all I have to say. I, I can't have well, anything to say anymore, basically. Let me just let me just wrap it up by saying that I'm humbled, thankful, grateful for both of you to, to make the appearance today and also to Jermaine. Um, when I look at the Cardiago, I, I see uh, the youngster that I wanted to be, but I just, just, just never had the discipline, and 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 you know, just didn't pay attention to the things that I should have. And so I'm jealous when I look at him because I said that's who I really wanted to be. And then when I look at Dervin, I look at the person that I have become because Dervin is very outspoken. You know, Der Dervin. He puts his thoughts together. He's a critical thinker. And he's unafraid. He's courageous. And and I see that the 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 it should be the other way around where I'm where Durbin should be saying that he, you know, the the, the qualities, you know, he's seen he, he has adopted the things that he's seen in me. But I think it's the other way around because the more I see Durbin, the more I am comfortable that Jamaica is gonna be. Is, is going to be okay. We just need some changes. And for all of the people who say, oh, y'all just talk negative about Jamaica. Here are two reasons, two positive reasons. Look, you accuse me of constantly bringing on negativity. Here are two solid uh, positive reasons why we should believe, we should continue to believe in Jamaica. We just need to get rid of certain people in Jamaica and we need to um, we need to we need to address uh, systemic failures, and I think we're fine. Jamaica is Jamaica is our rock. Jamaica is our pride and joy. Jamaica is our jewel. But the reputation has been besmirched by people who care only for self and not for country. And just keep in mind that when you came into this world, when you were born in Jamaica, you were born as a Jamaican. Anything else? Somebody else tell you about it. You were born as a Jamaican, and that's why we see around this corner, Jamaica first. We don't care about your party affiliation, your color, your philosophy. As long as, as long as in your mind you have it uppermost that Jamaica comes first, then everything else we can fix. So again, young men, I thank you for coming on. Continue to be an inspiration to your communities, and I hope to have you back real soon remember you don't need an invitation both of you have the keys to the palace all right thank you so much thank you very much okay all right all right now people go and call your neighbors no you said me just say oh Maria is with us still. I see Maria in the chat. Okay, I'm just reading the chat here. But listen, folks, um, we have a very special presentation. And I know Isat one, Isat can't sleep. Him can't, if you notice him name, talk about the chicken because Isat can't wait to hear what it is that we're about. What kind of news we have a boss on the program. But this is earth shattering. This is going to send shockwaves through the government. Without further ado, let me bring on a couple of the gentlemen here. We have, of course, my good friend, Mr. Mekwitak, Mr. Vumvavam, Mr. Vumvavi. No, actually, it's one. Mr. Vumvavam, Vumvavi, upper echelon of St. Andrew. <laughs> None other than Mr. Jeffrey Tavares. There he is. Welcome, my brother. Then we have... Good evening, good evening, good evening. We have, we have the man... Who, when he speaks, he roars, and people just have to listen. He's a captivating speaker. He's 
intelligent beyond his young years. I think him only, I think he's, I think he's like a year older than me, but I'm 16, so he's 17. None other than Lion. I don't see him. Put him speech up there. Then we have a man that, you know, I have to be frank and I have to be open and I have to be transparent. I preach it every week. This young man is turning out to be a star in his own right. And this young man, I'm proud to be associated with him because this young man is my godson, Mr. Christopher Henry. Here he is. And then we have the real star of the show. We are all a constellation of stars here. But the bright star, the morning star, is this man. I know he's a very humble man and modest. And so he's not like me dig him up them way, but we have to dig him up because he's doing he's, he's doing some things along with him that is going to change the way people look at the diaspora and the way the diaspora engages with the government of Jamaica for the benefit of the people of Jamaica, not for our benefit, benefit of the people of Jamaica, none other than Dr. Cooper Francis. Gentlemen, welcome to Reason with Ratigan. We're going to reason, we have a couple hours to reason. Yes. And Good evening, everyone. Let evening. me make sure I'm not leaving anybody out. Um, so we have three, six, eight. Okay. All right. Doc. Yes, my brother. I'm going to leave you to lead this discussion. The floor is yours. Take it any direction you want. But I'm sure that within the first few minutes, you're going to make an announcement that we have. 2,061 devices tuned in right now, which may account for about, I don't know, 3,000 people or maybe more. And they're listening with bated breath as to what you have to say. Philip Sutherland said, I'm here for this. So the floor is yours, Dr. Francis. Well, I think that, uh, good evening, everyone. And um, thank you for the opportunity to share with you. Um, I see Isaac just take over the whole thing. Um, uh, but um, I, I just want to say that is not, I feel humbled that I am the person that has been um, earmarked to do this um, announcement because it is very different and it's very revolutionary. And it's especially in view of a press release that I saw today um, from the Ministry of um, Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. And I, I must tell you, I, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed with the way in which this uh, press release was written uh, because I was the center of the focus. And for all these years that I've been serving, before I make the one of the announcements, um, I've been serving the country and in fact, the current government um, at one stage and the people that I work with, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, including the minister. I remember first seeing the minister and when we announced what we were going, and Herb was there, he, she said, wow, I feel like I, I can dance when she heard the news of what we were trying to do. That were, those were her exact words. And just as I remember those, I have everything written and can produce it. So when I saw them trying to sully my name today and the, and the, and the Jamaica Diaspora Crime Intervention and Prevention Task Force, I smiled because I say to whoever said that, is not only a liar, but the worst liar I've ever come across, a liars, because they say that I've expressed my disgust or my, um, my issues with the government of Jamaica and uh, the, their treatment of me. And that is not true, absolutely not true. And I can prove it. And any one of you out there who have said this, you must stand in front of me and a court or wherever, and you must put your hand on the Bible, which I know, know some of you, once you put your hand on the Bible, it will melt with the, the, the amount of chagrin you have inside of you. And so I'm not afraid. I'm telling you this point blank. You are lying. You are trying to, to do what you are supposed to have done in the first place. You should have answered the first um, email we sent to you, and you ignored it. We see you ignored the second, and I'm sure you will ignore everything. What you'd sought to do is to sully the atmosphere. Having said all that, 
Um, the people must be sort of saying, what am I talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, we sent out a letter, a viral letter some time ago and had a reaction. And not me alone, every person who you see here, and certainly I want to express my support for everyone who's especially Brother Ratican and all the members of the call to action team that you will see here, and some are not here. But at the same time, I want to thank them for having given me the support and allowed me the opportunity to serve in certain capacities. Now, having said all that, we have been talking to the government and we've been talking to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And, and, and one more thing I must say, I don't believe in personal attacks. If I believed in personal attacks, I would have attacked a lot of persons personally, but I don't. But since they believe it, let them go ahead. Now, let's move into the real McCoy. We have been um, trying to prove to the Jamaican government that the diaspora should act on its own as a diaspora. We do not believe that the Jamaican government should, in fact, be leading the diaspora. And that is exactly what has happened. And that is what is happening. They do not wish to renege this responsibility that they have chosen for themselves. So therefore, they have to crush any opposition to this idea. And I, and I want to say the idea of the parallel conference and anything that we're doing, the marches, I mean, they, they've called us the Dirty 30, right, in the first march and saw what happened. And now we are focusing on New York and they definitely don't want us to go to New York and they definitely don't want us to DC. They're coming up with other things. But let me make them make it quite clear. We also have plans. We also have initiatives. And one of the most important initiatives is we have been able to successfully take over the Global Diaspora Council and registered it in our name in the United States of America, in several states. So we don't have to worry about them threatening me to return this and to return that. You had to threaten me to go take me to court and you have to take us to court and all of you too. Because what does that mean? What are we saying? We are saying that the diaspora belongs to us. We should be, we should be our own leaders. And some time ago in 2018 in Mara, Georgia, we're almost there. And people, for whatever reason, decided it was not to be so. So you may see a brochure that is talking about this, about the May 10th March in New York City. But most importantly, as of today, and I would like to Mr. Rattigan to expect, expect extra, and other members to, what should I say, amplify what I've just said and give some more details about what we have done. I am only one member and I do not pres um, presume to be a spokesman for everyone. I just will speak as I'm asked to speak and I will support as I, I know I am supposed to support and I do not take that back. There are too many people who have been calling. What are you doing? Why are you doing this? Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. You have the brochure right there. So everyone now, you can understand, it is Jamaicans and friends of Jamaica. We are going to be in New York on May 10th, and we will be official. We will be official because we have official states have already agreed that we now own the name and all these things aside to it. Now, if anyone else has any interest in these, we say, come and take it, as you should and could. Now, uh, Jamaicans and Friends of Jamaica, let me read it to you. Let's raise our voices in protest against corruption. Actually, I would I would put one thing, crime first. Oh, it says crime second, but I would put, put crime first, honestly, because that is our major, and everybody now is trying to make excuses that crime went down by 14%. Well, you know, one thing I've always said, and I know I'm picking up a little time, is that you have... Um, lies, damn lies, and you have statistics. You choose which one this could be. Now, I will not agree that anything has gone down, any statistics is so, until I see it myself. Then you have poverty. We have failed on that. The healthcare system, the poor education in Jamaica, and those are the things that I stand up for. 
Now, if anyone tells you that they've heard me saying, I want to be this, I want to be that, that is not true. Absolutely not. And none of the persons, the wonderful persons who served in the Jamaica Diaspora Crime Intervention and Prevention Task Force, three of whom are on this program right now this evening, three of them from the, from the start. And there are many out there listening, and they have not gone anywhere. There's only one guy who was asked to leave, and the reason is clear. I'm not going to go into that some time ago. And I will say this to you, and there are others also, and they have a brief, and they have a problem with me and the type of leadership that I But I'm not a person um, who is afraid of being a leader. I lead by example. And I want to also say, in the closing, before I, I turn this over to Mr. Rattigan and friends and members of the call to action team, that you, you trouble this man. And this man doesn't trouble any man. But when you trouble this man, it will be a bam bam. Thank you very much for the opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, gentlemen and lady. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Just, I just got the last part of it, but I, I know exactly what you were about to say, what you've said. I'll turn it over now to Lion. Roar, my brother, roar. My good brethren, salutations, blessings. Listening audience, viewing audience, blessings to one and all. This is indeed a momentous occasion. For the first time, the Jamaican people, I noticed I didn't start out by using the word diaspora because Jamaican people is Jamaican people. Whether in the Caribbean or even in Alaska, it does not matter. It's Jamaican people. For the first time, they have exercised a voice that has put a corrupt government in checkmate. Let that sink in for a bit. Because when one understands what Dr. Rupert Francis just said, and I like to call him general, right? it is highlighting that what we are now looking at today is that which was supposed to be created for the Jamaican people in the diaspora has now been not commandeered, but has been taken back. One good analogy uh, I was discussing with my brother Wilfred Rattigan is that if we have a home and you went away and you hear that it is being occupied, and when you go, you realize that not only it is it occupied, but your interest as far as the intent for your home is concerned is not being served. No, you go to the, the, the person you see occupying the place and they say that they are the owner. One result you have, go and find out whose name is on the title. As far as a diaspora organization is concerned, the owner of the title for the diaspora organization now, the true diaspora organization, is the Jamaican people living in the diaspora. Thank God for the OJLDF. Thank God for stalwarts like Dr. Francis. And all the members of the panel, even those that are not here visually, thank God for them, because Jamaican didn't know that they could do this. The government is placed in checkmate. Why? They cannot contest this takeover by the Jamaican people in the diaspora 
of an organization that was misleading the American public as well as the Jamaican public, claiming to be an independent body representing the diaspora abroad when it was actually an arm of the government. That might sound light, but take into consideration deeply before you err. That same government, foreign ministry headquarters was built and erected by the Chinese. I don't know if that doesn't spell compromise. But to make matters worse, this same foreign affairs ministry of this government established an entity in the United States that has circumvented the United States regulations for such entities representing foreign agencies. Please forgive the background noise. Huh? Representing a foreign agent, not filing any report. Nobody knows whether you're doing hanky panky, yes or no. Nobody knows in the federal government, that is, how much money you collect on a yearly basis, how it is wired, how it is taken to Jamaica, what are the proceeds, what was done with the proceeds. It is easy to mistake this so called entity as a satellite of the Jamaican government who has supported the one China policy as being counter to the United States interests. That is jeopardizing Jamaica. That is jeopardizing run Jamaica. Now, the time has come. We are not just having a talk show. We are not just writing letters and sending out ATIs. We are telling them that they should cease and desist from this falsehood of an entity that they call a diaspora organization or face legal ramifications. This is not against the Jamaican people nor even members of the diaspora in, in its entirety. This is against a corrupt Jamaican government. So people, take yourself out of that. This is not against you. In fact, even the very persons in the diaspora organization, so-called now, that has been checkmated by us, by the grace of God, even those persons are welcome to participate, not in the new diaspora organization, in the original diaspora organization. And I yield to the other members of the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Um, let me call on Mr. Pumvava, Mr. Pumvavi, Jeffrey Tavares. Good evening, Mr. Nelson, other members of the distinguished panel, panel um, our good friend, Mr. KFC, and um, my other good friend, Future Junior Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Attorney at Law, Mr. Christopher Henry. You know, coming on this platform this evening, I said to myself, I'm going to read something and then I'm going to turn back over to Mr. Rattigan. And I'm going to read what I, what I wrote. In the unlikely story, there has never been anything false about hope. For when we as Jamaicans have fallen down in possible ads, when we have been told that we are not ready or that we should not, or we cannot, generations of Jamaicans respond with a simple creed that sums up the spirit of a people. Change must come to Jamaica. Yes, we can to justice and equality. Yes, we can to opportunity and possibility. Yes, we can heal this nation. We will remember that there is something happening in Jamaica, that we are not as divided as our politics 
suggest that we are that we are one people we're one nation and together we can bring the change we need in jamaica for all those jamaicans whose cares has been our concern the cause endure the hope still lives and the dream for a better life for my jamaican people shall never die shall never die. With the words that will ring out from Negril Point to Moran Point, change must come to Jamaica. May God bless this beautiful island of ours. God bless you all. Mr. Rattigan, that's all I'm gonna say. Because the change that we seek in our country will never come from the political elites of Jamaica. It has to come from us as a people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me just say that. This diaspora is not my mother's diaspora. It's not my father's diaspora. This is our diaspora. This diaspora is a dynamic, forceful, aggressive, intelligent diaspora. We are not afraid to ask questions. We are critical thinkers. We're not like sheep being led to slaughter. And we would never, we would never be. No, we have tried on several occasions to correspond with the Jamaican government for the sake of our people who are suffering. And by the way, I would be remiss if I didn't announce or, 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 or inform all of you that I invited the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, the Honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith, I invited the junior minister, Mr. Terry Long, Minister Terry Long. I invited the ambassador, Audrey remarks. I've yet to hear from them. I also invited the opposition spokesperson on foreign affairs and foreign trade, Ms. Angela Brown Burke. I also invited my godson, who is here with us, Mr. Christopher Henry. Unfortunately, Mrs. Brown Burke is in a travel status and could not be with us. But the junior spokesperson for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade is here with us. And I say all of that to say this, that we've been ignored. We've been largely ignored. We've been cast aside. We've been ridiculed. We've been mischaracterized well they can continue to do all of that while we move forward with the work that has to be done on behalf of the jamaican people my learned colleague line and by the way line and i we were, we were were former classmates he made it abundantly clear that people who are now serving in the united states as Global Jamaica Diaspora Council representatives. They can continue to do so with our express permission. But they will have to report to us. They don't report to the government. Because that is what this whole argument is about. It's about the right of the diaspora to establish its own organization and to be led, directed, managed by its own people living in the diaspora. You cannot have a diaspora organization where, where three of the four governing members are Jamaican government officials. It cannot be. You cannot have a diaspora whose point of communication is through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. They don't have a website. If you look them up, you will have to go find their page on the website of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. You cannot have a diaspora organization where the election is largely governed by the government of Jamaica. You cannot have a diaspora organization where more than half of the 30 members of this organization is appointed 
by the government of Jamaica. You cannot have a, a diaspora organization where the chairperson is the junior minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. You cannot have a diaspora organization where that minister, that chair, has the right to remove people that they appointed to represent us. You cannot. You cannot have a diaspora organization where every two years the biennial conference is held in Jamaica and we are invited to our conference and we have to absorb the costs associated with travel, accommodations, food, etc., including a registration fee. No, we cannot have that. And we won't. And to that extent, we have reached out to our colleagues far and wide in Canada and in the UK. And as we speak, they are filing their documents to establish their own organizations. I should say organization called the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. Effectively, that organization, the name belongs to us, us, the people in the diaspora, not the government of Jamaica. And I saw a press release this morning where they, they had the temerity a so-called warning, cease and desist warning, saying that if we continue to use the logo, we should prepare to face judicial interference. Well, I have news for them. They will receive our official cease and desist letter in the fullness of time. And if we find that they continue to use that name, then they should be prepared to face legal consequences. As I said before, we are a dynamic, we're a forceful, we're an intelligent diaspora, and we're unafraid to seek justice in the courts here in the United States, in Canada, and the UK. So those of you who are using that title, you need to report to us or stop using the title. Because if you don't, once you get this letter, you will receive a summons to appear in court and defend your position of being a member of the uh, Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, of which you're not. You're not. So I'm speaking to people like Michelle Tolonil. I'm speaking to people like Shauna Chin. I'm speaking to people like Mr. Peter. What's his surname? Grace. What's Gracie. his surname? Gracie. 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 G-R-A-C-E-Y. Gracie. Gracie, Gracie, I'm speaking to all of you who claim to represent the diaspora. You need to come to us and speak to us as equals. And we will decide whether or not you will represent us. There's a place for you at the table. Believe me, there is a place for you. But if you should choose to do otherwise, then it will show your true colors that you're not with the people. You're with the government of Jamaica. And we will treat you as such. So let this be clear instructions to you. Do not, because we're very serious around here, cease and desist when you get that letter from acting on the behalf of the people in the diaspora 
Because remember, some of you got less than 100 votes, and yet you claim to represent almost a million people. Just remember that. And I know that the junior minister is prepared to come to the, these United States to have his conference or his meetings with us. We will be putting out questions on our website so that you, all of you feel free to go to the website. And while you're there, you can make a contribution. But feel free to go to the website, look at the questions. And if he happens to be in your part of the country and you, you attend his meetings, there are questions there that you can ask him. And we make no apology for telling people not to go to the conference in Jamaica, described as the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council biennial conference, because that name belongs to us, belongs to the people, does not belong to the government. And so I appeal to all of my brothers and sisters in the diaspora, listen to me and listen to me carefully. They do not represent your interests. They do not. This is a movement of the people. They call themselves a movement, and let me explain to you why. When you ask them, are you a movement or are you an organization? They will always tell you, we are a movement. Yet, if you look at their policy, the global diaspora policy and if you look at their terms of reference you will see an organizational structure there it's built out but you know why they can't register because they have government influence they have a government presence and if they should register that organization in the united states with government officials sitting on a 501c3 nonprofit organization asking American citizens to do things, those American citizens become subject to a host of laws, as well as the government officials. So that's why they can't register. We've been telling them, register the organization. We've been pleading, we've been beseeching them for years, register. No registration, because they cannot register. Well, we can register, and we have. And so, my brothers and sisters, family, in the diaspora and in Jamaica, I want you to know that we are here for you. We are not here to sell services and products and investments. No, we are here to talk about poverty, crime, housing, education, water, infrastructure, quality of life. Those are some of the things that we are interested in. We're not interested in selling products. We are not interested in, in selling services. We're not interested in renting cars, selling Aki, Having you, come and, having you come and buy homes. We're not interested in that. We are interested in how our people are living. We're interested in service delivery, not only in, J in Jamaica, but also in America. We have own homeless Jamaicans here in these United States. And so it is our responsibility to reach out and help our brothers and sisters. They will give you good speeches. They will say words that flow and look like a string of pearls. But beyond that, there is nothing. You're going to hear from Mr. Patrick Beckford, a long time stalwart in the diaspora community. And he will tell you what he's learned over the years from attending all of these conferences. 
all of these conferences. I've attended one and it was a waste of time. They tell you what you want to hear, but then they don't tell you what you need to know. And so on June 16, 17, 18, 19, we will be having the People's Conference. It's not a parallel conference. We didn't name it a parallel conference. As far as we're concerned, there's only one conference. There's only one. And that's our conference, 16, 17, 18, 19th of June from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. New York time. They have scheduled theirs. We could care less. And I hope they don't use the name. And I hope the representatives in the U.S. don't go there claiming to be representatives of the one Jamaica League, uh, sorry, the, the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. I hope they don't do that because that would be a mistake. Now, next week, God willing, we will have all the paperwork we need to send out that cease and this letter. And the folks in Canada and the folks in the UK will be doing the same thing. Let me show you. Take a look at this, folks. You know who that is? That is our ambassador, these United States. And here's what she says. Hello, friends. For those of us working outside of Jamaica, it is exciting to be invited to a meeting in Montego Bay until you arrive at a meeting venue with no sea views and realize that there are also no plans to include a trip to the beach. I guess a girl just has to do what a girl has to do. Audrey Marks. Brothers and sisters, we are paying for this. We are paying for this. And this is nonsense. There are people who will go to bed tonight with nothing in their stomach. There are people who will go to bed tonight not knowing what tomorrow will bring for themselves and their families. There are people going to bed tonight with no hope, only frustration, only stress. And here is our ambassador. I wish we all could live like that. But unfortunately, we can't. Kevin, where are you there? I need a picture. I need a video with my Minister of Health. A dance. Pick a cottage in the grill. Please, Kevin, where are you there? Find that for me, my brother. So, folks, <clears throat> I've taken up a lot of time, but this means so much to me. I'm passionate about my people. Passionate about my country. And there are those who would say, we don't worry about Jamaica for, you know, we don't just stay part of and deal with no problem. Those are the ones who are living the life in Jamaica. Because the ones who live in other places where they're behind me, they need the help. They want the help. And anything we can do on their behalf, they would gladly appreciate because they are voiceless, they're marginalized, they're ignored. And so we will continue to stand for the people of Jamaica. We will continue to stand for those in the diaspora who are suffering as well because we do have suffering people here. But we are not, we, we're not going to let the government of Jamaica run over us. And so... I say to them that 
we look forward to having a discussion if that's what they want address the problems and i think that's the way we should go um i think that's the way we should go because we should have dialogue we're one people we're no more than six degrees of separation and we want to avoid conflict but the government in its arrogance in its false sense of superiority it believes that it can roughshod over us and that is not going to happen and then a dear friend of mine sent me this 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 some remarks this morning and it said the die is cast the die is cast and I see no immediate off ramp. So, government, we stand prepared to talk. But we are also prepared for action. Here we go. We talk, we talk about beach access, and you see he was on a beach in the Gessnick Road. And look at this on another beach. Most of our people don't have access to these beaches. If, if, if what we're seeing, if they're resorts, most of our people don't. These are the things we need to fight for. We need to fight for access to our beaches. And by the way, by the way, before I step off the platform. They come out with this nonsense saying that crime has gone down and this and that. Don't believe the hype. Because here is a comparison. The comparison is not last year to this year. The comparison is when they took over to now. When they took over, 1,208 people were slaughtered in Jamaica. From 2016 to present, we haven't approach that number it's always been higher and they have appointed someone to deal with crime issues on behalf of the diaspora i believe his name is kevin jr i'm hoping to be fully corrected about the name but i think that's his name they are supposed to meet with us and talk about national development and part of national development includes crime fighting efforts i would like to see one report any report compiled by mr kevin june on our behalf provided to the government of jamaica i would like to see that because i, I i've never seen such a report but yet they appointed him to be the spokesperson for that, to engage with them. I don't think he's ever engaged with anyone. So when they start telling you that, hey, you in the diaspora, stop sending up to make, tell them, go and speak to Mr. Kevin Jr. Tell them, go and speak to your appointed uh, national security person and find out if that person is engaged with the, the um, shipping companies Find out if that person is engaged with the law enforcement agencies. Find out if that person has a protocol in terms of um, in terms of uh, 
addressing the issues of paperwork, who's submitting uh, barrels at, and you know identifying these people. Find out if there's a move to deputize these people. Find out all of these things. You appointed him. But folks, you see what I'm saying? They appointed these people because they're their friends and they can, they can commiserate with them. They can celebrate with them. They get invited to the embassy. They can sip tea and cock up them little finger and carry on and have a good time. Yes, indeed. <laughs> because if I don't go to another cocktail party, if I don't go to another diplomatic event, me no miss nothing. I've been to literally. I've been no, to, no, no, hold on, Mr. Ratigan. No, don't say that because Christopher, Christopher, Christopher Henry got invited to his own. Well, whenever Christopher Henry, whenever I'm, Christopher Henry become minister, of, no, you know, Mr. Minister of Foreign Affairs. Oh, I'm obliged. I'm obliged to go. But I'm saying, if I don't go, be to going. Him, it's fine. I've been to many, and I've been to many all over the world. I know what they're like, right? So my focus now is on the people, not on the parties. And when I say parties, I'm not talking about political parties. I'm talking about social events. My interest now is about the people of Jamaica. What we can do to lift them out of degradation, misery, suffering, poverty. How we can lift them out of that so that the day can see a brighter day. And we need to give back because... When me come from that place you see right behind me, it still exists. I'm very familiar with that place behind me. It's a Photoshop photograph at a my house in a water house. So I think I've said enough. I will yield the floor now, Mr. Herb Nelson Jr. We have Patrick Beck, Mr. Patrick Beckford, and we want to hear from the opposition junior spokesperson for foreign affairs and foreign trade, my godson, Christopher Henry. Herb, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you very much, uh, 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 Mr. Ratigan. Greetings to all my fellow panel members and to members of our esteemed audience. You know, this has been a long time coming, and there should be no shock to anybody's senses because the sensible thing that should have been done from the time that government started this whole affair of taking charge of diaspora movement would have been to push back and to make it very clear that the diaspora will decide for itself how we plan to operate and the fact that we will respect the laws of the nation, even though we're living in the diaspora. And this thing about voting, it will probably come to, as a shock to them when we decide to make every effort to allow everyone in the diaspora at their option to vote which in my opinion if you cannot change jamaica from the inside from its corrupt and vile and wicked ways then you have to change them from the outside jamaica's score on the corruption per perception index showed some improvement yes she said that but the country still ranks low being the fourth most corrupt state in the caribbean since 2022 the score was 44 out of 100 with a ranking of 69 out of 180 rated countries crime homicides has been a significant concern. In 2021, 53.13 per 100,000, a 10% increase over 2020. In 2023, 60.9 homicides per 100,000, the highest in Latin America and the Caribbean that year. We know that 
the in education, the Jamaica Education Transformation Commission developed a report with 54 prioritized recommendations to improve student performance and education productivity, including governance, accountability, early childhood education, teaching curriculum, teacher training, tertiary education, technical and vocational education and training, infrastructure, technology, and finance. Yet, what do we see? We see an exodus of Jamaica's teachers, and we see very little being done to stem that tide. We see a battle over teacher uh, pay, and very little being paid to our teachers. Our teachers are being given the backhand. They've been slapped around and they've been disenfranchised. They don't want to leave. They want to stay in Jamaica and they want to do their jobs and they want to be compensated properly. That's not happening. But our fine men of the government found a way to give themselves a 200 to 230 percent pay raise. And what were they offering the teachers? And you folks correct me if I'm wrong. Four to 10%, something like that. These are the people charged with teaching our children. These are the people who stand up in the classroom, come in early after ignoring whatever is happening with them and their families, come in early to take care of your kids. And nobody went out to protest the treatment of, of those teachers. Is it any wonder that the same schools in the same neighborhoods are turning out the same 40% graduation rate with kids who could barely read, write, or comprehend? Why? Because there's no effort being made to change and to educate people in communities that are continuously underserved. Healthcare. Jamaica initiated the primary healthcare reform for 2021 to 2030. The reform aims to improve the existing system by incorporating strategies for integration and developing mechanism to coordinate healthcare services in public and private sectors. So what does that mean? Conwell Regional Hospital. Projections went from 2.5 billion to 5 billion. Right now it's up to about $22 billion to take a hospital that has its patients sleeping on the floor, sleeping in the waiting rooms, have insufficient beds for a region that is growing. Savannah Lamar Hospital, patients sleeping on truck tires with flyboard. Same problem. Hospital Her. without any any pharmaceuticals oh, sorry to interrupt you yeah I'm important news here okay the global jamaica diaspora council was just registered in the uk that name does not belong to the to the jamaican government they cannot use it it was i just got confirmation it was just registered thank you my brethren you know in the uk thank you very much and i have the proof that it was it was registered. Go ahead, Herb. Sorry to interrupt you, but I no, feel the no need problem. to. It's all yeah. good. All good. You should run the breaking news. Right again, break, breaking break, news. Breaking news. Breaking news. The dirty thirty has crippled the Jamaican government. <laughs> all out of you. I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> all right. Now, the healthcare, like I was saying, 
is the basis for the last U.S. government warning that was attributed to us, the troublemakers, the Dirty 30, that said it's because of our protests in Florida why the U.S. government had to put this level three warning out. They, they failed to remind the country, the country had been on the level three for runaway crime and poor security. And that it was an addition of the healthcare issues that caused another level three to be issued against the, the, the country. And this was championed by our gracious ambassador in Washington. Poverty. So there's been a reduction in national poverty levels, moving from 12.6% in 2018 to 11% in 2019. However, children and youth remain the most vulnerable with the higher levels of poverty than the national figure. Now, if we're going to, if we live and work to have children, to have a home, to have our children be educated, have them healthy, and have them free from criminal activity or be victims of crime, I don't think poverty is helping much. Because a lot of our kids have to turn to gangs to be that father figure replacement that they so long yearn for. A lot of single parents. We have a DNA bank where people can be tested rather than waiting till it's time to go overseas to the United States only to find out that the picnic is not for you. That's very hard pill to swallow when you're trying to keep your family together. And Jamaica, by the way, has the second highest rate of what we call jackets in the world. Now you digest that for a little bit. A lot of slackness going on, people. Now, we got a pastor in our group, thank God, Reverend Beckford, who probably could speak to that much better than I can. But one of the problems with Jamaica's research is that the people who are most likely to molest our young people have been found to be pastors and policemen. Not a good argument to make for pastors and policemen. But this is a problem that Jamaica's reputation is riding on. It's not riding on us in the diaspora. We've been trying to correct things. Now you've got six or more people in the last eight years whose visas have been canceled. We have called for repeatedly an investigation by the local government. You have these wonderful organizations like MOCA, CTOC, NIB that can actually do investigations because you have highly qualified individuals. The U.S. finds criminality amongst our politicians and decides that their visas must go, then those politicians must be investigated and either we rebut the U.S. argument or we prosecute those politicians. There's no gray area. I'm sure if they're looking for a defense attorney, one of the most able defense attorneys is on our panel, Mr. Isaac Buchanan. They're welcome to call him up. 
maybe we should put his name on the ticker going across the back, bottom of the, the, the screen, rather. But the bottom line here, folks, we have corrupt people in our midst. And we have currently going at least two of three completed investigations. There are some follow-up questions to them after I went through them. And I'm waiting for the follow-up uh, uh, answers to be given. But you have got people with between 10 to 18 different cell phones or tablets that they be, they're using to communicate. What does that tell us? Right? You've got people out there that have monies overseas until the St. Lucian government say enough is enough and they have to run, take the money out of St. Lucia and bring it back to Jamaica. What's the source of that funding? There's a lot of questions out there, folks. And we hope to get you some answers. So stand by. All right. One report is 61 pages. The other one is 49. It's not easy going Wow. Lots of, uh, uh, of information. And then we're waiting for the big one to come in. And that one is going to be most interesting. Because somebody did a lot of cleaning up of vital information on the internet, deleting records. And I don't know why. But if you're if you're wiping clean your digital information, you're covering your tracks. But thank God, our guys are very good. We're going to undercover some of those tracks. So at this point, all I can say is stand by. Thank all you, right. Mr. Radigan. All right, thank you. Thank you, Herb. Quite interesting. You hear that, people? We have two reports already. There's a third coming, and they're all on Jamaican government officials. Stay <laughs> tuned. The plot thickens. Patrick. Hey. Amen. Yes. Thanks for being good evening, here. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. After, uh, from New thanks. Jersey. Yeah, um, after, thank you. Well, I have to thank Christopher also for being patient because Christopher signed on a while back and yeah. you know, but I can't take liberties with Christopher because you know it goes Christopher. But <laughs> <laughs> let me take liberties with you the next time we see you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, listen to me. First of all, I mean when, when we had a conversation this week, um Rati, I was I I hung up man and I was you know at it at it start communion early. <laughs> because it it was such a good news because um as many people don't know i was a second um advisor board member um elected and when i went on i was turned off um by the the operation because I went there expecting an agenda from the diaspora, but the minister came with their, their, their agenda, their control, everything, just running through everything. I'm not used to that because I've been on board serving in Falmouth, in Kingston, from Amalika Youth at school. So I understand what it is because school learn about fiduciary responsibility, you know, business laws, all that stuff. So. I got turned off by the thing. But fast forward to 2016, when they decided they want to restructure the thing. And I, I think I shared it with you um, and Herb, that my proposal was what the now the real global Jamaica Diaspora Council is now, I suspect, going to be operating because I thought it should be diaspora-centered. 
Um, so here's what happened at the conference. I was the one who co we I coined it as a talk fest. They had all these panelists who were um, chairman was um, like the Jamaican national um, president and Victoria Mutual, all contributors. Now, the diaspora members, the board members, we didn't know if they collected one cent or a thousand US dollars. I was told, um, and I had the letter, I think I probably sent you a letter what the diaspora counselor um, in Mofat sent me when I started the inquiry. How much you, you're having a conference in our name, and yet I'm a guinea pig because I don't know if you collected $10, 20 cents, and why are we paying all these monies to come when we see some people in them suit and everything? You know, just forward is just what I what nauseated me was that everyone it was just a picture thing, photo op thing, where everybody want to take photo with prime minister, minister of that and that and that. I tell them send me too ugly to take photographs. So I, I don't I don't I don't no 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 time to take photograph because it's it, what we wanted to do is just discuss. And I was informed because when I was I was a, we were the first group of people ever to go to the State Department with Hillary Clinton as um, Secretary of State to talk about the, the Global Diaspora Conference hosted by the State Department. That was a great educational thing for me. First thing they do, they laugh at, wow, Jamaicans are present now. We thought you guys were only party people because that's what everybody wanted to do, dress up in a suit and go there. And here's what I learned. Somebody said something earlier. Why are we so concerned with staying a religion, staying a diaspora? Here's what I learned. We had conversation. I had conversation with, with the Irish diaspora operating in the USA, Argentina, Korea, India, Nigeria, and Israel. Why well, said Israel last? Because we hear all the while we hear our own people in the diaspora says, oh yeah, you guys, we, why we must act like the Israeli. But no, we wanted to act like the Israeli with our, our own autonomy in the diaspora, what we needed. So that forked tongue, you know, went, um, thing. Just to educate people, what I learned from Ireland, remember we had the, 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 the Catholics and the Protestant with the war and all of that. That was solved by the Irish diaspora. They decided to take the kids in to the United States, get visa for them and who need visa, and let a, a Protestant and a, um, and a Catholic stay at one person's house. So they now realize that they're the same people and all that. Time. That literally get rid of it. Argentina, for example, a lot of people don't know, Argentina had a literacy problem. And it was the Argentina diaspora who worked on that to, 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 to solve it. Korea, we, we see all our electronic things and we see made in Korea and everything. That came out of the Korean diaspora. They says, okay, we have all these electronic uh, um, skills and we're doing everything um, in Silicon Valley. We are going to go back home and, and, and build out that thing. So that's the power. I'm just using those examples. That's the power of having a diaspora managed by us who don't have any allegiance to any political um, party and expect it to be elected or vote and get mansions and all that stuff. We're doing it out of our own patriotism. And so for people to be saying that, for me, it's just off the mark. And um, you know, so so one of the things <laughs> that um that 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 as as my brother Rupert was 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 talking, um when we, we when we look at the, the, the corruption, there's a there's a vexing point that they cannot solve. Because I put my nose in it, even though I'm not on it. In 2020, we had this big uh, readathon in COVID. Over 300,000 US dollars was collected out of our sweat and blood. 
to buy PPE equipment for Jamaica. If we get a P equipment, boy, I, I would I would dance. I'll go Times Square and, and dance. If, if we get one P, I'm not in top of the P and the E, just one P out of that money because we don't know where that money is gone. Nobody on the global diaspora, I, I talked to Michelle when she was elected and it said, you need it. Oh yeah, I'll get back to you. That's over seven months now. So they have no interest. It's it's a um, photo up opportunity for for the for these folks. So let's move on. I am on board. A lot of folks have been following up and you know sending all the things. Let's move on and get this um, diaspora conference. I know this thing, <laughs> this one is not going to work because earth shat shattering for them to know that they can't do anything. And you know, the, the conference, um, um, the launch that they had, one young man is report, there's a talk about the the logo that we're using it illegally and, and all that stuff and everything, which I know from a fact that nothing is illegal because they can't, they didn't want to do anything. Where, as you said, by law, we cannot have a foreign minister um, serving on any board um, in the United States. That that that's what I know, you know. And and her by and the, the the thing with the ministers and all that. So I was gonna say, I was at, we were at the State Department in, in that thing, and we were sitting with one of the State Department officer. And there's a particular issue that Jamaica is like messed up about, in my opinion is that um, they were talking about our stance on um, gay rights. And this particular person, learned friend of mine from Jamaica, was at, in a panel, um, the group with us, because we're meeting with the, the, um, the officer. She was um, in charge of Jamaica at the State Department. And um, she got up. You know, I don't want you guys to put on throw this thing down on us because we don't believe in it or, or we are Christian value. And the lady does that, <laughs> I won't call her name because, but I never forget that name. And she just calmly look and she says, Now you guys are talking about um your own Christian faith and how Christian nation you are. And you know, 38% of your of your family members that go up um, on a filing since we started doing DNA, 38% are the wrong fathers. So square that with me. You know, <laughs> that lady literally went under the desk because she was ashamed. So, you know, we can help in so many ways. It does not necessarily have to be financial contribution, but there's a lot of things that we are involved in that we could transfer that experience. And you know, just finally, one of the things that I think that we need to, and it's vexing for me, because a lot of us have um, experience with a state, local governance, and see how they operate here. Some might be good, some we might have a little things over them, but the constitutional reform, I hear nothing about it over the past six, seven months. They started on a bang until my my good friend, um, the Minister of Constitution, you know, like I, I I noted and I said it, you know, I she and I have, you know, back and forth when she was serving as a chairperson for the Diaspora Advisor Board. Um, because I mean I respect women because I look, most of the women in my lives are older than I, you know, my sisters and everything. And so I'm always used to being bossed by women. But that one is one I, I, I mean, not the brightest or the sharpest knife in the drawer. I mean, in ISIS profession. But we need a big stake in the constitutional reform and tourism. I, I think we should say finally, I'm changing the name of the Jamaica Tourist Board to the Jamaica Apartheid System Board because our tourism with all 
Minister Bartlett is talking about and all the money we're making, we're selling our birthright for nothing more than people get free trip all over and go and, you know, fly all over the world and say they're doing it tourism, which is destroying our environment. I don't know how many of you talk to people in Jamaica, but since January, everybody say the temperature is like an average of maybe 90 degrees. And it's usually in this first three months of the year, it's always cooler. But they're building a big vault for all of us who live there with all those things blocking out the trade winds. All right. So I'm on board, guys. Whatever you need to do, I can sweep floor very good. All right. Thank you so much, Patrick. We have a lot to do. Somebody asked, where, where, where will our office be? And what I say to people, like people who say, have you thought this thing through to the very end? And I say to them, listen, we're not work waiting for the perfect moment to do what we need to do. We're moving ahead. Um, if we sit and we wait for the perfect moment, we'll probably not get anything accomplished. So um, the train has left the station. Um, things like offices and, you know, those are minor, minor things to address. Uh, right, the have to address is to take over our organization and make sure we get good people inside here who will support our efforts, our in initiatives, our, our concerns uh, with the Jamaican government because we want to work with the Jamaican government because we, uh, you know, we want to partner with them, but we cannot have them dictate to us and come in our organizations and lead it. And when you have the minister saying, we plan this with you, and, no, 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 no. You don't plan any organization for the diaspora. You don't know that. The diaspora will plan its own organization. Could you imagine if we had said, hey, we want to plan, we want to take over something that you're doing and we want to run it and we want to invite you to it and we want you to pay and come and, and attend foolishness folks um we have tigo online but we also have a gentleman here with whom i'm i'm connected his father and i and lion were classmates at meadowbrook high school and then his father and i were classmates at john jay college of criminal justice the best criminal justice college in america and he met a young lady. I think she had to, yeah, she was attended Hunter. And the rest is history. And here is Christopher. And I'm proud to say I'm his godfather. And um, I'm looking forward to what he has to say as the junior minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Junior, sorry, junior opposition spokesperson. See me, I give you position already, son. <laughs> All right, Christopher, welcome, welcome again to the panel. Um, the floor is yours, sir. Tell us Thank you. Tell again, us your question. Uh, let me start out by saying that um, I understand that those lyrics that were used to court the lady from Hunter were of your creation. Many <laughs> occasions. <laughs> and is is and I've also been told that you were the one that uh when there were many even before the young lady at Hunter when there were many a mission on a, a certain missions you were the man that carried out the missions because certain people did shy and go and like them could I, I stand accused of that sir. yes that. so <laughs> And I, and um, I plead guilty. I stand okay. the future. I plead guilty. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I've been very interestingly listening to what has been said here this evening. And let me also point out that I'm now more than a junior. I'm now the deputy spokesperson on foreign affairs and foreign trade. Um, and um, we are, I let me apologize profusely for my senior who had travel plans before and she was very unsure as to what the position would have been in the traveling because she's currently in atlanta with her son um yes yeah, so we've i've heard what has been said regarding the diaspora council and let me 
try to insert some history into the situation. Before he passed, Delano Franklin and I had a conversation, deep conversation. And he said, Christopher, you can't be the junior or even the deputy because diaspora is going to fall under you and not read a book that I compiled, which is, and I'm looking at it now in my study, um, creating an operational framework of the diaspora. In that book, he catalogs the first diaspora conference that Jamaica held. And if you look through the conference, he took a back seat. While the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade was the convener, he took a back seat and he only acted as chairman and he allowed the members of the diaspora to vote on their representatives, to bring forward their motions, and to put forward their initiatives. He just acted as chairman. He just facilitated, which is the better word. And that is the vision of the Global Diaspora Council. Global Diaspora Council. No, Andrea, not at her post. It's just a background. <laughs> um, that was a vision that the People's National Party and indeed of blessed memory, Delano Franklin, had of the Global Diaspora Council. It's supposed to be autonomous. It's supposed to be self-governing. All we as members of the government are to do is to sit down and facilitate discussion, facilitate dialogue, and if you need some doors opening to certain diplomatic situations, we will assist. But that is what it was designed to do. What we have today is a completely different council than was what was envisioned. It has become a pawn of the government and of Kamina Johnson-Smith. And unfortunately, he's my friend. I'm a walk with him parents every morning, Alanda Terrella. I also have a bone to pick with Alando because Alando goes and one of the first speeches he does is to beg the diaspora money. Like there are some ATM. And you guys are not an ATM. You're much more than money. Additionally, they have put, I, I think a release came out from us when the Diaspora Council, or you you would say the, the, the Parallel Council, <laughs> uh, had their elections from us of the low voter turnout. And what we understood was that certain people didn't quote unquote qualify to vote. I'm wondering, and they haven't explained to us in full what exactly is the criteria to become voting members of the diaspora. They haven't laid out clearly what it is. And in, in fact, why is it the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that is dictating the voting criteria for the, the, the diaspora elections? Uh, and so these members that have been elected, they've, it's like all 100 votes, 50 votes, that, that, that is simply unacceptable. They don't really and truly represent the voice of the persons in the diaspora, either UK, USA, and those far beyond to the far corners of this world. What really even more peeves me is the release of this complete blindside and like telling everybody in the diaspora to ignore the quote-unquote parallel conference instead of picking up the phone because I know that they are familiar with all of your Dr. Francis, Godfather, everybody who is, who is on this call basically. Picking up the phone or arranging a Zoom, sending an email, anything to say, look here, let us have some dialogue. Let us see how we can work together so we can represent fully the needs and wants as well as the initiatives of the diaspora. She decides to put out an entire release bashing the initiative and not recognizing that in bashing the initiative, she has actually stirred the diaspora more against them and has now put what their organization that they are controlling in a minority position and and um, less 
credibility with members of the diaspora. So I would want to say to the government, and, and I'm happy that the, the, the olive branch has been extended, uh, to, to, to sit down and to have dialogue with the, um, the, the now registered and duly registered Global Diaspora Council so there can be some meeting of the minds because this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. But I can't expect any better from a woman who said it was a technical cross that prevented the representative at the UN from voting against certain certain votes in the UN against Israel. I can't take the uh, take anything serious from a woman who dressed up in Guyanian Ga um, finery in an effort to be elected as Commonwealth Secretary when everybody in diplomatic circles told her she was not going to win. I can't expect differently from a woman who accused a seasoned no King's Council at the time, Queen's Council of harassment. I can't take her seriously. She is literally a lucky and an empty head. And unfortunately, my friend Orlando is seemingly, I don't know if he's uncomfortable or I don't know if he's just playing pee pee cluck cluck, but he's in a very awkward position because a lot of the positions that are now being taken by the government, I know as a fact that he is uncomfortable with. So that is just my two cents. I'm wishing the quote-unquote parallel <laughs> conference all the success. I am hoping that the government will see the error of its ways and just come to you in peace and see if we cannot meet the minds. I have a meeting of the minds. Have a meeting of the minds and to move forward move forward in, in 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 facilitating the diaspora as best as we can all right christopher thank you so much i said where your club for you never hear me talk yet no i just like when senior councils you know just watch, watch just out your future <laughs> <laughs> i learned from my senior council Flip him I've, always, carry on. I've always wanted to use the words like lucky and airhead and dummy and stuff and then <laughs> early said, day, I Mr. Said, Rattigan, I said, listen to your comments. Mr. Rattigan showed me a, a video from Parliament where the man says, but you, if you're a fool, what I must call you? What a <laughs> my whole day, my whole existence is thank you, thank you. I've 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 uh, well, I've, I've, I've gotten strength not... from from Julian who told Ed, Everal Warmington, the other day to go outside the Prime Minister. Oh. Go outside, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> go outside the Prime Minister <laughs> fire you. Go outside the Prime Minister <laughs> fire you. Uh, well, look, um, what we're going to do now, we're just going to have some quick comments and kind of like go around the room and just have a free for all. Um, folks, uh, don't leave. You can't leave because coming up next, we have a segment that we call Unmasking the Prime Minister. And uh, Mystic Sensation will do that presentation. I was hoping to get to the Integrity Commission Act of 2017 to do a, um, do a little series on it because we can't finish the whole thing in one, in, in one broadcast, but at least start. But it's fine because it's not going anywhere. It's, it's, and it, it will always be relevant. So um, let's start where we started. With Dr. Francis. Um, Dr. Francis, um, have you seen uh, have you uh, have you seen the press release put out by uh, the yes you have uh, yes I have I have I have seen it and it is very worrying um to be quite honest but before I say anything I'm gonna ask everyone who is watching this to I want I would like you in fact to put out something where they can sign or add put their signature or something to say we are with you and when we send in our stuff um to whoever in in the future we have they know that there are people in the diaspora from all angles from all of these talk shows and representatives here that says i am with you 
and indicate because they think that we are alone. They think that we are the Lone Rangers. And I think that is very important. I want to thank all of you out there. I know you're listening. I know you're taking it in. But I want to say, I want to repeat that um, that that whoever sent it out is, a, is, is, is an idiot. Whoever sent out that, uh, I, I'm, I'm not taking it back. Go sue me if you want to. Because I'm saying anybody who put out that press release, they have been, it's so <laughs> inaccurate. You're going to tell me that you, your people out there, we have some of the strongest people, some of the best investigators. We, we, we have evidence of what we did in Jamaica for how many years and did it and continue to do it. We still have people down there working. And you're going to tell me you sit down there like a whatever dummy and come talk about um, I have grievances. What grievances do I have? Have I asked anybody for a salary? In fact, I warn them that they're going to lose the diaspora and I can call names. I warn them from I saw what happened to Mrs. Holness when she was booed and they tried to say it's not that. No, it's foolishness. I am telling you, you have to be able, it will Patrick will tell me about discernment from a spiritual lion to from a spiritual perspective. I don't know if the rest want to go to church, but that's all right. The fact of the matter is that you have to be able to have that ability inside you to see when <clears> something's <throat> going to happen. This was most going to happen. And the fact of the matter is when you underestimate people, do not underestimate people. There but for the grace of God goes out. And when, when you speak, you must speak the truth because you have never heard me. None of you can say, I have made this personal. I have called anybody any names. I've not made it personal, right? But I could. Right? But I said, you know, from I was growing up and what have you, I don't like the nature of politics and the nature of this and the nature of that. You can tell me, I have, I have, I don't throw anything, you know. I have texts from these people. I have emails from these people. I have them congratulating me at the same level as Patrick and Zatelli serving them. And now you turn around and come talk about where are the people on that program? You know it's a live program and I don't mess with them. Okay, unless you go talk some foolishness and then I drop in and say anything. They're all independent, the people who are serving right now on the three diaspora um, um, platforms. And you're trying to demean me? Come on. That, it's not about me, by the way. It's not just I'm talking about the people too. I hope they're listening. Those people that listen, read it, go back if you haven't read it, and it is about you. Because if your name is on it or your name was on it, it means that they don't respect you. They have no respect. And that's the that's the that's the big thing here. And so as far as I am concerned, um, I've listened to everyone. I want to thank, thank Christopher. You're very articulate and you did need a clap. Um, and um, you know, yes, you could learn something. I said, sorry, sorry, sorry. I want to mess with I said. Is him need him Kentucky to you know whatever. But the point I'm making is this: I want to thank Curb, I want to talk, thank Jeffrey, I want to thank Lion and um, anyone on there, and especially uh, Will for being there and continuing, you know, to be you know, to make them feel uncomfortable, and they should feel uncomfortable because when you look at it this way and you're trying to make excuses for everything, yes, you build big roads, yes, you build nice roads, but the people are starving. There's no water. Can you imagine in, West, in Western Jamaica? I don't know. How many years you are surrounded, the island is surrounded by water. And yet Cuba can change the water into, not wine, but into better water, See what? and you can't do it. Yeah? You're going to tell me that we are paying so much for um, electricity and we have sunshine 24-7. In fact, it's so hot. Use up the heat to make electricity and make it, for, but they won't do that because they may be not getting anything out of it. Right? So I am not holding my tongue anymore. Right? I am not afraid. I am telling you that you know I am, I am, I've been with you. I'm working with, and I still have friends down there. You can't stop it. Okay? But the fact of the matter is be honest with yourself. To thine own self be true. And some of you don't remember that. You understand me? And what you do remember, whatever you do to someone else, it is going to come right back to you. So sometimes, you know, when you see old people and them, 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 they go through this and some people go through that. It is not because it, 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 I feel sorry. Don't feel sorry. It is what they have done before that is coming back to haunt them. I don't wish no ill on anybody. But I know that there is a God in this world. And I know that Jamaicans need to go back there and need to remember that we have a God and our, the whole base of our society. Right? 
and I'm not begging nobody anything. Oh, and you can ask the people who I left in any constituency that I represented, that I work with them and I help them and they still remember me. Still remember me despite of everything else. So please, stop your foolishness. I have never attacked anybody personally. Leave me a name. Don't attack. You can go ahead because you cannot you cannot do prove anything in terms or make anything appear to be true. Not with that type of language that you have been using. And I know exactly who write it. I know who write it. I know who influence it. You better believe I do. Okay? So please, ladies and gentlemen, it's called discernment. I never ask God. I'm my, 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 I'll stop on this. I never ask God for money, you know. And I never was, I'm not a rich, but I ask him for wisdom and understanding. And I wish all of you could get some wisdom and understanding. What you're doing is wrong. You need to stop reigning over the diaspora. You need, whenever you get anything for the diaspora, you spend it on the people. There's no reason why we don't have wonderful hospitals. There's no reason why we don't have um, good roads. I mean, for poor people. There's no reason why we are importing more than we are exporting in terms of agriculture. There's no reason why all these hotels are um, getting so much um, stuff and so on, and they're diminishing what we have in Jamaica. And, and I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm the Jamaican people are not. So, so ladies and gentlemen, please, keep, I'm going to keep on my mouth at this point. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, and But that's my view. Go out there, sign anything you can for the um, call to action. Come out to the um, New York situation and show them that we are not alone. Show them that we had 4,000 people watching on the, the first one when the dirty 30 arrived. Thank you very much for the opportunity. All right. Thanks. We have Tigo. We want to hear from Tigo. But before we hear from Tigo, and we want to hear from Lion Tucker, Lion been sitting there patiently and I know I'm ready for roar. But before we get to that, you mentioned water. And we've talk, talked about water throughout the program. Let me show you something about water. Look at this. You guys probably can't, can't really. Well, let me see something. Yeah, we can see it. You can see it. You can read it. It says, this is, says water, right? It says, we will invest in increased water produ production by building new water treatment plants. Listen to the language. By building new water treatment plants, deep water drilling in the hills and bringing water from the north coast where it is abundant to the south coast where the larger part of our population resides. That's one bullet point. Let's, before we even do that, let's go back to the beginning. It says, quite simply, water is life. Too many homes and farms are deprived of this precious commodity. We have made, we have made significant improvements in Jamaica's storage and distribution systems before, and we will do it again. And so the bullet points. I just read the first one to you. The second one, reduce non-revenue water by 30%, fixing all leaking pipes, which will generate more water to be purchased which will in turn increase revenues. Increase the percentage of rural homes with access to potable water from 60% 85%. In urban areas, we're going to increase the supply of water to 95% of the homes. We're going to incentivize use of water-conserving technology in daily life, such as shower heads, faucets. Encourage rainwater harvesting in rural drought-prone areas. Opti optimize that. Uh, mute your mic, please. Optimize the National Irrigation Commission to expand irrigation lands and expand the use of drip irrigation to conserve water. And list, list the Nas National Water Commission on the Jamaica Stock Exchange, making 49% available for public purchase. Rehabilitate, listen to this one, rehabilitate the sewage collection system below crossroads. Now just the other day, we, we say videos that come from KPH and places downtown, a coronation market where raw sewage have come up. Rehabilitate the sewage collection system below crossroads and expand sewer collection in the suburban areas. Introduce sewage collection systems in high population areas like Spanish Town, Sablamar, um, important for sustainable development, growth expansion, and healthy living. And the last bullet point, reforest our watersheds with tree planting programs. Now, folks, what I just read to you, what I just read to you was not something that was composed last week, last month, last year. 
last five years. This, what I just read to you, came from the 2016 JLP manifesto. They promised that these are the things that they would do so that we don't have a water prop, a drought problem. Right? That's 2016. Now, let me get into this one here. Bear with me. All right. So remember, that's 2016. They promised, no, we're going to solve all the water problems. We are going to, we are going to build the wells and this and that and that. No. Here's one. I, I, you probably won't be able to see this. But I can read it for you. And I'll just read you the headline. They're going to revise the National Drought Management Plan. To mitigate against the impact of drought conditions, they're going to have more rainwater harvesting capacity with schools involved. They're going to continue the rehabilitation and maintenance of community catchment tanks. They're going to expand focus on rural water. They're going to continue improvement of potable water supply for Kingston and St. Andrew. They're going to have innovative projects to expand water access. Here's, here's, here's one. Development of desalination plants. For those of you who don't know, that's when they take brackish water, seawater, salt water, and they convert it into a water for human consumption. And it says development of desalination plants for drinking water supply in coastal cities to expand the options for water access in Jamaica. More specifically, this will begin with the upgrading and expansion of the ferry desalination project, project which will seek to harness up to 10 MGD from the Brackish Ferry Springs at Moses Lake. How many people ever heard about a desalination plant in Jamaica? Then they're going to have diversified financing arrangements for new water scheme, sewage and wastewater treatment service, blah, 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 blah. People, I hope you understand what I'm saying to you. In 2016, we were promised that the water problem would be solved. Four years later, we were told the water problem will be solved first it is going to be solved then in 2020 it will be solved and here we are 2024 and it's still unsolved people don't you see that we're being taken for fools where did the money where, where did where did the money go we're last night we were looking for the diesel uh, herb did a tremendous amount of research trying to find that that desalination plant and the closest he could come to it was they said that they, 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 they did a study and they said that it, it wouldn't be feasible. And that's that. But it's here saying that it's, 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 it's in operation. So the water problem, folks, look no further than the 2016 manifesto and the 2020 manifesto. And as a matter of fact, folks, if you want to know promises made, promises kept, promises unfulfilled, take the two documents, the 2016 manifesto and the 2020 manifesto. Look at what happened in between both manifestos and look at where we are now. And you will get a very good sense of how unproductive, how inefficient our government is. Just do that for me and do that for yourselves and do that for your children and your grandchildren and your community, community and Jamaica. Just take the two manifestos and just look at what happened from 2016 to 2020 and where we are now. And then you will be able to make an informed decision about what's going on. Mr. Tavares, I see your finger raised. Sir. Yes, sir. As, as, as one politician would say, a lie them lie. A lie them lie. A lie, them lie. Nothing more. No, the entire Negro have no water. Let turn off. The, there's so many tanks in Negro that has water, Mr. Rattigan, that I am aware of. And it's full. One in Mount Terry, full with how much thousand gallons of water. And yet Negro has no water. All right. Because what we're going to be doing, folks, and I remember I've been telling you that we're going to be looking at throne speeches. We're going to be looking at election speeches. We're going to be looking at manifestos. We're going to be combing through um traditional social media and then we're going to put 
things together like this, this water thing here. We're going to, every week, we're going to come with something and we're going to show you. And where the government fulfilled its promise, we are going to highlight it and commend them for doing it. Because this is not about party, this is about people. And if they did something that's in the interest and, 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 and benefited the people of Jamaica, we have to recognize it. But on the other hand, if they made promises and they didn't fulfill them, then it's our duty. It is... We are commanded to expose it. Now, I'd like to turn the mic over to somebody. Well, everybody's been patient, but this is a gentleman who roars when he speaks. And his words have the force and the might of lightning and thunder, not to mention the roar of a lion. Lion, you're up, sir. Speak to us. Yes, and uh, every time I come on, I have to be a little bit apologetic about the possibility of disturbances in the background vis-a-vis -vis noise, etc. Nevertheless, uh, this particular moment must be seized in its entirety. I mean, sometimes people have been in slavery for so long. The moment when they are free they don't even realize it. It's like an elephant who has been tethered to a little peg in the ground with a little string. And even when that elephant becomes an adult animal, that same string is used to hold him to the same peg. And as strong and as much as the brute force that he could muster as an elephant, being an adult, he does not pull up that peg because he has been acclimatized over years. Now I say to the Jamaican people, there is a climate that you are breathing now that you have never bred or breathed before. We have a voice now. The 72%, and I'm being conservative, that did not want to vote, that sees the system, the political system that is, as a total farce in Jamaica that is, is indicative of the fact that the same disenfranchised, disenchanted, exists in the diaspora. What am I saying? The emperor wears no clothes. The government of Jamaica that now presides, and also includes the opposition, does not have the power that it pretends to so wield. The very fact that we could have, by the grace of the Almighty God, taken back the diaspora's platform so that Jamaica's interests can be truly served proves that the emperor meaning the government wears no clothes, meaning it does not have the authority that it seems to be displaying. A lot of persons are saying, you have to either vote for the GLP or the PMP. That is ludicrous. You are trying to tell me that the Jamaican people don't have a choice outside of these two barboons, that's a collection of barboons. It's called Parliament. And it is fitting to what the Jamaican people faces. Now, to export this barboonery, if there's such a word, allow me the privilege to coin my own word. If this can be allowed in the diaspora, then Jamaica would have dead. But as I say, thank God. That Jamaica now has a voice. 
if we can stop them in the diaspora, we will stop them in Jamaica. Let that sink in. People, you now have a voice. And it's coming, and it's echoing from far. It's coming from the diaspora. We are speaking from without to the within and said, be free. My people, you are now free because you have a voice. Now it's time for action. And I welcome the enthusiasm and the ground swelling support that is coming even right now as we speak. And that olive branch to either those of the JLP or the PMP or those who have been coerced, seduced, or tricked into becoming a member of an organization claiming to represent the diaspora, we say to you that we have open arms, a table wide enough whereby you can be received and you can be seated and participate in the total liberation of the Jamaican people and the Jamaican community abroad. We welcome your presence. We welcome your effort. All we are saying that you must skip ship and leave the damn cults alone. Start to think. For yourselves start to think about the generation that you have fostered as children and grandchildren and know that you have an obligation to them that is even greater than a fiduciary responsibility to make certain that this moment does not pass you by and that you will join in a concerted voice with those of us on the platform and those of us who are not here this present evening and speak to the government as equal partners declaring that this stupid and wicked affair is now divorced from the Jamaican people and we will set and chart our own course as the destiny that God prescribed will allow us. Mm -hmm. It has been a good evening. Mm -hmm. I want Jamaica to realize what has happened today. It is historical. The announcement, it didn't happen exactly today, but it was announced today by us on this platform. The train has left the station. Jeez. Now get on board. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Let me just put this up so people can see what is it exactly that we're talking about. This right here. Um, we were told today, um, those of you who haven't seen this flyer, take a good look at it. it says Jamaica Diaspora Crime Intervention and Prevention Task Force in association with the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. Now, the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council is the organization uh, controlled, directed, managed, inspired. Um, by the government of Jamaica. That organization has never been registered until this week. And it was registered by the people in the diaspora, not the government of Jamaica. They don't own that. And so a cease and desist order will go out um, sometime soon. We have, to, we have a, a working group and we're going to get together <coughs> And uh, at some point in time, we're going to send out that, that, that cease and desist order. And I'm saying it loud and clear. All the representatives who claim to be representing the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, you now work for us. If you don't want to come on board, feel free to abandon the title. Because this is the people's movement. And so... Jamaicans and friends of Jamaica, let's raise our voices in protest against corruption, crime, poverty, failed health care, poor education, etc. in Jamaica. Join us 
for this historic event on Friday, May 10th, 2024, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in front of the Jamaican consulate located at 300 East 42nd Street. That's in New York City. Um, let me put something up here. There it is, 300 East 42nd Street. That's the building. Um, there is something else. One second. There it is. It's right here. It's located right here. And for those of you joining us for the first time, or joining us for the first time in a long time, the New York Police Department, New York City Police Department, they expect a huge crowd. And they said, we don't want you on the sidewalk. It's too narrow. So they're going to close this lane of traffic one block long for us to occupy it. They're going to build a pen, the barriers. We're going to be here. And they say they're going to be doing your routine checks. And if we have too many people in this lane of traffic, they're going to close this lane of traffic and open it so that we'll have two lanes of traffic. That's a lot of people. We have to fill those pens. So people come out in your numbers, come out and support the movement, come out and support, and I say movement, not, not in the way that, that the, 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 the uh, bogus organization described themselves. When we say movement, we're talking about the effort to do what? For this, against corruption, crime, poverty, failed healthcare, poor education, etc. They're not doing it. We plan to do. Oh, by the way, when you see the picture, yeah? this. If you get a chance, take a closer look at it. That's part of the healthcare protocol in Jamaica. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Well, folks, we have our guests here, and they've been waiting, as everybody has, for quite some time, patiently. Mystic sensation. And they're, they're on the, um, let me remove this. There they are with us. But before we have Mystic do their presentation, I just want to go around the room. Mystic, I don't know if, wanna, if uh, I'm Maria and Byron, I don't know if you hear the news. But um, you hear the news? Yes, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. We, have, we now own that organization. And let's see if they're going to use it to get the cease and desist other because we have, we have some uh, we have some people ready to go to court, and it's going to be interesting to sue the Jamaican government and to sue these bogus representatives if they don't come on board. We offer them, we offer them the um, the the the, the uh, a chance to be grandfathered into this organization. If they don't want to do it, then we know. If they don't want to, if they true, if they say, look, we represent the people, and and then they say, no, we're not going to join the organization, then we know that they're with the government. And like we used to say, if you're not with us, you're with them. And we're exactly. Fine. So let me just go around the room here, Mystic Sensation, because uh, I know you have a presentation and we dubbed it, we entitled it The Unmasking of the Prime Minister. And that's exactly what I know you guys are going to do. So Patrick, mm -hmm. I don't want anybody on the panel to leave us. Tigo, we haven't heard from you and we're going to come to you um, shortly. But Patrick, give us some quick, quick words regarding everything that you've heard about the, the, the news. And then we'll just move on, move on around the room so quickly so that we can get to Mystic Sensei. I, I, I'm sending my, my blast out. So oh. <laughs> the, the reaction is yay. <laughs> so so it's, it, tomorrow is my busy day and I can't celebrate with nobody. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Don't leave us around for Mystic Sensation. Herb. No, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Okay. Herbalis. Yeah, greetings to, to uh, Mystic and uh, his um, wonderful partner um, that keeps him going. Right. And to the panel, and again to the listeners, um, I would say to you that Michael, I call you back. Uh, Nita calling. I would say to you at that time like this, um, 
you know, it's important that we all project the same vigor and value in having a system that we can truly say is our own at this time. We don't have to dance to the tune of a different drummer. We don't have to read that what happens with the diaspora, um, uh, you know, organization is secret. And that if there are any disagreements, you can be dismissed from the organization. These are some of the things, folks, you need to be aware of. Nobody's going to throw you out if you disagree. Unless you get downright hostile. But even then, we, we try to understand people and where they're coming from. We need to be able to speak to each other. We need to be able to encourage each other. And something that I see happening, even though we have promoted it, and I spoke to it earlier, is that our youth, they are the people that are suffering. And education-wise, I covered that. I forgot to mention in the healthcare that we're losing the highest amount of nurses out of the Caribbean as well. Now, we have a lot of training school for teachers. I only believe we have maybe two major training centers for nurses. So we have to do something about retaining our valued citizens, nurses and doctors. Because our health care is in a shambles as well. And it's all due to poor leadership. Poor leadership all around. People who are charged in these institutions are doing very little to stem the tide. They're not listening. They want people to live on peanuts. The rent, as one guy in New York said he wasn't running for office, the rent is too damn high. The cost of food and therefore food security for families is too high. So your medical costs are up, your food costs are up, and your mm -hmm. rent is up. So we need to find a way to help each other. And we need to find agencies that can look at these shortages and deal with supplemental programs that keep <laughs> families whole. No ifs, ands, or buts. So that's my uh, conclusive piece. So thank you. Um, all right. Um, Christopher. Uh, well, I just want to, uh, well, I have another function at 7.30 or 7.30 over time. So mm -hmm. if you see me disappear, then, yes, yes. I just want uh, to say welcome to Mystic Sensation. Thank you. Um, thank you. I just, and then I just want to add the words of encouragement again to the Global Diaspora Council. I want to encourage you to keep the work doing. I've heard what <laughs> Lan has said, but I am very tribal. <laughs> so I know my side. I know you lick the two sides, but my side is not as half as evil. We have a ways. There's no two ways about it, but it's not as half as evil as the current government or how they're masquerading to be that they're kind. So I can assure you that when the winds of change do blow, there will be a different song that is being sung from both foreign affairs and with the diaspora. So I just want to continue to encourage all of you to continue your work and continue to advocate from up in the United States and wherever you are. Also, I will encourage certain people to join the march 
if they can, if they're not driving up and down, being a nurse. Um, Godfather. I know what you're talking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will try to encourage her and yeah. her, her, her daughter, her other daughter, who is up there. My, uh, my other sister is actually in D.C. working for the Department of Health. So okay. she's, yeah. So thank you. And thank you all for having me when I do disappear. You know that it was another function that I had to attend to. No problem. Yes. Thanks for stopping by. All right. See you soon. Vigo, you have something you want to say before Mr. Yeah, Tom? man. Yeah, you can hear me? Brother, the floor is yours, man. All right. Yes, man. Policies and politics. I love policies. I don't know much about politics, but the way I look at it, they have a famous quote in the scripture. said, when the hurt is in the hands of the wicked, the people mourn. And when the hurt is in the hands of the righteous, the people rejoice. As far as I'm concerned, Jamaica is in the hands of the wicked right now. All right? And these people selling them a lie. And it's a genocide system that we have crime. We're killing each other. Brother and sister kill each other for no reason. So we killing half each other and then we have the execution of them killing half the, 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 the brothers them on the street. For no, it's a form of genocide. But Jamaica people just need to wake up. And it's not physical wake, it's mental wake. And then get so much famous leader, Marcus Messiah Gabby would tell them, Bob Marley, Peter Touch, what they cannot understand. They have to get in touch with their spiritual self. Jamaica have so many churches and it's still going down in their abyss. We have a big problem. So the biggest problem is the Jamaican people. Them, they are the one who elect these people. So they are the one who's supposed to de-elect them. If you're not a part of the problem, you have to be a part of the solution. The one Jamaica diaspora, right? And the task force, the one Jamaica legal fund, Yes, we can do what we can do, but the Jamaica people them have to look into themselves, do some soul searching, and just ask themselves, this is what we want for ourselves at this moment mm -hmm. and our generation, the future to come. Most of the entertainers them sing about it because they they're visionary. And Jamaica people just get dormant. They put themselves in limbo and them just give up. And that's what these people want. Because the puppet master, that's what they want. They want to clean up the earth. They want to take our people off of the earth. That's what's going on in Haiti. Same thing. You have Jamaica running around. Haitian for deal them one problem. Haitian and us is brother and sister. And the first and second and third generation, the whole are related. Marriage change name. The country too small. You understand? Because even other people come and come live and them crossbreed. But where's the love? Where's the unity? You can't have unity without love. Jamaica people that sit down down there and kill each other. Just say it on the news, five people dead in an overview or something like that. For what? <laughs> so we don't need a colonizer to kill we. Because we already I kill ourselves. I just that you have to do in you know, a wake up spiritually. The church people, them, all the preaching and jumping and going on with all them antics. Jamaica still have gone on their base. So they need to cleanse themselves spiritually to help uplift the country out of the darkness that are going on. And lie and right. Lie and right. Lie and I tell them, you need to wake up. The, the, the diaspora abroad can't do but so much. When I'm in a Jamaica, I get up, stand up and fight for the right. Stop sitting in limbo. The time is now, like Lion said. Don't let the train leave you. And gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be amongst you great people. Because we're setting a new standard. You understand? And I'm here. God bless you all. I'm here. I'm listening. All right, brother. Thank you. Thank you. And don't forget them kill a couple of people in our waterhouse this week at in a bar. I think at two or three. So I will leave my morning for them. And um, we have a new, a new um police commissioner but um, that's another story i sat 
Uh, we just want to close off this segment and Mystic Senti- Sensation await for a while. Um, you have any, uh, just make a quick yeah, comment. Yeah, just, just, just a quick comment. Um, through, through, through the reasoning with, with Ratigan, one thing I can tell you, um, notwithstanding that you guys don't have standing because you are not a part of Jamaica and you're taking it to them, um, from the Mystic Sensation, this just so like a big live sting slash reggae sunfest. <laughs> And then you're on tour, and then you're making more money, and then you're taking the Bob Marley approach to to take it to Jamaica. Um, but but what 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 you all have shown is that um, the spider web effect and the, and the strength in just not being dots in the world, but connecting the dots. Um, I, I I commend you all for that. Um, I and I have a lawyer in America, which everybody knows is 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 a is a very powerful lawyer. Lawyers need lawyers. I don't know why anybody would just try to be in the world and not have a lawyer. The same thing. I want to big up um, Oliver Garden and OWG Law straight out of Canada because I know that the Canadian um, the people in Canada. The diaspora, you're 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 all rich and wealthy, and I I'm working from a barrel them because we know some a barrel like a pack up. Um, but I don't know why Tiga trying to gas us up for 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 Andrew them kick off with face down here. Um, we we here on the ground are afraid of bullets and many other things, so we rely on the diaspora to fight our battles for us. Some of us lose our jobs and get suspended because we chat too much. So we need we need people like Herb who just say, yes, idiot boy. And 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 nobody can do him anything when I say it. You know, and then we we aren't all related to, to great people. So I can't say my uncle and my godfather, so they're not gonna beat me up like some of my, my colleagues in Jamaica who nobody can touch. And they have they live in mansions similar to Herb and um, Dr. Rupert. I'm not calling any names, but you can see on the monitor for yourself. So I just want to say <laughs> say big up again. And um, it's great conversations. I look forward to listening to the Mystic Sensation. I don't know where they come from, but um, last week was high energy, and it gets better every time. And and more and more through 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 these connections. Um, we see the greatness that is out there. We we see we see what we are, and and that's something that I'm thankful for because um, I can tell you last year um, through this show it was a space and a safe haven when they were trying to kill me. So, so, <laughs> so I, I'm here and Chris couldn't save me. <laughs> but anyway, that 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 is all. That is all. Thank you. All right. Well, um, folks, you've waited a while to hear them, and um, they were here last week, and they rip up the place, and they're back, and and I reach out to them, and I mean, it was like um, it was like like family, which which in a sense we are. I mean, them just respond to the call, and I mean, them said, "Well, we're ready, you know, we have some things we want to talk about," and yes, and here they are, you know, mystic sensation. Um, the sensation that is taking us by storm. Um, right. People talk about them all the time, about how thorough and how how, how convincing and decisive they are. Not only and thorough, not only with the research, but the delivery. Because you know, people can research some stuff, but sometimes how you deliver it, it's a different thing. Well, they have mastered the 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 um, research part and also mastered the delivery part. So, without further ado. Um, and gentlemen on the, on the on the panel, I hope you don't go anywhere. I hope you stay and watch this presentation here because this is what we call the unmasking of Prime Minister Holness. Mystic sensation. Flores All right. Um, thank you, um, Ratigan, for that. Really um, appreciate that. First, I want to say all protocol observe um, to the esteemed panel of critical thinkers. Right. Um, what we are, and, and I, I want to say, um, you know, to the chat, right? Um, big respect to you all, right, um, for passing through. We really appreciate that. And let me just give a reminder that we all need to support the One Jamaica Legal Defense Foundation, right? This is a mechanism that we are going to use as it relates to checks and balance. Now, having said that, 
as it relates to um, good governance and as it relates to our political leaders. Now, when it comes to integrity and honesty, we do, right, desire that um, from them. Having said that, we are going to deal with illicit enrichment. And we are going to deal with four bullet points under the illicit enrichment. One, tax evasion. Two, awarding of contracts by breaching the procurement rules. Misappropriation of taxpayers' monies. Four, nepotism and cronyism. Right, so we'll be going through as it relates to the various documents that we'll be um, looking on tonight. Now, ladies and gentlemen, right, um, one of the first um, clip that I want to present to you know um, start um, smoothly in what we are going to present is, of course, what is coming from a view from the IC. So I want all persons to listen keenly to this presentation. And Ratigan, uh, we are going to take over as it relates to... Sure, no problem. Um, no problem. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so... Okay, so I'm going to share, but uh, Ratigan has to share. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. All right, so which one, the first one you want there? Political okay. maestro. All right, hold on. Is it up yet? Oh, no. I'm, I'm getting it. This is, okay. This one. Okay, I see it. I see it. Okay. I All right. right. No? You want me to put it up now? Yes. Yes. Sure. Sure. It has done after COVID at this point when we compare ourselves to other nation states. However, it's critical, crucial in fact, to understand that robust economic growth would be enhanced by two magic words, good governance. The true measure of effective governance lies in the presence of trust, integrity, transparency across all systems. So NIA, the National Integrity Action is of the view that in spite of the economic accolades, nothing can be said much about where we are unless there are and there is and there should be effective governance. So when politicians have no code of conduct, you know I was gonna say that, economic accolades mean nothing. When there's no disclosure about who is awarded contracts, economic accolades is empty. When public bodies fail to provide timely reports as to how they use public funds, economic progress is dead. When the government seeks to weaken rather than strengthen legislation meant to empower or protect people, specifically the imposition of the political ombudsman's office into the electoral commission of Jamaica, or running with alacrity to extend the time of the DPP or confirm a parliamentary clerk whilst at a slug space Ignoring the need and the law to protect the ECJ by entrenching it into the Constitution tells us that governance is not important. All right, take that away. Okay. Now, having said that, we are going to put our Prime Minister under the microscope, right? And we are going to observe keenly. Now, some time ago, um, the Prime Minister had done an interview on Cliff Hughes' program, right? And he made um, certain statements. Today, we are going to assess, right, um, those statements, right, and put it as it relates to a credibility test, where we are going to, of course, show a comparison as it relates to the fact and prove one the inconsistencies of what he stated. Um, OT, so sorry, Baron. 
um, NIA is National Integrity <laughs> Action, and um, they were around before the Integrity Commission. That's what was um, formed um, into the Integrity Commission. They were the accountability um, watchdogs back then. Okay. So we are going to um, play um, that clip, display that clip as it relates to what the Prime Minister said. And um, we're going to take um, some keynotes, right? And we are going to present the facts and highlight the inconsistencies of what the Prime Minister said, right, on this interview. So we're going to show um, the nationwide interview. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm gonna share another. Um, I'm gonna share another. Um, I think this one is yeah, an article. Okay, there we go. Two hundred. Yeah, but two hundred. Yeah. Okay. So this um, article reads, um, Wholeness Makes Finances Public, hosted by Abka Fitzhenley. And this person is now um, in the Senate. 17 June 2016. Prime Minister Andrew Wholeness says he has asset value at just over 151 million. His liabilities currently amount to just under $35 million. Honest disclose his total assets and liabilities this afternoon in an interview with Nationwide News, the Gleaner and the Observer newspaper. Mr. Honest is the first Jamaican Prime Minister to publicly declare his assets and liabilities since P.J. Patterson made his declaration public in 2002. Mr. Holness made available to the media today his last 10 Integrity Commission declarations they did from 2007 when he first became minister and now. Okay, so people, I want you to understand that this information that he stated right here is not true and we are going to prove that as it relates to certain background check that will be done. Now, the Integrity Commission Declarations show that just before Olnitz became a minister 10 years ago, he had assets totaling just under 47 million. Uh, Ratigan, if you want to write down this 47 million, we are going to track it. His liabilities in 2007 were just under four million dollars. Between 2007 and this year, Olnitz declared to the Integrity Commission. 60 million Jamaican dollars in income. US dollars 189,000 in income was also declared to the Integrity Commission by owners during the same time. The Prime Minister Integrity Commission filing showed that he acquired income before he became Education Minister. People are wanting to pay particular attention to this. Let me read it over. The Prime Minister's Integrity Commission filings show that he acquired income before he became education minister via a private transport company which he owned. We, we, we check on this and we did not find such company. The company had operated in Portmore, Kingston and St. Andrew. Rental income, mortgages, salary and turnover investment were displayed on Mr. Owners Integrity Commission filings. Owners 2007 documents show that at before he became a minister, he owned a property in a section of the corporate era which was purchased for $7 million. People take note of that. Mortgage, mortgages were used to finance that purchase. People take note that there was no mortgage. Um, as it relates to this per, um, per purchase, yes, um, there was a mortgage listed for that. that, that that's the only mortgage that he has. In 2008, owners declared to the Integrity Commission that he had purchased two properties in apartment for 16 million and parcel of land for 15 million using savings, turnover on investment and loans. Mr. Owners also in 2011 declared to the Integrity Commission 
his purchase of a piece of land in Beverly Hills, St. Andrew. A 10 million home improvement loan mortgage of just under 4 million and credit from hardware supplies totaling 18 million was used to fund that purchase. We have done our investigation and we, find, we found no mortgage listed. Prime Minister told Nationwide News, the Jamaica Gleaner after all, the observer Balfour Henry that he accept it was necessary for him to declare his assets. He says he is moving to, uh, to amend the Integrity Commission Act to make it mandatory for key public office officers to publicly um, declare their assets. Right? Um, let us take that um, away. So now, the Prime Minister said, prior into entering politics, right, he came in with $47 million. I want people to take note of that. Now we are going to go on Wikipedia, right? I don't know if the Prime Minister, as it relates to what we have just read, as it relates to him being the Minister, uh, minister of Education in 2007, as listed as the first time into politics. Now when we go on Wiki, um, Wikipedia, right, we get different um, information that the Prime Minister has been in the political process since 1997. We are going to prove that on Wikipedia. Um, let us go to Wikipedia to show the people um, that. And we are going to speak about that 47 million. So I just want people to follow me here. You're going to share um, that document again downstairs. Okay, there we go. All right. So when we go on Wikipedia, we are going to get. Okay, Andrew Michael Holness, born 22nd June, um, July 1972, right? So we understand when the Prime Minister, right, was born, right? We are going to go into his political career. In 1997, here it is, people, he became a member of Parliament for West Central St. Andrew and served as opposition spokesperson on land and development from 1999 to 2002. And in 2002, he switched portfolio to housing and then education in 2005. He was sworn in as Minister of Education in September 2007. So basically, he's in the political system as of 1997 right so let us take that away now we are going to go as it relates to the prime minister claim that he brought 47 million dollars right into the political process what people need to understand that the prime minister born 1972 and if the prime minister entered the political process from 1997 that would make the prime minister 25 years of age so i want people to bear in mind and write down 1997 where they are saying that of course that the prime minister came into the politics with 47 million dollars i am going to play a clip with juliet Olness on an interview and based on what Juliet Owens said on the interview, we realized some inconsistency in terms of what the, um, the Prime Minister is saying that he came in with $47 million. Without um, further delay, we are going to show that clip um, to the public, display that clip. I'm going to share that clip now, uh, Mr. Ratigan. I was born in my husband's constituency. Um, I think I was actually born at the hospital, Andrews Memorial Hospital it was, yeah, um, at the time. But grew up at a very early age in Ensom City and went to Ensom City all age and then on to St. Catherine High School. I remember 
even being at Ensom City all age, being a very industrious little child, my parents would send me to school, they would give me my lunch money, but I would be buying police button and selling them to get extra money from early days. So I remember being at St. Catherine High School and leaving school, walking from St. John's Road to Spanish Town. I did it often. I, I walked from in some city to St. Catherine High to save money again. Even though I got my lunch money and I got my taxi fare, I always felt that other than paying my school fee and giving my uniform and my books, I should be able to do all the other little things. If I need geometry set, if they're doing something for sports day, I should be able to chip in. My dad worked in a factory, zinc manufacturing factory it was, he was a supervisor there. I think the factory closed down. He was made redundant and he took his savings and went into the taxi business. So he had a bus and taxi from time to time. I would walk to Spanish town and go and meet my mother and help her to sell. She would sell shoes and clothing, and I had no problem. I remember many times my classmates would pass, and sometimes they would see me at school and say, Juliet, you don't feel ashamed to go help your mother sell. And no, I was never ashamed. I always felt this is what is sending me to school. My mom and my dad earn an honest living, and I thought it was an excellent value to instill in me as a child. And I pitched in and made sure I sell any time I could, once school was out. If it was Christmas, I would be on to Falmouth. I love to check a lot of money. So <laughs> when they went to Falmouth, I found that the sales was very good. I was collecting and collecting and selling and selling. And I found that very exciting that my parents were able to earn in this way. My mom sort of beat it into my head since early days. Look, we are not wealthy. And the way you're going to achieve in life is to have a good education. That's really the legacy I'm passing on to you. Being educated and being able to take care of yourself. So, so for me growing up as a child, I actually never had a sense of any disparity or inequity in how women and men function because my parents function in a way where my mother was a strong woman and giving in equal um, ways to the partnership of taking care of and raising the family and funding our lifestyle. Myself and Andrew went to St. Catherine High School together, but I didn't like him in high school. I thought that he was just enough. He was into everything. I remember the very first Valentine's Day special that was put on at the school. Andrew organized it. He conceptualized it and he organized the Valentine's event. And I was like, who is that guy? <laughs> Everything is him. I remember he was valedictorian and I just continued to almost envy him and said, this guy is just so mm, into everything. And I remember when he was doing his valedictory speech, he probably, I don't think I've ever told him when he kept saying education. And I'm like, it's education. <laughs> so so I, I remember Andrew well, I was very impressed with the way he was as a young man. He was helping his mother to build her house and I'd pass and see him up on top of the house, helping the man who was doing the grill work, the masonry, and I was like, yeah, that guy not bad at all. <laughs> all right. But I remember at school thinking that he was just so enough. Everything was just this Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. Then he wasn't my friend. So I went to Woolmer's Girls, as I told you, for sixth form. And when it came around now to the ball at sixth form, I didn't have a date. <laughs> and someone said to me, what about Andrew, the guy down the road? And I was like, mm, not so bad. I couldn't make him go on with me. <laughs> and I said to Andrew, do you want to accompany me to my sixth form ball? I think he had a friend, Garfield, who liked me at the time. I don't know if he knew. But Andrew said yes. And at the time, as I tell you, very naive, very sheltered. I was chaperone. My uncle took us to the ball, drove us to the ball, and stayed with us at the ball and took us back home. So I had no opportunity for Andrew to get on with any hanky panky at all. But that summer was the start of our relationship. I remember after sixth form, we spent the entire summer together, like every waking moment. 
we stayed together until we fell asleep. We are very boring people, you know, so we decided we are going to get married in seven years. There are not many things I found that I was adamant about in a relationship, but some things I was very principled about. So I would never have a child unless I'm married. And I remember yes. saying that we need to be able to buy a home first <laughs> to get married. Here, guys. All right, so people, let me just pause it here because I want you to listen keenly. Now, what I want you to extract from this, right, as he claimed that 1997, when he came into the politics, he brought in, right, he has um, $47 million. You're going to hear Juliet Onis talk about 1997 and that they have no money, which is an inconsistency as it relates to what Andrew Onis um, stated. So we are going to play the clip, right? And you're going to listen what Juliet Onis is saying from here. I want people to understand that what you need to extract that Andrew Onis, right, as it relates to him making that statement, came into the politics, right, 1997, right, he had $47 million in assets, $47 million in assets, right? And where now Juliet Onis is going to go contrary to that. So please listen. <laughs> and then we can think about having children. I remember we got married, 1997. We planned, I don't even know, we sat down, we talked about it. Um, I think we decided to have our wedding in between our birthdays. I'm born on the 16th of July, he's born on the 22nd, and we chose the Sunday in between our birthdays. And we could not afford a lot, so we didn't have a wedding planner, and we could not afford a big hotel. I remember we rented Villa Renai at the time, and we had a regular chef, that you would normally have in your community come and cook up the curry goat and the rice and peas at Villa Renai. Um, and there we were married. Everybody came, like we invited all the relatives that we knew lived very far away because they would not be able to come to the wedding. They live in the UK, they live in America and Canada, but we didn't want anybody to say that we'd never invite them. So after trying to keep the wedding to 50, and my parents started to tell me who and who not invited. And his parents started to say who and who not invited. We said, all right, here's the strategy. Send all of them invitation because they're not coming. We ended up, instead of having a wedding of 50, with a wedding of 250 people. Because everybody turned up from all over and her mouth was just dropping. My father didn't think it funny. I told him that we should have actually run it like a fish fry. Where we give them an invitation at a cost. And you pay to come to the wedding <laughs> because all right but we we enjoyed it 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 was wonderful not very expensive and and right up our street now that you're serving you don't end up having as much time okay. and for andrew he spends his time with the boys um riding the bike i will ride but i don't always go. all right let us um go to the next clip that we want to um present so we understand that okay 1997 right they got married all right and as he told um cliff Hughes, as it relates to him um taking in um 47 million dollars right based on what uh, Juliet Onis is saying right doesn't seem to be going um consistent uh, with that in a way uh, we are going to Go down to a next clip, and this particularly we are getting closer now as it relates to right um, Andrew Holness, right? Where we are looking closer to illicit enrichment, right? Via right the various means, right as it relates to. You know, um, tax evasion, awarding of contracts, breaching of procurement rules, and so forth. So we are going to go to this document before we get into certain critical information. And hear what Andrew Holness 
have to say, right? We know that um, based on certain documentation, Andrew Owners own valued, right, at least $200 million. I want people to bear that in mind, right? But we're going to see where Andrew Owners tried to play, play, play it down. You understand to say that the house value of $51 million. So we are going to get there for people to um, see what we are talking about. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to share the other um, clip here, uh, Mr. Ratigan. Jamaica Rose 2016. Okay. People who know me know that I don't carry a grudge. I, you know, I don't carry a grudge. But I'm human. So I, of course, I, I shook my head in disgust at what was being said and what was being done. And uh, I was also disappointed in Peter Phillips, uh, a man who I had great respect for, um, someone who I had a very good relationship with his family and his children and his grandchildren. Um, you, know, I, you know, I know his son, Mikhail, fairly well and i know uh, michael's children fairly well um, they used to go to school with my children so when i saw this kind of personal attack about me building a house in beverly hills and where i got the money from i i was really taken aback um because you know i was never one to be involved in anything untoward uh, so i just thought that it was uncoming of him because I, I held him in, in, in a higher order of esteem. Um, and I think he has disappointed me and let me down personally in, in terms of his behavior. It, it shows a kind of desperation and power hungriness that Jamaica does not need at this time. We decided to do what was more economical and what made sense. So with all these stones, we built walls, which makes sense. Um, and some of the figures I've heard man, it about ridiculous because when you come to think of it, um 90 percent of the cost of the stone wall is the excavation first and the stones now i had to excavate anyway and when i excavate i got stones so the, the cost of the wall is minimal cements to join the stones um and uh, you know cement sand and gravel to join the stone that's it and i think that managing the project ourselves saved a lot of cost uh people don't know this but you know i actually laid some of the stones um i spent in the early time some you know supervising the work my wife was there most of the time it was very interesting it, it made me you see me losing a lot of weight and looking slim and uh, a lot of that was was actually walking up and down the hill and supervising and mixing concrete and uh you know people don't know this either that um you know i did woodwork at school as my technical subject so i have a little knowledge of, of carpentry and i found it a great relaxation take that away let me speak a little bit here i want people to pay attention to what andrew only said that he had done you know um woodwork and carpentry right as his technical subject. Andrew Holness has no experience as it relates to laying and cutting those stones. That situation is a highly skilled crafted person has to do that. And you have heard Andrew Holness said he had laid some of the stones himself. And as a result of that, that and him managing the product, uh, the project, sorry, right, was able to reduce the cost. Right, I don't know if anyone wants to believe that, right, but that, to me, right, makes no sense. He has no experience in stone cutting because he did not mention that. What he mentioned was that, right, as it relates to what he learned at school, woodwork and carpentry, nothing about stone cutting, right? Now, if you look on the entire perimeter 
of Andrew Holness house, right? Fully stoned, well cut, right? Has to be with technical, skillful craftsmen, stone cutters, um, to do that. Andrew Holness has no experience um, in that area. Now, we are going to go into a more serious situation. And this time, we are going to go through an investigation as it relates to what 18 degrees not had done, right, to expose, right, this government as it relates to tax evasion. We are going to pull that document, right, and show people, right, what um, is happening with that. So without any delay, let us get into that so that people can understand it. 18 degrees not um, scan 0029 PDF. All right, so Mr. Wright again, I am going to share again. It's this one here. Yeah. Okay, there we go. All right, so I want people to listen keenly. This one from 18 degrees not investigation. Prime Minister Holness offshore company that held his Beverly Hills properties in Jamaica is dissolved. A deep dive into the possible tax implications then and now. Years after the ownership structure of Prime Minister Andrew Holness Beverly Hills home in Jamaica came on a scrutiny for its ability to abide taxes. The property located at Shenstone Drive now as a new title holder. Its former owner, the St. Lucian Offshore Entity Admat Incorporated, has been dissolved. The International Business Company IBC was set up in February 2008, and they are, they are speaking about um, Admat as the, um, the International Business Company. Right, so I want people to understand that. Was set up in February 2008 while Mr. Owens held office as Minister of Education. And according to statement in 2016 by him and his then attorney, Patrick Bailey, Mr. Owens was Admat's only director and he had his then undergrad sons, Adam and Matthew, were the only shareholders. Admat was dissolved in and around December 2021. About six months after St. Lucia activated new rules requiring all IBCs have real economic substance in St. Lucia, like having a physical premises and an adequate number of in-country qualified employees in order to maintain active IBC status which allows for income earned outside of that country to be exempt from taxes within St. Lucia, a company, St. Lucian activities, however, would now be taxed at the local rate of 30%. And now, right, St. Lucia changed their laws. Previously, IBC were prohibited from doing business with residents of St. Lucia, which included buying immovable property. Here it is, the notice of company in the solution, Admat Incorporated, right? You see the number there. They noticed that the international business company, Admat Incorporated 2008, right? 0094, which was incorporated on February 14, 2008, has registered its articles of dissolution. Take notice that the commencement date of the dissolution of the above named company is 15 of December 2021, or on a date within 30 days thereof, and that the name and address of the liquidator is as follow. Right? Here's the name, right? The new rules were implemented by St. Lucia. So people listen to the new rules now. And this, this goes to show you that, of course, Andrew Holness was definitely dodging tax. Right, using um, the offshore company Admat to buy properties in Jamaica to avoid tax. You want to see that? The new rules were implemented by St. Lucia, so it could be removed from a list 
of non-cooperative jurisdictions for tax purposes by the European Union, which argued that St. Lucia tax regime was among several in the Caribbean aimed at attracting profits that do not reflect real economic activity in the jurisdiction. The criticism was that allowing companies to incorporate with mere PO box shell companies addresses was leading to harmful tax competition, which threatened the corporate tax revenues of the EU member states. St. Lucia remaining on the list could have potentially dissuaded foreign companies and investors from doing business in that Caribbean nation. It's not clear whether Admat had derived any tax benefits from the solution, right, before the solution. But Admat did opt to be exempt from income taxes. Its application documents show that means if no changes had been made since inception, St. Lucia would have tax income generated in Jamaica by ADMA, for example. But depending on the type of income, ADMA may still have been required to pay tax in Jamaica. This was not done. Application to incorporate and register, right? Okay, we don't have to read. Um, um, no, that was Wednesday. Yeah, that was Wednesday of the company. So we don't have to read that. While actively registered in St. Lucia between 2008 and 2011, Admat bought the land on which the Shenstone Drive house was eventually built and at least two other Jamaican properties for around 57.1 million, right? $692,478 for all three without any listed mortgages, people. I want you to bear that in mind. I want you to bear that in mind. Andrew Holness, right, previously stated that he used mortgages, right, um, to do um, certain things. There was no mortgages listed, raising question about where the money came from. During that time, Mr. Holness' salary as Minister of Education was averaging around $5.2 million. $62,513 per year, not counting allowances. Here are the properties listed, right? Date of purchases, Acadia apartment, September 2008 for $16 million. Wycliffe closed land in Beverly Hills, February 2009 for $15.275 million, right? Shenstone Drive land in Beverly Hills were House would later be constructed 2011, right? Construction costs for Shenstone Beverly um, Hills House stated by Mr. Owens 2012 to 2015. People, if you notice this list, there's nothing there within the period of 1997, right? To 2007, where Mr. Owens had purchased anything. Take note of that. And we remember that where he said he came in, came in with $47 million in assets. So please note this, you know, people. Please note this. 2008, 2009, 2011, 2012 to 2015. Nothing between 1997 or 2007. According to a statement put out by Mr. Owens in 2016, he also spent an additional $52.6 million. 502,000 US dollars, 964 on building the Shenstone Drive house over four years, beginning in 2012. That amount he stated was financed by savings people, salary, bank loans, and suppliers' credit. Mr. Owen's finances will be further explored in a later story. Right? Now, the question asks here on the subheading what happened to the tree? known Jamaican properties owned by Admat. After purchasing the land in 2011 on which the Shenstone Drive house was built, the registration of Admat lapsed for non-payment of annual fees. Mm -hmm. St. Lucian Court documents seen by 18 degrees now shows that it was ordered restored upon application being made and payment of penalties and fees amounting to $5,550, 
the registry in St. Lucia stamp the application November 1, 2021, certifying its registration as being effected for the year 2011 to 2021. People note that. Upon restoration, it was deemed never to have been struck off the register. It was during this brief window of restoration between November 2021 and December 2021 that Adma transferred ownership of the Shenstone Drive house by the way of gift on November 10, 2021 to Imperium Investment Holdings Limited, a company registered in Jamaica in June 2020 and whose property is purposely is investment in assets of all classes, Imperium, Imperium's store director and shareholder is Mr. Ones, who holds 600 of the 1,000 ordinary shares. The remaining 400 shares are analyzed according to the records at the company's office of Jamaica. That same month, on November 4, 2021, Admat also transferred another Beverly Hills property at Wycliffe Close in Jamaica. Also by way of gift to Estate Bridge Development Limited, a company registered in Jamaica in July 2020 for the construction, repair, and alteration of buildings. Estate Bridge has at its shareholders Mr. Owners Imperium Investment, which owns 4,001 of 10,000 ordinary shares. His son, Adam, owns 2,000 shares. Mr. Owner's sister, Sigia Anderson, owns another 2,000 shares. A businessman, Norman Brown in Montego Bay, owns 1,000 shares. And 999 shares remain unallotted. Mr. Brown is also chairman of the government-owned Housing Agency of Jamaica under the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation and reports to Mr. Owners, who is that ministry presiding minister. Nepotism and cronyism, the best. The third property admit at brought in 2008, an apartment in Acadia in St. Andrew, had been purchased for 16 million, 219 US. Um, 219,000 US dollars, 449, and sold eight years later in 2016 for only 16.5 million, right? 131,852. As previously reported by 18 degrees now, the purchasers were a medical doctor, Kijana Barrett, and a field supervisor, Darren Murray, reached by phone. Mr. Murray refused to comment on the record as 18 degrees now tried to understand whether there was a relationship between him or Miss Barrett and Mr. Owens or his wife and why Admat would have sold the apartment at a loss in US dollars term 87,757,597 even before transaction fees. Here is a property in question, Acadia apartment complex, which Admat had purchased a unit in 2008 and subsequently sold in 2016. People, here is the unit. It is also not clear how the Acadia property transaction was allowed to go through in 2016 since the registrar in St. Lucia confirmed to 18 degrees now that before restoration in 2021, Admat had been consistently struck off with no restoration in between since 2012. According to St. Lucia's International Business Companies Act, a structured company and its directors may not legally, 1A, commence legal proceedings, carry on any business, or in any way deal with the assets of the company. Here's a total breach here. When asked if it would have been allowable, for the Acadia transaction to go through, the registrar in St. Lucia, St. Lucia wrote that matter for the Jamaican authorities to respond to. However, when 18 degrees not reach out to Jamaican National Land Agency, which is the lo local authority for the property transaction, it did not respond. The NLA falls under the Ministry of Economic and Growth and Job Creation, 
over which Mr. Owen is preside as minister. People, so when you are, when you when you need to understand why the prime minister have 19 agencies, 19 agencies, agencies right under his own responsibility. 19 key agencies, right? So he can get to do all of these anti -punkies. Mr. Owens didn't answer when asked how Admat was able to sell the Acadia apartment if Admat was struck off that time. Mr. Bailey, the attorney who handled the transaction for Admat back then, told 18 Degrees not recently that he wasn't aware that the company had been struck off the St. Lucia. And that the NLA only required same of the time that a company shows it's acting before being allowed to deal in land transaction while trying to find the attorney for the buyers to ask a similar question. 18 degrees not learn. She is now deceased. Wow. A company's attorney in Jamaica who chose not to be named said the 2016 Acadia transaction would have been considered void had ADMA not been restored in 2021. Subtopic, ADMA paid transfer taxes and stamp duty. People, I want you to listen to this. Transfer tax and stamp duty. And I want to, the reason why I'm, let me explain this, is to show the total manipulation of Andrew Owens. Amending laws. Let me explain the document before I go into it. Amending laws to suit himself. Right? And then automatically robbing the country's revenues. So people, this is how Andrew Owens doing his thing. Now listen, transfer tax and stamp duty. The two most significant government sets were paid for each of the land transfers. According to the transfer document, for the first of the properties sold in 2016 for 16.5 million, the Arcadia apartment, 825,000, right, in US, 6,593 in transfer tax was assessed and paid, and 660,000, right, in the US, 5,274 in stamp duty, a total of 1,485, right, in the US, 11,867. Now, watch this now, people. The property transfer tax rate then, was 5% of the sale price and 4% of stamp duty. When Admat was set up in February 2008, right, the prevailing rate was higher. It was 7.5% then for transfer tax and 5.5% for stamp duty. They began to be lowered under the Bruce Golden administration. By Bruce Golden lowered that. Take an um, additional 2% of that. The country lose revenue. So I want people to understand that. Had the February 2008 rates been around at the time of this 2016 sale, ADMA would have had to have paid almost $1.7 million or $13,000 US dollars, right? 515 as opposed right to what he paid um there right now let us go down in transfer tax and stamp duty the seller is usually responsible for all the transfer tax and half of the stamp duty in 2019 the owner said administration fulfill right a campaign promise so look what now the, look what Andrew Owens is going to do now in 2019 in order to amend law to appease himself Right? Robbing the country revenues, right? By amending laws, right? To protect him to do that. Now, in 2019, the owner said administration fulfilled a campaign promise of his um, and lowered the property transfer tax rate even further 2% from 5% people. I want to pay attention here. This is what Andrew Wallace had done. So then the country lose revenue of 3%. And instituted a minimal flat fee for stamp duty. In an interview on the campaign trail during the February 2016 general election, then opposition leader Owens told 18 degrees not he would reduce transaction taxes as a way to increase the velocity of transactions to spur economic growth. 
particularly in areas like real estate and construction. The only reason why he's doing that, right, is to make sure that he sweeten his pocket. While the available statistics have shown that more value has been added to the economy from those areas since then, this policy decision would end up providing significant savings. Here it's paper. Significant savings from Mr. Olness Admat Incorporated when it's transferred its other Jamaican properties in 2021. So you see how Andrew Olness right, tried to be smart and using the laws, right? Conveniently amending the laws. For example, instead of paying 9 million, people, I want you to take note, instead of paying 9 million, which would be 59,359 in transfer tax based on Jamaica February 2008, right, rate of 7.5% uh, before Bruce Golden take it down. Assuming the year of sale and the sale value were the same, the transfer of the Shenstan Drive House from Admat to Imperium in November 2021 cost Admat only 2.4%. Million now in the US 15,829 in transfer tax, which is two percent of the government asset value of 121 million, right? 791,000 US dollars now in stamp duty. Adman could have ended up here. The difference now, people Adman could have ended up paying 3.3 million. In US, 21,765 based on the vendor being responsible for the half of the rate that was applicable in February 2008 of the 5.5%. Instead, only $100, right? Look, 66 cents US was assessed for the whole transaction under the new regime. Showing you how Andrew Wilness just manipulating the laws, right? Um, to please himself and get maximum benefit as it relates to his property. For the transfer of the property at weekly flows to Estate Bridge Development Limited in November 2021, only 760,000, uh, right? In US dollars, 5,013 cents in transfer tax and 100 dollars. Right, and 66 cents in stamp duty ended up being assessed and paid on the valuation of 38 million, right? Just look at it, you know. 250,627 put forward by Admat that was accepted by the government. Under the February 2008 regime, Admat would have been subject to a much higher amount of transfer tax and stamp duty together of, of about 3.9 million. Right in US, $25,689. Four town homes are now being constructed on that property, which, if they end up being sold, will also result in estate bridge paying transfer tax and stamp duty at the lower rate. Now, let us take this document away. And there is a property, right? We're not going to go further with this document. All right. Let me talk to her. So, um, Ratigan, we are going to go further, right? But let us um just discuss this, right? Now, as it relates to all those properties that listed, the problem that we all observed, right, is the source of funding, right? Is a fundamental thing. As it relates to Andrew Holness not able to explain the source of funding. I am going to get a little bit deeper here. Right? When Andrew Holness speaks about returns on investment in one of his interviews, and he spoke about right um, SSL, what we ought to know and understand that SSL wasn't doing any real investment, right? SSL was physically stealing investors' money. 
And so then the question asks, if Andrew Wallace is going to use SSL as one of his source of investment, right? He also spoke of mortgages, which there is none, right? That were um, established, let me say that. No mortgages was um, were, were, um, were found, so still some problem there. But when you look at an SSL situation, right? And to the fact that we know that SSL stole client money, so SSL wasn't doing any real investment. My question, uh, Ratty, how Andrew Wallace's profile account would have received return on investment? Yeah, if it wasn't doing, if SSL wasn't doing business, how come he would get a return on his investment? Yes. I don't know the answer to that one. <laughs> okay. I don't know the answer. If it wasn't doing business, uh, if it wasn't doing business, then we're, 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 we're it, uh, somebody just put in the thing saying it's like a Ponzi scheme. So exactly. They, they get money, new money in and they pay off. You know, the pay off the, the old investors, the people who come in first, they get the money from the people coming in now. But why would a prime minister get himself involved in something like this? I mean, I'm it's mind boggling the stuff that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the stuff that you have presented the tax stuff, the registration stuff, the transfer stuff. And I'm saying, this is the same man who went to the integrity commission and said. I need you to give me and my people training on corruption matters and all of that stuff. And I have a list. I don't have it here right now. But I have a list of all the training they received. Mm -hmm. And then when they were finished, they said, okay, now you need to sign this code of conduct. It, it, it makes sense now why he wouldn't want to sign it. Exactly. And I'm trying to think then, I'm, I'm also trying to think, did he ask for this training so he could understand the mechanism of the you know the investigation mm -hmm. to say okay oh, oh, you know this is how they do it so he would be aware of that so he could yeah. kind of like maneuver himself I'm, that, i mean i i'm trying to put myself in this position to think what would cause me to do the things that he did and from what i'm seeing there is no good reason because even if you even for example even if you say okay um, he did it for tax purposes. I still have a problem with that. I still yes. have a problem with the prime minister telling people, look, on have to pay on the taxes. That's why we have something called the Tax Administra Administration of Jamaica. Right? And then, the, but no, and I know people are going to say, well, rich people do it all the time. But you don't expect that from your prime minister. I expect that from somebody from PSO, JR, you know, somebody who's wealthy and a private individual. Exactly. But I don't expect that from him. Yeah, I don't expect that from him. So this is mind-boggling that um oh <laughs> all right, I'm not a criminal. Anthony G said you have to be a criminal yeah. to think like a criminal. <laughs> let, me, let me stop it right now. So yes. <laughs> Myron. Hey um right there. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. In um two thousand six to two thousand nine. Right, West Con Construction Limited award was awarded government contracts. Yes. Right. The Ministry of Education and Andrew Olness failed to report the award of these contracts. Mr. Holness awarded contracts to a company where at least one of the directors is a friend and business partner for over 20 years. Mrs. Golden Randall reported for this period, four contracts were not reported by the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. And 26 contracts were unreported by National Works Agency to the Office of the General Contractor. The value of the contracts awarded were around 33 million seven hundred eighty seven thousand three hundred and sixty eight dollars and thirty two cents 2007 west Con construction limited was recommended by the way of letter which was dated 20 december 2007 authored by andrew Olness for the award of a contract 
in the amount of 1450000 for works in the West Central St. Andrew constituency related to the 2007 Christmas work program. That's his constituency. But funny enough, most of the other work that was done was outside of his constituency. Exactly. All right. Now, check this out. Before 2007, Omega Bridge Finance Limited, active status, Robert Garvin and Juliet Owens were listed as directors of the company for which the core business activity recorded was investments. Of note, Andrew Owens was listed as a cease director in the company as of 7 September 2007 and is listed as a shareholder together with Robert Garvin. And yeah, I'm just showing you the various mechanisms that he was involved with. And okay. we would have to look into Omega Bridge Finance to see if there was any washing going on. SSL Investment Company he noted in February 2016 that he held an investment brokerage account with SSL opening in 2008. But he closed it in September 2021. Just a Liquidate the last remaining financial instrument managed by SSL, gave instruction for his account to be closed. Right? Keep in mind that's about the time that the KPMG report was released and went over to the Ministry of Finance. It was a nice report. It came from the FSC and he promptly closed his account. So if you folks are tracking along, you can see what was happening in all these periods. We don't have any other information yet as to whether or not there was other people dropping money in the kitty. Right? And um, the, the, he claimed that he declared ADMAT to the Integrity Commission in 2008. It was registered and declared that year. Right? And then um, he had stated negotiations to purchase the land to construct the family home was in 2010. So I don't remember. When did you say the family home was was uh, the land was bought? What year was that? Twenty eleven. Twenty eleven. Twenty eleven. Yes. So he started negotiations in twenty ten. Um. Okay. All right. Um. Urban. I'm going to put um put you to um and I'm just going to, you know um. Replicate from my um yeah on my I mean, memory here. If you have this, if you have this already and you can show it. That's All right. Good. Um remember um when he purchased um the land Erica. right that he constructed his Beverly home on. Yeah. Right. Remember that he had done it in full payment. Uh-huh. He didn't he didn't have all the money. Right, and so then he paid it in um installment, which most of that money, right, came from um SFL as a card to Patrick Bailey. Uh huh. Right, most of that money came from Patrick Bailey. Now, so does consider this: 2011, the Prime Minister utilized. For installment to pay for the land. Now, in 2012, 2012, right? Mm -hmm. Hussein Bolt joined SSL, 
We agreed with you on um, the information so far? Right, right. Okay. Now, the information stated that as soon as Hussein Bolt put his money in SSL, is as soon as it missed me. It was taken up. Is that information correct? Let yeah. me go on. Yes. Now, in 2012, the Prime Minister was able, right, to begin construction on his own and finish that home in 2016. So it took four years. It took him, yeah, it, it, it took four years. Now, now, he was saying at that time, the initial yeah. phase was financed from his savings. Yes. Salary and supplier's credit Yes. Of approximately 3.8 million Jamaican. Yes. The initial phase caused approximately 8.6 million. Does yes. that sound right? I cannot, cannot. Now, um, let me um um proceed here. All right. Now remember that in what we look on, we look on a 2019 um statutory declaration. Or the prime minister where he had declared um 161 million if my memory serves me right um to the integrity commission uh -huh. now let us go back let us backtrack a little bit while he declared that in 2019 please remember right that the house although it was listed there right for small amount of money Right, I think um, he said he what 50, 52.6 million dollars, uh -huh. something like that. All right, now we have to remember that in 2012, Juliet Ones was constructing an apartment J -J. complex for yeah. that no value. Let us let, let, let us be correct because we, we, we don't want to speak on something that right, um, we don't know. Um, so we are going to give Juliet Owens the benefit of the doubt. It is now, as a card to the information, no value 800 million, 800 million dollars. Okay, but but listen. Yes. At the time, uh, and this is I, I'm talking, looking from the the reporting that's out there. I think this is from the Integrity Commission. Yes. JJ Development Holding starts. A $22 million development of a housing project in St. Andrew. Okay. All right. And that $22 million, mm -hmm. uh, this is from 2012 to 2020, supposed to morph into over $800 million. Okay. All right. So then... In the 2019 declaration, was that $22 million um, listed in the Integrity Commission report because we didn't see that. Now, what I'm saying here, right, and I'm going to ask the panel um, the question because the Integrity Commission, and this is what gets me confused, the Integrity Commission certified Andrew Hornet's statutory declaration for 2017, um, 2018, and 2019. The question that I'm asking, right, and based on investigation, that if there is no mortgage listed to prove the source, right, of where he get the money from, mm -hmm. right, the source, I want people to just understand what I'm saying, where I'm going. How? Oh, the Integrity Commission certified the statutory declaration for 2017, 18, and 19. That needs to be explained. People need to understand that. That needs to be explained. Because if the investigation is showing that, okay, what Andrew won is clear as it relates to mortgage, there's no mortgage listed. Claim that he got money from out of SSL as it relates to return on investment, SFL, 
right, was doing any form of legitimate investment. We all know that. They were stealing, right, investors' money. So right. then the Integrity Commission now need to explain, right, as it relates to verifying the source of income, the, the, the source of um, is wealth, right? How were the 2017, 18, and 19 statutory declaration was certified while the 2020, the 2020, 21, 22, Right and possible um, 23 cannot be verified. Oh, you, oh, 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 do you um, mirror, mirror those two situations? I am confused. You, you understand the question I'm asking her? Yep. Yeah. Go ahead, right there. No, ahead, I right. understand exactly. I understand if the if the. If, how come they did it for those years and then now they're not doing it? I mean, could it be that they were uh, inexpert at it? That they just, because remember now, they were formed in 2017. Yes. And they started doing business in 2018. They were the contractor general before that, right? Yes. And so. Okay. So they passed the law in 2017, but they really didn't become effective till 2018. And I think they really didn't start looking at cases till 2019. And they were understaffed at the time. So I'm thinking, is there some influence here or these people are just, they're just inept? Let, let, me, let me bring up something else, right? The OCG deemed it necessary to review the incorporation and registration of the following companies' businesses, which were alleged to have connections with the Prime Minister. Okay, first one Positive Jamaica Foundation, active incorporation before 2015. Sunshine Mobile Company Limited, active incorporation before 2015. West Central St. Andrew Trust, active in cooperation before 2015. We talked about this one before, the Omega Bridge Finance Limited, active in cooperation before 2007. And the last one here is the Lido Taxi Service Limited, removed, dissolved, in cooperation before 2015. So that's other sources of income that he possibly, or I know of investment, I don't know about the income part yet, but he was involved with them. Let me, let me, that. Show, you let me show you something. Um, take a look at this, right? This is the section 35 of the Integrity Commission Act. They have a committee that looks at the proper for this is separate and apart from the oversight committee in parliament this is one that's within the agency itself right and it says the commission may appoint an employee for the purposes of this act blah 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 blah, blah. such staff as may be considered necessary to assist it in the proper performance under this act now remember now folks this took place this law was passed in 2017 now this law was been worked on under the PNP administration, but then they lost the election in 2016, and the JLP government continued uh, with this law and finally passed it. It was passed in 2017. Now this is this is this is the committee that is supposed to look uh, within the agency, like some kind of oversight body within, to look to see, okay, are they doing what they're supposed to be doing, proper for performance? But just take a look at who. In 2017, when this was passed, and remember, the government has been the same ever since this law was passed. Take a look at the people's the people who sit on this committee. The first person is the Speaker of the House of Representatives. <laughs> who was That's speaker? The first person, right who? at the time, I think it was Dalrymple, if I'm not mistaken. And now it's the Prime Minister's wife yeah. who's sitting there, right? Look at the, the second one, the president of the Senate. That's your good friend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's Senator Tom Tavares Simpson. Tom Tavares Simpson. 
Yeah, right. And then look at the third one. The person designated by the Prime Minister as lead of government business in the House of Representatives. Oh. That's the Deputy Speaker, the gentleman from Montego Bay. Clark, I believe his name is. Yeah. Right? And then they have a, somebody from the opposition um, as number four. Then look, look, look next. It's somebody designated by the Prime Minister as leader of government business in the Senate. That is my favorite minister. That's right. Kamina Johnson Smith. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then then the opposition gets one person there. And then look at look at the last one. Look at the last one. That's Minister Mr. Nigel Clark. Algorithms himself. Mr. Logarithm. Algorithm. Mm -hmm. Tropical rhythm. That's him. So if you look at this and say, okay, they have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven people on that on that board, right? And only one. In the government, we have one, two, three, four, five of the eight. Five of the eight answer to the prime minister. No. <laughs> You think, because you were asking the question, what happened over at the Integrity Commission? Now, let's say this commission was there looking at things, looking at what the, looking at what the complaints division was, you know, their performance. What do you think would happen here? And, and by the way, the complaints division, it's right here, the complaints division, they, they look at statutory declarations. It's, it's right here. Um, it's right the next one here it is right here and 32 the director of information and complaints you see what it says receive keep on record and examine all not some all statutory declarations filed with the commission and they may make such inquiries necessary in order to certify or determine the accuracy of a statutory declaration and they may Receive and keep proper record of any complaint, blah, 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 Corrupt, corruption. But keep in mind, folks, that they have three divisions there, and they may create more, but they have they basically have three. Information and complaints, investigation, and prosecution. But even though statutory declarations come into the Director of Information and Complaints, take a look at this. Here's the second division. Uh, um, investigation he said that they can do it too mm -hmm. without prejudice to the provisions of any other enactment and subject to any general or specific direction that they may investigate in the manner specified by or under this act any allegation that involves or may involve an act of corruption or any allegation re re or any allegation relating to non-compliance with the provisions of this act on the basis of any complaint, information, or notification referred to him by the decision of the commission or the, by the director of information and complaints. So they can do it too. So I'm not surprised, Byron and Anne Marie. I'm not yeah. surprised when you said to me, when you pose the question and say, hey, what happened to all those years? Was it from 20, what was it, up to 2019? Yeah, 2017 to um, 2019 um, yeah. were um, certified, right? But yeah. I mean, um, going um, beyond that, all right, there's a problem in terms of certifying um, that. So right, and 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 the 2023 yes was due last month. It exactly, was due, it was due the 31st of last month, and we haven't heard anything. And then by law, they're supposed to gazette a summary. Of, of two people's uh, statutory declaration, only two, leader of the opposition and the prime minister. And we didn't see one for him last year. We saw one for the opposition last year yeah. and the year before and the year before. We haven't seen one for the prime minister in quite some time now. All right. But well, Ratigan, um, hold, hold, a, hold a minute. Um, there's a situation as it relates to, right, um, I think maybe you can bring it up, that... If the prime minister found to be lying or anyone, right, found to be lying on your statutory declaration, isn't that come with a fine and possibly um, imprisonment? I am almost certain that there is a 
Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you because I had to look at it for my favorite minister. Yes, uh, that definitely, I, th I want the people to see that. And then I'm going to ask a question. Okay. All right, here it is. I'll put it up. Yes. Here it is, section 43. A person who fails without reasonable cause to submit a statutory declaration, or is another one, a person who fails without reasonable cause to provide any information, blah, 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 blah. All right, this is the one you're talking about. A person who knowingly makes a false statement yes. or knowingly gives false information, commits an offense, and is liable on summary conviction in a parish court to a fine not exceeding $2 million or to a term of imprisonment not exceeding two years, and the court may make such order as it thinks fit. And I've been saying, in a, in a, in a, in a, in my own way, I've been lobbying the Integrity Commission and the court to say it's high time now. You can't have a prime minister with three years no statutory declaration. We can't account for that. I mean, they, they should be fining him now. Or, 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 and I would suggest that if that is the case, don't even fine him. Send him to prison. Right? That's, that, what, that's, they, what, that's, what, that's what St. Kitts did with their that's, people. That's why I that's why I refer to that because that's exactly what Stan Kids DPP had done, Ratigan. Exactly right. right, following right um the rule of law. Well, the law, yeah. Exactly. So um the thing is, right? Now you have the um the prime minister um 2021, 2022, and 2023, right? Definitely in some bind. And not only that, had been Ratigan given time, right, to bring document coming coming forward, right, to justify our, you know, justify the um the variations, the variances, right, that are there. Yeah. And you are going to tell me, right, from 2019, the Prime Minister having problem. Right to bring forward those documents, right to justify whatever variances that they are seeing. Now, I am saying as it relates to Stenkitz DPP, even Ratigan do um, we have the, you know, the corruption prosecutor. The DPP can step in. The DPP, I mean. 2019, 2020, 2021. But you know what, Rati? I'm going to. I want you to just lend me 20 minutes of your time, right? Let me just go through certain oh, things. No, it's your, it's your. It, no, no, no. You don't have to ask for that time. Just do your thing, man. All right, thank you, thank you. So, people, I want you to follow me on this as it relates to um the DPP. What I'm going to present is for people to. Have an understanding, right? If our DPP is performing as it relates to service to the Jamaican citizen. So without um honey, let us play this document. Um corruption related charges brought against Barry Parts. We just, we just want to show um people right? for, one quick thing, one quick thing, Baron. Let me just show yes. <laughs> Because next week we're gonna go through this thing a step by step. But I just wanna show people something and show you oh I don't un well, I do understand why certain things yes. are <laughs> look at this. The JCF, you know, can step in and, 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 and investigate the prime minister and arrest him. Yes. Based on section four, right here. It says nothing in this act shall prevent a member of the JCF or any other um Mocha can get involved in this. If I Yes. Yeah, even though it says Integrity Commission Act, it says here within its section four that JCF or any other body having investigative powers under any other enactment shall from commencing or continuing an investigation into any complaint, information, notification, or other matter. They could walk right in and exactly. say to the integrity commission, it's been too long. We want to take it over. The DPP could play a role in this as well, exactly. as you just mentioned. But is anybody doing that? No. Exactly. So let me just bring um people um because when 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 people um hear us 
speaking against the um the DPP that the DPP is um I mean apparently biased, right? They might think but and, and, and possibly um corrupt, they might think that okay, all right, Mr. Q is just speaking off the cuff. But let me just go through um these documents and show um people why I have that view, right? Um, so let us bring up this. And hold on, hold on one second. Let me... Okay, go ahead. Okay. Yes. We, so we are going to show people as it relates to the perception, right? Um, that not only mystic sensation has, and if you notice, national integrity action. Corruption-related charges brought against Mr. Darrell Vaz, MP Senior Superintendent of Police, Mr. James Forbes, and businessman Mr. Bruce Bignall. In advancing the national imperative of more effective combat of corruption in Jamaica, National Integrity Action views the charges laid against Mr. Darrell Vaz, MP Senior Superintendent of Police, James Forbes, and businessman Mr. Bruce Bignall in the framework of two fundamental principles of democratic governance, namely one, each Jamaica of whatever station in life must be presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Hence, no one should try, convict, nor ab uh, absolve um, the person's charge prior to the findings arising from the impending trial. Number two, secondly, non-Jamaican, however, exemplary, their record, nor outstanding their service, is above the law. At the heart of the rule of law is equality before the law. Regrettably, but indisputably, too many experiences in Jamaica confirm that the wealthy, prominent, or politically connected are treated in a privileged way by the justice system compared to the disadvantaged, the vulnerable, the poor, and those who have no connection. This conclusion was confirmed in the report of the most comprehensive examination ever undertaken of Jamaica's justice system by the Jamaican Justice Reform Task Force, chaired by the late Professor Barry Chevans and including then Chief Justice Lendley Wolf and representative from the private sector, the church, the Jamaican bar, and the civil society. A key finding of this over 300 page report was that the Jamaican justice system is too unequal lack of the equality between the powerful, wealthy litigant and the under resourced litigant. Survey after survey of the opinions of the Jamaican people confirms their agreement with this conclusion. The most recent in the UNDP Caribbean Human Development Report on Citizens um, Security to, um, 2012 found that 53% of Jamaicans believe that Powerful criminals go free, and 58% that politically connected criminals go free. In this context, it is essential to build trust in the justice system, a necessary element of this trust, trust building to ensure that where and whenever there is sufficient credible evidence, the powerful and the politically connected must be charged and provide with the opportunity like any other citizen to have their day in court, to establish innocence, or to be found guilty. Take away the document on it. And we are going to move and show you something. Now, where I'm going with this, people, I am going with this to show a conference as it relates to Paula Lubelin, right? Explaining that for a case to be successfully prosecuted, and I want people to listen to me, Father Llewellyn in the, in the conference agreed that a case to be successfully prosecuted, a prudent DPP needs to work with the investigators. I know where I'm going now. Paula Llewellyn in her conference stated that a prudent prosecutor needs to work in tandem with the investigators to have a successful 
prosecution. So look at this. Look at this and hear it from Paula Lumlin yourself. And of course, we know the big elephant that is in the room, but none of us here should be intimidated by it because it's a conference like this that helps to reaffirm, reassure all of us that we are capable. And one of my favorite phrases that after this conference, our testicular fortitude will be further entrenched to meet the challenges. Now, prosecuting financial crimes, I understand I have about 20 minutes, so I'm going to go through quickly. Okay. Okay. Who is the prosecution? The prosecution means not just the prosecutors who appear in court, but includes persons such as police officers and other state officials connected with the investigation and conduct of the case against the accused person. And this was reformulated by Mr. Justice Panton in the Jamaican Court of Appeal in a case involving a police officer as the accused, Harry Daly and the Queen. So it means that even though the investigator may think, hmm, this information here that I've gathered, this statement, this video, the CCTV reel, it's not relevant. If the prosecution does not disclose it at a later date, that non-disclosure after a conviction in the Court of Appeal and the Privy Council, we can pay the penalty for it and the conviction will be quashed. So we are joined at the hip, the investigator and the prosecutor to make the prosecution. So we have prosecutors being the clerk of courts in the parish court, prosecutors in the DPP's office, Crown Council. We have prosecutors um, with state agencies like MOCA, FID, Integrity Commission, and we have any external attorney who has a fiat from me to prosecute. Now, how does the prosecutor prosecute? The, it is a wise and prudent prosecutor who makes sure that especially in technical cases, you have case collaboration and case consultation with the investigator. It is an even more intelligent, astute, and wise investigator who makes sure that they never ever subjugate their common sense to that demon ego. An excess of ego will neutralize common sense because ultimately, even if you gather all the evidence that you believe is relevant. If certain things are not picked up, certain challenges are not picked up from day one, loopholes are not closed, it may still mean that you go to court and the prosecutor is given a lemon, so to speak, and the case falls apart. So for strategic and effective investigations to determine what investigative tools are best, determining the way to proceed in addition to the substantive charges, for example, larceny, fraud and conversion, whether we're gonna have forfeiture proceedings, civil recovery, money laundering charges to be laid, or whether you have criminal charges that are to be laid, whether... Um... Yeah. Um... Yes, Rati and Herb, I'm, I'm tapping it there because I want you to extract what um, Paula Lublin said. And let me just repeat, right, in summary, in brief summary. Um, prosecutor and investigators join at the hip to make a successful prosecution as it relates to what is important here case 
collaboration. You hear what the, you hear what the president keep the um, Paul Lewin DPP said? Now, what I want to ask Paula herself, I'm going to put up the next case and ask Paula about this case. If Paula Lewin, an investigator, worked together, right, to have an understanding of the evidence, right, case collaboration. Then I have to ask Paula Lubin in this based on this case. So I'm going to put up this case and ask Paula Lubin why she chose not to work with the investigators in this particular case to have a case collaboration and have a successful prosecution. Put up this case. Did you did you identify the uh, investigator? Huh? You, inv you identified the investigator. The investigator? Yeah. Well, she she she's she, she's speaking generally, you know. Was it C Talk or who? I mean, somebody um, has to be working with her in that case. Yes, but what she said in general, she's saying as it relates to successful prosecution, right? Particularly um, as it relates to certain cases, um, financial cases, and um, for example, a case of high profile case in terms of um, number three, right, murder, right? Then of course, it is important, it is imperative, it is prudent for the prosecutor, right, to work, right, in collaboration with, right? <laughs> um, so I'm going to show you a case. And ask and ask why, right? She's not working um this high profile case without any further case. I just want to know the reason why Paula Lovelin is not working this case, working collaboration with investigators. Okay, Sharon or Mr. Ertigan. Okay. September 30th, 2016, the body of 51-year-old Jermaine Jr. was found with multiple stab wounds and a single gunshot wound to the head in the reception room of attorney Patrick Bailey who just happened to be a close friend and lawyer of Prime Minister Andrew Holness. A knife, believed to have been the one used to stab Jermaine Jr., was also found beside the body. Patrick Bailey and Jermaine Jr. had an attorney-client relationship for 20 years prior to the murder. Around 1996, Jermaine Jr. was mistakenly shot multiple times by the police in Hope Pastures, St. Andrew, after they received a report that a robbery had occurred in the area. The police believed Junior matched the description given in the report. Bailey represented Junior in the lawsuit that was filed and won. That's how they became friends. The facts of the case are that while Junior was in the United States, he paid his attorney to buy a property for him. When he returned to Jamaica, he discovered that his money was missing and no property. Junior and Bailey came to an agreement that Junior would stay in one of Bailey's houses until his money was returned. The house Junior stayed was a house in the same yard of Bailey's main house at the back. This was not the first time Bailey was accused of stealing clients' money. In 2015 Bailey was arrested on charges of conspiracy to defraud in connection with a land deal that took place in 1996. The police alleged that a property was transferred to another person without the owner's knowledge. In 2022, Bailey was struck off the role of attorneys eligible to practice in Jamaica for failure to handing over $17,640 US dollars to a client. Bailey collected money from a client and held it on trust. When the person requested the money, Bailey made several promises to hand it over but that was never done. Bailey also represented Andrew Holness in the purchase of land on which his Beverly Hills mansion is built via a St. Lucia registered company that Andrew set up to purchase the land while he was on a visit to Jamaica, as falsely written on the purchase documents. Documents from the National Land Agency showed that Bailey was the attorney who witnessed the notation at the time the property was being transferred. On the night of the murder Bailey told the police that he stumbled on the body at 4 a.m. and had not heard anything. Bailey claimed that he was fast asleep when the killing occurred. The police said that there were no signs of forced entry. Police Commissioner Major General Anderson is cousin to Andrew Holness. For some reason Bailey was immediately ruled out as a suspect. The morning after the murder, 
Bailey was reported to be unwell and his doctor who also happened to be one of Bailey's clients, Jeff the Ford, informed the police that he should be confined to bed and was not fit to give a statement at the time. In 2014, Jeff the Ford was found guilty of corruption after he tried to bribe a police officer to release two Surinamese men who were caught with nearly $60 million. He was sentenced to six months in prison. It is alleged that the JLP Member of Parliament, an attorney Orlando Terrelonge, who is the legal partner of Bailey, was involved in the murder of Junior. The police reported at the time that men from the Umbrella Gang, in Orlando Terrelonge's constituency were under investigation for Jermaine Jr.'s murder. Orlando Terrelonge, who is openly gay is alleged to have been in a sexual relationship with Patrick Bailey. According to Jermaine Jr.'s brother, David Roberts, it makes no sense to seek justice because nothing will come of it. The police dem know who did it. The police have faced public criticisms over their handling of the investigation. The average Jamaican citizen would not get off this case as easy as Bailey has. Corruption permeates the legal system. It will only end when Jamaicans say, enough is enough. Yeah, so um, Herb and Ratti, based on yeah. what the, um, the prosecutor just stated, right? Um, why we are seeing the absolute opposite, contrary to what the prosecutor said here, right? why the prosecutor and the investigators are not working in tandem, join hip, join at the hip to investigate this case. Better. Um, my, my daughter was just catching me up here. You know, uh, Iran has struck hard in Israel. Yeah, we just saw that. So. Yeah, okay, all right. Um, the this whole thing with Patrick Bailey has been known. As a matter of fact, additional facts that or additional tips that we got was that there was in the house uh, at the time as well. Stain was a senior police officer. We haven't heard anything about that. I don't know if you heard anything about that one. And also. Um, that the homes actually belong to Junior. Those were not Patrick Bailey's house. That it was the money that Junior had won that he used to purchase those properties. So if indeed Junior came home from Philly and the homes were not, the house that he wanted was not purchased or built, was being built. And he was upset with Patrick Bailey. It might have very well been a falling out. But as you know from investigative uh, work, stabbing is a crime of passion. Stab a man that many times. 19 times. Yeah, you're really pissed off. Mm -hmm. And then you shoot him in the head for what? Good measure? And who's most likely to have a weapon? If indeed there was a police officer staying there. So Fitz Bailey has no excuse. None. Why he has not made any progress. Because if you go to the house, my question is, did you perform a test on Bailey's hands? to see if there's any gunshot residue is on his hands. Did you look at his hands to see when you're stabbing, your hands tend to slip down and did any part of his hand make contact with the blade? Right? With a left more DNA evidence on that, that weapon. So there's just so many things that I don't understand what Bill is doing. I really and truly don't understand what Fitz Bill is doing. And, and no. you know, the fact that the, he's supposed to be gone, I think Blake needs to put as much distance between him and Bailey and not Bailey st stay there and manipulate any more cases. It's crazy. It's crazy. Well, let, let me just say that the conviction rate in Jamaica 
is less than 30%. And for, for murder, um, I believe it's less than 20%. Whoa. So, and it may be even lower than that. Less than, I think it's like less than 15%, maybe 10%. So if you commit murder in Jamaica, you have like an 80% chance of getting away because something is going to be botched. And you know why? Because what the, the, the video you just played is proof positive, is evidence that the DPP doesn't know what she's talking about. When she's saying, you know, um, for financial crimes, I think that was, the, that, that, that was the event. She's saying they work hand in glove, prosecutors and investigators. Now think about it. Prosecutors and investigators are going to work hand in glove on financial crimes. <laughs> but they won't Not work hand in glove on capital, like yes. murder. Serious Yeah, because look, at the end of the day, it's money. Yes, you work hard for your money and, and it's hard for somebody to come in and steal it, but you still have your life. And so they figure that which is more important, trying to figure out who stole money or trying to figure out who killed this person. Exactly. And that's why the conviction rate is so low because, and I, I've been telling them, I said, look, with the FBI, you have a preliminary investigation. Somebody come to you with a complaint. You do a preliminary, do some checks, do this, do that, that. And you start your initial investigation. Once your supervisor signs off on it saying, yeah, I think this case is prosecutable. The first thing you do is go across the street to the prosecutor's office and say, look, this is what I have. This is the suspect. This is the crime I'm looking at. Here are the witnesses. This is possible evidence. Prosecutor is going to sit down and say, okay, in order for me to prosecute this case, there are certain elements that I'm going to have to satisfy i'm gonna need this 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 and you start working with that person every time you get something you touch base with them hey i got this okay where did you get it how did you get it was it legally obtained so on and so forth or hey i think there's something over here i'm gonna need a warrant and they get you the warrant. that's and that's why i, I can only speak about the fbi i can't speak about the other law enforcement agencies but the FBI, I think it's like a 97% conviction rate because mm -hmm. you're not going to go to trial until you touch base with the pro prosecutor, you work hand in glove with the prosecutor, and your case is ready. I've seen cases where they look at it and they go, you know what? This case is not, we're not going to be able to convince a jury. This, this doesn't make any sense. The, or, or the evidence is tainted. You know, it was illegally obtained and therefore we can't move forward with this. But in Jamaica, it's just everybody's doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody, like for example, Byron and Amory, you know that in the FBI, every 90 days, you have to, if you're a field agent, you have to sit with your supervisor, bring all your files, and every 90 days, that person is going to go through those files with you. And they're going to look at what they told you 90 days before, and then they're going to give you a forecast 90 days in the future this is what i want you to do so when we meet the next time you can't tell me that the thing that you were supposed to do last the last night of the period you still haven't done it you better have a good reason what i used to tell my my um um the people used to work with me i used to tell them listen if you know if it doesn't look like you're going to be able to make the 90 day deadline with certain things you need to come and tell me beforehand so i can get you assistance i can get your resources you can't show up at the file review and tell me, oh, yeah, because that's a problem right there. You know, the Organization of American States, they did a, um, they did a, 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 um, a, a survey of uh, the JCF. And they said, look, the, the detectives are overwhelmed and we need to spread out the work. I need to do a file review. You, need to do you don't say, oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Nothing like that happen. Not, there's no oversight. There is, there is just, everybody's just doing their own thing. Now, I'll tell you this, that there are some very good police investigators in Jamaica. I mean, I know some of them. But what I'm talking about is a system that has to be changed. You have people who, they're successful despite 
the shortcomings of the system. So just think about if you could reform the system so that these people can actually work within a construct that will enable them to be effective and efficient. Because when you see a detective in Jamaica who's successful, that person is basically do it, doing it on his or her own. They're not doing it because of the system. You know, they have guardrails that said, okay, this is, you turn here, you turn. No, they're just doing their own thing. And that's the sad part. And, and, and it's, I don't see it changing because of the system. And I don't see it changing because of the personnel in charge of the system. It's just terrible. And, and then you look, start with the top. Start with the top. You, you, you saw what happened this past a few days ago with that Vietnamese lady. Yes. yes. Okay. We would love to see something like that in Jamaica. But it won't happen. First of all, they're not gonna they're not gonna impose the death penalty on anybody like that. And then I'm telling you, they're gonna find some they're gonna find some botched investigation. Somewhere along the line it's it's botched. And 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 so the evidence can't be used. So I, I don't know. I mean, this police commissioner, uh, God help him, you know, because um, he's the, yeah, and he and I know this. I mean, he and I know that he's the least qualified police commissioner in the last several years. Um, he, he has no investigative experience. I mean, he's a tech guy. And he's not even a good tech guy either because he was supposed to make sure that the overtime digitized system was in place from March 31st of it was supposed to be in, in place March by March 31st of last year because in 2022 there's a court order saying that he had to do it within the year by March 31st and people are still I see this I still see the reports people are complaining that they're not getting overtime pay they're not getting they're not getting the correct pay and they're not getting it on time they're still complaining and this is this is a gentleman who is the IT guru and is by all intents and purposes the JCF is in violation of a court order right now. So I'm 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 hopeful because I see him making some moves. We gave him five we gave him five uh, points uh, uh the other day and I see that he's taking one of them to heart. He's moving people because I told him I said listen the people around you uh jealousy is a natural human trait they came up through the system. You come in through the side door, right? You came in as an assistant superintendent. They joined this thing from the basement. Exactly. And so, yeah, and I said, they, they're not happy about this. And I said, plus, you know, you have some of them who are not working anyway, like Fitz Bailey. I said to him, what you need to do? And I hope he's listening, Mr. Commissioner. I know you're, you're probably listening because um, you're off duty right now. So you should never be off duty because of the crime thing in Jamaica. Don't be like the other one who went to the been to the, the, the public partnership um, JCF uh, crime initiative and say he's not wearing his police hat. Don't be like that guy. <laughs> but he's you know this this new police commissioner. He, he has a he has a there's a learning curve there. But he, I told him to call in Mr. Fitz Bailey, the gentleman we just talked about, and I said bring him in and ask him about all of these investigations. Because he's in charge of criminal, but there's somebody else. He just moved. I think is is it Blake? Is mm -hmm. there a Blake? I think he moved him from investigations to to inspections. Mm -hmm. That the young, uh, well, he's not young, but I heard that he cried like a baby when he was told that he was transferred. I don't know if it's true. That's what I heard. Um, but but uh, if it's true, he needs to do some more of that. Just move yes. people. Around. And by the way, we told him that he can contact us. Herb, next week we have to give him the email address so that okay. he can contact us. And Mr. Commissioner, don't do it from work. Just do it from home and, and uh, get a private computer and you can correspond with us and we'll give you pointers. But he's an IT guy. He should, under, he should understand um, ComSec, you know. It, 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 well, you got to I don't know about all of that. I'm, I'm hoping, yeah. but I don't know about all of that. But I'm hoping that he... You know, he'll contact us because even though he's a he's the least qualified guy to get that job in a while, we want him to succeed. Because think about the messaging, though, to where he can say, "Listen, I, I'm the least qualified guy for this job, but guess what? I'm the most effective. I got I got yeah. it under control, and I got it under control with my with my with my diasporan people. So don't be afraid to reach out to us 
because we're in a position to provide more assistance to you than any of those people that you've surrounded yourself with. So, yeah, well, one, of the big, one of the big keys that we dropped on them back as far back as 2016 was look, police officers showing up to court with no case files. A police officer showing up to court with incomplete case files. And we said, look, if you have a fusion center yeah. in three counties, the fusion center collects all information. They keep a duplicate record at the station, but they have the actual case file. Mm -hmm. The detective at the station can follow along with copies of the case file. And then when it's time for court, you go to your fusion center, collect the case file, and you go to court with it. No case should leave the station or the fusion center without being complete. And that's the bottom line. You know, they don't want to do no, I, I don't know what the problem is with the fusion center. Maybe it's going to, too many people going to catch these cover-ups that they're doing. Exactly. You know, hey, one mm -hmm. thing I wanted to ask you. If you go back to at the time when the homeless needed funds, they sold the property at Moon Palace. You remember that? Yeah, well, here he had it. Okay, let me just go back to the, um, the information. <laughs> Moon Palace. One May 2019, I think, was when the offer came in. Okay, I think he's referring to which one? I'm not seeing something. We don't have anything on the Moon Palace. Hold on. We don't have anything on. I'm Herb. We don't have yeah. anything on Moon Palace. No. We have seen what you put in the private. We have here. Um, Arcadia Apartment, September 2008. Wycliffe Closeland in February 2009. Shenston Driveland in Beverly Hill. Um, 2011 and construction costs for Shinston Drive, Beverly Hills House, as stated by Mr. Ones, 2012 to 2050. So we are not seeing that. Okay. All right. Now, Moon Palace is 2019, 1 May. Okay. It's in the private chat. Okay. Oh, it's in the private chat. Is that the one where, 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 where uh, somebody traveled? Her? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yes. That's exactly it. Now we had established that whenever a certain minister of government travels from the prime minister's office to do a pickup in Mexico, it's usually mm -hmm. a, a big pickup. Mm -hmm. All right. In this case, Moon Palace, I didn't work out the exact amount of money, but Moon Palace is over 13 million. 13 million Jamaican dollars. How much is that in US? That would be. Might be. John, this is quoted in US. No, no, the exchange rate. No, I think it's one. Yeah, I'm quickly calculating that. Divide by 150. Well, at the time, it would have been about 130. 29. Oh, okay. 135 or so. 100,000. Yeah. At 135, it would be 96,000. Wow. At 135, it would be 96,296. Is it um, 
Okay, I didn't hear that. So he had to have one to do this. But see, here's the trick. Oh, it's a 30, um, 13 million divided by one. No, no, that, it had to be 13 million US. It can't be. Oh, it can't. I was going to say it's, 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 it's 96,000. 96,000. No, no, no. It, it is 13 million US. No, it's 13 million US. 13 million US. Oh, yeah. oh okay. yeah. so we have to multiply, not divide. Yeah, because they sold it. They claim they sold it. For seven million US. So what's the difference between thirteen and seven? Is six six million? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. We know that Vaz got in trouble because the US SAR report picked up him with four hundred and seventy five thousand US dollars. You got that in Mexico City. What's the difference between 475 and 6 million? It's going to be 5 million, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could, could Mr. Olness have used 5 million in 2019? Mm. <laughs> Did, and, and keep in mind what I said before. Because when that money was deposited in St. Lucia, 2008. They had gone to Mexico. Mex they had gone to, um, can't talk, no, I'll call you back. They had gone to, um, They'd gone to Mexico City, picked up some money, right? And take that money to um, St. Saint, Saint, Saint Lucia. Hello? Hello? Okay, so they've gone to Mexico City, did a pickup in that year. Mm -hmm. How do we know that? Because myself and the former head of MIU at JDF, along with two other people, an attorney associated with RATI, <laughs> and the executive director at ICS, went to St. Lucia on another matter. And we ended up talking to the guy who set up all the accounts wow interesting so think about the pickup for the second time in 2019 because we had gotten to saint lucia in 2019 in november so that is five months later after the pickup in Mexico the second time. We believe the first pickup in in 2008 has to do with the U.S. suspending um, Venezuela and Venezuela petrojam, petrocarry money, which Venezuela is suing them for now. Because they claim something like 8 million barrels of oil was missing from Petrocary or Petrojam, rather. You have to go back to all of these incidences to see where money was gen being generated. Right? And when you go back to those things, now you can start to figure out how was money coming in and being unaccountable? Exactly. The Petrocarib, exactly. the Petrojam missing barrels of oil, and the sale of the hotel in Senan, Moon Palace. 
Well, you know what? Um, there's a little bit more to that story over in St. Lucia, but we'll just leave that for now because <laughs> I'm aware. Well, 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 you know, you know how the 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 election in 2020 was funded because they were able to set up a um, we call it a type of company, slush fund, a slush fund, slush fund mm-hmm. in yeah. St. Lucia. And that's where they, you know, 14 billion Jamaican dollars to run the 2020 um, elections. What, what, what you know, I heard, um, yeah. in addition to what you and those folks picked up when you were there, um, what we're getting out of Hong Kong and Eastern Europe. Right. I mean, if I were a politician in Jamaica right now, listening to what happened, listening to this program, what what we talked about earlier, about the reports we've... You said one report was how many pages? 61. And the the second one? 49. Right. And it's all chock full of stuff. So if I were a politician involved in corruption... I would be worried right now. What do these guys have on me? And keep in mind, we're not naming any names yet, but Herb Herb has the reports. Because Herb, I've been so busy because Herb said to me, listen, man, you need to look at this thing. And I said to him, the herbalist, I soon look at it, you know, because I know it's going to be bad. Right? I know it's going to be bad. Yes. And we have some more. Somebody said they want me to table her. Table her report. And then she said, I want to table her report. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but we, we have some stuff back here. And then the Magnitsky. Yes, Lion, the Magnitsky. It's not, it, believe me, we haven't said a whole lot about Magnitsky, but all of this, you know, will go into the mix for the Magnitsky when we talk to our folks. And that is going to be, we have two things. Well, well after May 10th, we have, because we're focused on that right now. Then we have, Herb has, he's, he's in charge of the one in D.C., the protest in D.C. Then there's one up in Canada as well. But I think, Herb, we need to get something prepared because your outfit, when they put on that legislative week in, in, yeah. uh, in Congress, I think that's a good time to start going over and start start familiarizing the, the, the lawmakers with the application of Magnitsky to Jamaica. I'm sure they're aware of the law, but they're not right. sure how it applies to Jamaica. So uh, sometime in June, uh, for all of you asking about um, Magnitsky and when we're going to start working on it um, next month, because we have a, we have a huge function uh, in, uh, uh, with, some, with some congressional types in, in mid-June. And that's yeah. when, you know, we're actually going to see them. So that's when we're going to start um, putting stuff together. We're going to put stuff together in terms of cryptocracy, people who are stealing. Um, we're going to do things in terms of corruption. People are enriching themselves based on their, their public position. And we're also going to uh, approach the legislatures with human rights violations, like people who were uh, detained unlawfully, unconstitutionally, under the states of emergency and also the people who have been held uh without any charges uh, like the man like the person who just got out of prison the other day who spent i think 30 or 40 years in prison 40 years Who's, yeah yeah that's a human rights violation so we're gonna bring all of these things and i noticed that just today the former head of um um uh what's the name of that place uh, that country central america um Oh man, it's it's let me know. Hold on one second. Um You see you see we are the president of Ecuador. All there is to just to go into the Mexican embassy and drag the former vice president out. Yeah. The, the man is yeah. is is guilty of corruption. Yeah. The yeah. one in Suriname. In Suriname. Yeah, where they, they, where they said no, they take the visa, right? Yeah. So yeah, those are some of the things that um, we're going to yeah. be working, on, folks. So, 
um, you know, some people are saying, oh, it's a nine day one. No, no nine day one does around here. Because if you notice, we talk about something, but we don't let it go. We come back to it again yeah. and come back to it again. And okay. Hmm? Sorry, I, I, I want to um just remind um the um the chat something on um the Magninsky Act. The Magninsky Act. Remember yes. that remember that we use it in Jamaica already, you know. I'm I'm going to remind you when it was used. It was used um as it relates to the crawl incident with the um right. the, the, the um with Renita Adams. Remember yeah, that, the Magninsky yeah, Act for human rights, rights violations. Violations. Yes. Yeah. human rights violations, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, in fact, in fact, they have a they have a, a Magnitsky program. Yeah, in the State Department. So some people might think we're making this thing up. They have a Magnitsky. No, no, you're serious. Yeah. And they no. can go and look at it themselves. They can yeah. Google it. Just type in Magnitsky program, U.S. State Department, and you'll see yeah. how many people they've used it against. Am yeah, I they did use it 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 a violation. Yes. And and so you see, that's another reason. I see everything is coming together. That's another reason why we have to take this organization and make it a standalone for the diaspora. Because now when we go to talk to our legislators, we don't go in and say, Well, we are a movement. Because that means nothing to them. When they say, Oh, I'm a movement, they say, Move, move from your soul. That's what I'm gonna tell you. You want to go in and say, I'm an organization and I represent. You know, millions of Jamaicans living in the uh, well, but more than a million Jamaicans living in the United States. You, you carry more weight, and they're more apt. Uh, oh, and by the way, I say, and we all vote. Yes. You know, we all vote. That carries a lot of weight. So, um, so for the people who are concerned that they haven't heard a lot about Magnitsky, fret not thyself. June is around the corner, and her and I will be in DC because her puts on a. He puts on a security thing for a national security thing for a whole bunch of um, congressional types, and they show up, they give speeches and things like that. They come and they attend, and I usually handle uh, one of the subcommittees for for her, um, like a day or two. I'll just you know we have we have we have um, a topic that we'll explore, and so I chair that meeting for him. And so all of these people they show up, and we're in their building anyway. So we're going to be making appointments when we're there to go see them and let them familiarize them with some Jamaican politicians and their goings on. And we will also have some statistics for them. So stay tuned for that. But one thing at a time, we, we're taking over, we, we, we take the organization, now we're going to protest, then we're going to do Magnitsky, then we're going to do more protest, and then we're going to try and um, get meetings with low, um, uh, donor donor organizations. And then, you know, we, that's what we're, we, we're going to be, we're going to be a force to reckon with because we're not going to sit down and just talk and not do anything. And for those of you who know what goes on around here on this platform, a lot of times we tell, we said things and people say, well, I shouldn't tell them what to say. We know what to tell because 90% of the things we know we won't mention them here. So you just get in a, we have to give you something, we have to whet your appetite. And we give you stuff that we know, you know, that we can afford to give you, that don't really matter. And then when we tell people things that we're gonna do them, what do we do? We do them. Simple as that. We do them. And so I'm saying to the, to the, the again, I'm saying to those representatives who claim that they're um, Global Jamaica Diaspora, council representatives that they that they should they should really stop doing that they should really stop doing that um because i tell you what you get a lawsuit the jamaican government is not going to pay for your legal fees they're not going to do it so you need to just stop what you're doing right now and run as fast as you can or you can come and join us you come and join us you can work with us and work with the people because this organization is about people. It's not about politics. It's not about products. It's not about services. It's not about investments. It's all about people and service delivery here and that and that, and that home. So, all right. No, Lady J is a herb. You let out your secrets. No, herb, not let out. Trust me. No, 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 herb. Me, no, herb. No, no, herb. If her if her uh, if her talk out if her talk out a fraction of the things we know right now, 
because think about it. The, the politicians in Jamaica, where are they going to go? They can't run, come to the US. They can't run to any of the five eyes countries. So they can't go to New Zealand, Australia, Canada, the UK, the US. They go to Europe. There's no hiding there. No hiding. They can't stay in the Caribbean. I see where Elon Musk, I think he's trying to get something to go to the moon. Maybe that. They can ask to tag along. So there, there's no place to go. So once they start tightening the news, and like I said, sometimes. Sometimes, and this is just my experience, sometimes it, you, you, what you want to do is you want somebody to suffer the death by a thousand cuts. You don't want to just surprise them and that's it. You want them suffer. You want them to have sleepless nights. Just like how they make a lot of people have sleepless nights, you make them have sleepless nights too. Okay, make, one, them have, yeah. make them stress level go up. You know, make all kinds of things happen to them internally. Make them have to worry, you know, what, because you, you, to me, that's that that's that's deserved punishment. I mean, you're too nice if you just surprise them and no, make them worry and say, I wonder what them know. I wonder if them they upon me. I wonder if the two reports were her about. I wonder if I my name they found one of them. But by the way, we all get more, so we just have two right now. And I know Herb is working on a third one, and the third one that person is connected at tentacles all over the place, and that person is gonna be in a lot of trouble trust me trust me um somebody said put up the donation thing um but uh, let me see something yeah oh brian okay here we go it's right here. i want to make a legal defense foundation just there's a qr code next week we're gonna have two hours where we're just gonna take phone calls we're not gonna do any presentation we're gonna take phone calls ask any question and it may, it may go beyond two hours and then that's a time that you can make your donation because everything will be up the administrator she finished and hopefully she passed the bar exam and uh she's back on it she's back with us now so everything should be should be up and running. oh by the way her well we'll talk offline about the the thing that you're supposed to send her yeah well i yeah i gotta fix that definitely gotta fix that okay um, sorry um one i just need to answer beat and teach because they keep saying why well, i'm not answering him i've been answering you um beat and teach it is on yt i've answered you twice already it's on yt and it's called murder most foul so that's where you can find it on youtube and it's under um murder most foul that's what it's called sorry i might be right right again send him the link you can put the link in the chat i don't know you can just throw it in the chat. Just throw it in the chat. Yeah. I'll have to. Yeah. To, yeah. Let me just bring it up because I've been answering the system as yeah, we, not We're just going to put the link in the chat. Yeah, no, man. Hey, let me tell you, so this is your house, man. Just do it. All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear, it is. I mean, just want this one tell the 22,267 22, devices attached to the program right now that we're not really pressure the foundation thing tonight because it was uh, foundation meaning the donation it was all about just getting the information to you and bringing on the young people so you could uh, hear the future of Jamaica that Jamaica has a bright future mm -hmm. brighter and the way it's going to be brighter we have to get rid of some of these people who are impediments you know the people them who just think about self and not the community so and then we made the announcement about you know the organization and i know some of them like some of them tonight not going to sleep well you know some of them not <laughs> going to sleep well when they realize say, hey them them going to get lawyer up them going to get lawyers now and try to figure out what going but i mean and then it's going to cost them money but there's nothing the, the lawyers can help them with it's either you register or you didn't register. It's that simple. That simple. That simple. So, you know, and we have our registration documents, so we, you know, fine. Can Andrew help us impeach like here in the USA? 
Um, no, I don't think there's an impeachment. They said, remember, he said in his one of his speeches, first hundred days speech, you know, the one where he said within the first hundred days, my administration will. He spoke about the impeachment clause, but that has not been there. He also spoke about term limits for the office of the prime minister. That's not there, along with a host of other promises. So, you know, he said all of those things and nothing has been done. Oh, see, now, Byron, and I'm married. See, the people, the people, I'm saying, what I need to come over here, I don't just need, we need to just sit back and give the whole evening, make it just run with it the whole evening. I got no problem with that because this platform is not my platform. It's this platform is if, if all of us, plat in fact, all of you, any one of you in the chat feel like you want to come on and have something to say, come on, it's no problem. Just say, you know. Just tell me, you never have to ask me for come on. Just say, hey, I'm coming on next week, Saturday, because I have something I want to say. And, and you're a guest. It's fine. No problem. I see. Why isn't it? I'm not coming up in the chat. That's why I wasn't seeing my response. Well, uh, hey. I don't know why. Somebody said they want me to play this. Which one is this? Let me see. I've always said to people, do not trust the words of politicians. <laughs> Do not trust the words of politicians. Politicians. Do not trust the words of words of politicians. Do not trust the trust the words of politicians. People do not trust the words of politicians. People do not trust the words of politicians. People do not trust the words of politicians. Do not trust the words of politicians. You get it? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. I was gonna say, um it's yeah. You have something you want me to throw up, Byron. Mr. Herb, um, you were saying? Um, damn. Right. Play the video. Oh, what did it do? Hold on, hold on one second, Herb. Somebody. Right. Right. The following is a public service announcement. The Diaspora Crime Intervention and Prevention Task Force and One Jamaica Legal Defense Foundation invite Jamaican patriots and friends in the tri-state area to the second staging of a call to action. Meet us on Friday, May 10th, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Jamaica's Consulate, located at 300 East 42nd Street, corner 2nd Avenue in Manhattan. That's a call to action for Jamaicans and friends of Jamaica who are seeking the best solutions for Jamaica. May 10th at 9 a.m. at the Jamaican Consulate at 42nd Street and 2nd Avenue. Listen to Reason with Radigan Saturdays at 3 p.m. on Reggae Global Radio and YouTube for updates. Folks, don't forget, show up in your numbers. May 10th, Friday, from 9 to 1 p.m. The couple of things, Rati, that uh, I was trying to see if I could tie in, but I just haven't had the time to do it, were the mystic, 
was the um the three women that ripped off over a hundred million a piece. NCB. Oh Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. My thing is that they saw it done. Because there's a lot of people in Jamaica complaining. When I went there a month ago, I was in NCB and they were complaining to the manager that money was missing from their account. Not one, not two, a whole bunch of people. Okay. okay guys um some people might not be seeing my comments in the chat it's saying that some destination won't get comments i don't know why so some people are able to see because i've been commenting a lot but <laughs> that's the message i'm getting Brittany, Brittany, you look like you have something against uh, Vegas, man. <laughs> <laughs> and Errol Brown, I don't know where, where, this one to come from out of left field to me, you know, when they say, um, please don't bring back Vegas. Vegas. <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> you know, we're bridging that listen still. Look, we have different opinions about different things, but. Um, but this one is called a left field because Vegas was here about what three weeks ago, four weeks ago, and then I don't know what what caused you guys to bring up him name now. I don't know what happened. Look at this. All of a sudden, now it's about Vegas. Everybody said, "Don't bring him back." But I want to. Oh, Ve oh, Vegas, a troublemaker. Mm -hmm. Oh, alleged. Can you please repeat the YouTube channel? What's the YouTube channel on the the, the 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 story that you did on Patrick Bailey? Okay, it's called um, Murder Most Foul. Murder Most Foul. Foul. Murder, murder Most. Murder Most Foul. F O U L. Yes. Yeah. And it will come up. We are we are, we are trying to um communicate in the chat, but unfortunately, um, it is saying that some destination will not see comments. Will not see the comments. So people, if know. you realize that we are not commenting that uh, we are having some difficulty in terms of um putting that okay. um information in the chat. some persons have said they're seeing the comments but others are not seeing i don't know why right it could be a, well it could be a um, situation with um our system no it's white. okay or our white because i even went so and signed in and it's, oh, okay. it's given me that message so that's why right. Yes, that's why you're not yeah, in our response. Persons have come, some persons okay. comment that they're seeing the comments, but others are not seeing. It. Okay. Mr. Mr. Brown Brown and the Saturday Night Crew, big up on yourself. Next week, make it a date and don't be late. Big up Aromatic and Tara and all, all right. the people <laughs> holding, holding, holding um, the government accountable. Exactly. Everybody after, I don't know why everybody after Vegas tonight. <laughs> yeah, we have mentioned his name until I just saw it in the chat. Yeah. So we have seven more minutes to go. And it's been an enjoyable and informative afternoon and evening and night. As usual. Uh, as usual. Yeah, yeah. Them yeah. said so try and get aromatic. Is it? Yeah. Oh, bring back this beautiful couple. <laughs> well, we bring them back. Them hosts, listen enough. So anytime they want to come on, in there, they want to come on next week, the week after, anytime they want to grace us, we don't have an invitation. We're family. So whenever they, right. you know, I won't be on tonight, next week, next week, yeah. Saturday. But whenever they want to come on, them feel free. Because Byron, Byron I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a newest family member now. And All I'm right. Yes, Vince. <laughs> so. You know, we keep in touch. So, um, when they have a story, or just even if they just want to come on and hang out with us on a Saturday, because we're on pro for approximately eight hours. Um, yeah. It's long, but some people, as I said to them, take it like how you take your medicine. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah, just do an hour a day, and before you know it, Saturday is back and you finish up the whole program. 
And, you know, and if you notice, we don't have any fillers on this program. We don't have anything where we just, um, we don't really talk about certain things we don't discuss over here. Like people's personal lives, we don't really get into. I know. Into, of not, no. We talk about things that are affecting the people of Jamaica. And when I say people of Jamaica, people living here too, because like I said, I found out this week that, um, that actually I saw them when I was in Florida in January, you know, like a homeless, uh, set of homeless Jamaicans down there. And I'm sure it's not just in Florida. They're all over the place. But I think for Florida, because it's cold up this side. So down that side, yeah, they were down there. But yes. Laureen, Laureen said, what a class tonight. Can't wait for next week. <laughs> and they say, oh, Carleen. You see what Carleen said? Carleen said, yes, come back, please. I like when him say, that one, honey. Thank you. <laughs> See, a real gentle, a real gentleman we have around here, you know. When I'm yes, yes, that. yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Herb, them say you must dig up one and file. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Cynthia B. That's so true. Mystic Sensation, your visit is open and and, and endless. And they'll like, talk about about that yes <laughs> yeah i'll be over there next week friday and by the way uh mystic what, what we're trying to do is um within the next two three weeks um we're trying to get a whole group of us together on a platform and just discuss certain issues and plans going forward so if you have something that you would like to see get done Yes, then we'll support that. So we need to support each other. So um, whether it's a protest or whether it's a it's a it's a it's a, a presentation or something, because um, you know we have more things uniting us than things dividing us, and we're trying to put our differences aside and come together for the people of Jamaica. Yes. So in about another two three weeks or so, we're gonna you'll hear about it maybe. During the week, you and I will talk, and we'll try to set up a date so we can get everybody on, and then we we'll just talk about you know things that we need to do to hold government accountable, and and to support each other. Perfect. Yeah. All right, Herbalist, you have anything before we go? Yeah, Mike is mute. Yeah, it's. You guys gave a very excellent presentation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're going to repeat something mm -hmm. of the sort tomorrow on What House Vibes. So if you get the itch to come on tomorrow, let me know. Okay. Uh, but we're going to have a CPA who studied the situation, and we're going to have Zara herself. Okay. Oh, okay. So, you know, it would be a, something else. Get Definitely. everybody in there um, and see if there's anything Zara might have left off that she didn't really um, understand or read into. But, you know, who knows? Yeah, who knows? And when we put our heads together, and you see, you look at the timelines. I tell a lot of people, you know. Yes. If you're doing an investigation, if you're looking at a situation, just draw a line through the center of a legal pad and start with your timelines. Because when you start looking at, okay, when did he do this sale? All right, when did he purchase this property? When did they build this? When did they, you know, what could have been the source of funding? If not Usain Bolt, then could it be this sale that they did? And these boys don't do these sales for the hell of it. They exactly. Do it for their need. Exactly. Right? And um, we know that they have been very efficient at selling and, and funding. For, for instance, when, he did, when his wife won out in in uh portland um a lot of money was dropping in that elections hmm. 
that's how they they took a seat that had been in the PNP for over 30 years right but maybe people listening to us finally because we keep saying don't sell yourself cheaply definitely you collect 10,000 you collect 5,000 and what are they collecting <laughs> they tap for five years to collect a hundred million and what what is your little ten thousand or five thousand going to do you know and then you're suffering at the same time at their hands yes. no you, people don't need that it's it's that's madness but you know it's been a pleasure guys and um we'll we'll see what happens in the near future here exactly no go ahead byron and uh, well, you know, um it's you know it's really been um, a pleasure um for us to be invited right on a platform that really um you know service um purpose in terms of educating um you know um, people in the diaspora and you know jamaicans um in general and not only that this platform serve to just educate right um the platform search towards um finding a resolution right um creating system as it relates to um the one jamaica legal defense foundation right serve as a purpose as it relates to checks and balance one of the i mean one of the the amazing thing um ratigan as it relates to you know i mean you herb and other persons who join from time to, from, from time to time right you don't just you know go there and just educate you're finding ways and means how can we create checks and balance because we are all jamaican and jamaican need to understand that we need to galvanize around a movement i don't to be honest i really don't see a program as just an ordinary um youtube program it's actually a movement right where it's now making progress right and i mean a, a group of um persons who have that brain power in terms of critical thinking right is so excellent and i think that finally right we are so blessed right to have programs like these right um the ratigan um herb nelson is here mystic sensation is here aromatic Right, Jamaican Carlos, um, Jeffrey Tavares, and Andrea Stevens, right, and uh, you know, so many people. I, I sometimes get bashing because maybe I can't go through oh, and yeah. call up all the names, yes. but yeah. trust me, uh, we all are putting um, our work. But when it comes to reason with Ratigan, right, it's an extra effort in terms of finding solutions, right to solve our problem, right? And at the end of the day, right, it is good governance that we seek, good governance that we are in pursuit. And once again, Rati, Herb, thanks to be amongst you guys as it relates to, you know, um, educating us, right, and giving the energy of goodwill. We are so proud, we are so pleased, thanks, right, to invite us. Well, let me just say, Byron, to you and your lovely wife, that it's our pleasure to have you here. Um, you have walked us through the unmasking of the Prime Minister, and this is just a, a piece of the unmasking. This is not the total unmasking. Exactly. All right. Um, so we, 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 we're certainly going to be doing more programs. And again, there yes. is no invitation necessary. Um, you have the key. You just come on whenever you feel like, not a problem. We, there's enough room here at the end. And you know, you go with family. Yes. Yeah, you don't come on, we just make room. So All that's right. it. And so it, 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 was, it was a pleasure listening to both of you um, and working with both of you because I learned a hell of a lot tonight. And that's what I look forward to this yes. program. I look forward to disseminating information, but also receiving it. Yeah. Um, if I can learn something from each program, then I would have succeeded. It's not just about giving, it's also about receiving because you never have a, a comprehensive look at every single issue. You should always humble yourself and be open to learning. And that's exactly. what I do. And also when you make mistakes, 
like I do quite often, you apologize. You make your mistakes and then you just move on. You can't be, you know, you can't be that self-absorbed that that you feel like you can't apologize when you make a mistake. But having said that aside, tonight was an education for me. Uh, there are things that you mentioned, lots of things you mentioned about the Prime Minister that I didn't know. And I took some notes. And if you don't, I hope you don't mind if I use them. Whenever. No, no, feel free, feel free, feel free. One voice, Ratty, one voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then last week, you hit me again with that same kids. Was it same kids? Exactly, the, same kids. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. You hit me with that term, so Ratty. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this man, this man and his wife, I do them homework, man. Them not come unprepared at all. Them come for teach and beat, you know. So last week I got, Thought and I got beaten up, you know. But this week is the same thing, and I love it. Yes. And I and I can see it right there in the in the thing. Everybody's saying intellectually stimulating, great show, so on and so forth. So, just want to say before we go that um, finally, folks, we have decided to um, take the organization that we right we believe is rightfully ours. And while we were for those of you just who joined late, while we were broadcasting. Um, I got a call from London saying that they just registered the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. So that name does not belong to the government of Jamaica. Um, awesome. And it doesn't belong to the people who are the representatives right. of that awesome. organization. It belongs to the people in the UK. And we, um, we registered um, with, with, with uh, a state. We also registered with the federal government. And next week, we're going to be registering with a few more states to ensure that we take full control of our organization. And with that, then we can stand up to the government as equal partners. We're not taking orders from anybody. We're sitting there and we're engaged with them. And together, we can do what is best for Jamaica. Like we said, on May 10th, we're going to be gathered to shout in unison against some of the things that we see that we don't like. But also, it's also a chance to talk about solutions because it's not enough to just criticize. It's 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 good to criticize, but it's better to criticize and have solutions. So, just want to thank all of the guests tonight, the young people, um, uh, 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 the the dirty eight, the 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 well, 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 dirty thirty, and the hateful eight. All of the members who showed up tonight, um, Dr. Francis, kudos to you, sir. Um, as you said, you're one of the leaders, but we consider you our leader. And we're going to rally around you because they're starting taking steps with you already, and we're not going to allow that. And there are ways that we can deal with it. And we have enough brain power here in our small core group that rivals anything that the Jamaican government can, can, can put together. So, And, of course, the herbalist, you know, the man with all of the reports. So um, we just have to wait now. Man you, send, man, you send them to my house, you know. <laughs> no, 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 I just have to just find the time to go over the things, the, the reports that that he received, and then and then next week we'll have some 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 news for you. So again, remember, next week we're going to set aside a block of time to just take. Cause we didn't open the phone lines tonight. We're just gonna. And by Mystic Sensation, if you want to come next week, no presentation. We'll just come and sit down, and then just take phone calls. Um, that's fine if you if you can if you can't then we understand okay. um so that's that's the plan for next week so folks remember tomorrow um herb will be on um waterhouse vibes with uh, uh, zara burton and the cpa and some other folks and then um i will be on win lonesome tomorrow night at uh, seven o'clock with our sister maria herb will be there as well i've i've, I've been gone for about five weeks so i'm looking forward to it Next week, Friday, I will be on Andre's uh, show, uh, Partner Draw. And uh, during the week, I will be on uh, Jeffrey Tavares' show, Mekwe Talk. So, Jeffrey, you can line me up. But please, Jeffrey, don't line me up for every, every day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't line me up every day because we know Jeffrey you now. Oh, you're, you're, you're a good volunteer, I tell you. <laughs> you want Jeffrey to get a story, Jeffrey, I'm going to run with it. And I'm, I'm with you, Jeffrey. I'm with you. But um kind of like we just a comeback so you know kind of like pace me out a little bit you know and then we work from there so all right but look mystic sensation thank you so much again herb yeah. and all the wonderful guests tonight and you 
the listening audience, the viewing audience, thank you for spending um, your time with us. Hope it has been, well, not hope. I know it has been rewarding. And we look forward to seeing you real soon. Take care, folks. Take care. Thank you for the love and support. Nice. Uh, really Bless the firm. All right. Blessings. Audience, same thing. 